Okay, Aaron. Yes. What do you think? Uh, well, it was this was definitely a challenging assignment. Good. Uh, uh, I felt like I drew a little big on, on each one. Uh, it was two buildings on um, each side, each side of each page. So it, how big is this paper? Just like a standard sketch size like so? Yeah, it's the Piccadilly uh, sketchbook. So eight oh, and okay. a half by 11. Um, it, they don't look too big to me and like too crazy big. You might want to go a little smaller. The other thing I'd say uh, is you're working through these and we'll get more into this later. I don't really expect it too much right now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll start talking a little more about designing your pages. So like <laughs> I wouldn't have it just go off the page. I'd probably vignette it and make, you know, so it looks like I did it on purpose. Oh, okay. Okay. So a lot of the times what happens in a sketchbook, at least for me, is it's I meant to do that. It's BS. Mm -hmm. It's like I started drawing something and it went off the page. And then I, so I go, oh, so I'll trick this all out and I'll let it flow off. So it looks like I designed it that way on purpose, even though it's actually not. Right. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times I get better drawings that way anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're just a little more interesting. Sort mm -hmm. of going wall to wall with something. Sometimes that's fine. But, um, and, and I'm not too worried about this yet. That'll happen when you get a little more comfortable with, uh, mm -hmm. with all this stuff. <clears throat> and we'll also talk about laying out pages you know i don't ever go I, or hardly ever go into a sketch page and, and think about how i'm going to lay it out but like once i put something down i might go oh it'd be cool to have something over here yeah right here i'll put some call outs like i actually think about the the call outs i like writing and i like notes on my stuff for some reason okay um, like this kind of stuff like observational stuff sometimes it'll be a quote i heard or mm -hmm. two people talking to each other, something I thought was funny or in insightful or something. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, right? Um, sometimes mm -hmm. when, like when we usually go to the Natural History Museum, I like to do a lot of um, like maybe the big t Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then mm -hmm. maybe I'll do some call outs on, you know, when it lived, what this name was. And over here, I'll do a, a close up of like the foot bones or some close up of something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Something I think is interesting or whatever. And it's something that I'm, and the same thing like at a March field, <coughs> I think I've said this, I'm kind of fascinated by the, the sort of engineering of it, how it, mm -hmm. that stuff actually looks like what you think, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like if yeah. you go look at a helicopter at March field, it'll, or any helicopter, it'll blow your mind how it, how that shaft goes from this way to distributing that energy this way. Yeah. Like it's not a simple idea. It's just weird. It's just something you'd never think of. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So if you yeah. start like drawing that kind of stuff as sort of details and stuff, it sort of starts to lock into your brain and you start to be able to sort of make that stuff up. It's not like totally workable, mm -hmm. but it looks much more believable than if you didn't do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So one of the things with the sketchbook I think is really good is, is using it as a uh, reference gathering tool. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you go somewhere, and I might have said this before, but I always catalog things in my head. So if I'm driving through someplace in LA, and I see there's some part of LA that looks sort of like a Frenchy villagey kind of thing, I'll yeah. catalog that in my head. And then if I need that kind of look, I'll drive straight over there, find a place, get a coffee or a beer or something, and just sit there and, and start drawing. And then as soon as I sort of feel comfortable with the area or with those shapes, I'll start stylizing and I'll start getting my ideas. Okay. Oh, okay. But I yeah. always start with, and we were just talking about this in my other class in um, illustration. There's an alligator character in this children's book thing we're doing, and somebody was starting to try and design the alligator. They didn't look at alligators. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start drawing alligators because I want to learn the shape language, and then I can start to to character turn into a character or whatever. But I don't yeah. want to do that without any knowledge. And then I usually do a breakdown of the shapes just for myself, where I just right. go, oh, this is what an alligator is. It's one, two, three, four, you know, and the legs. So it's three shapes in the legs. That's it, right? It's the torso shape, the, the triangular head, the tail, and then the legs, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm seeing here, these aren't bad. So let's look at this. You can see my screen, right? Yes. So I'm gonna assume I'm gonna just gonna put the light up here, okay? 
mm -hmm. upper left. Where's this at? Uh, that's Founders Park in Anaheim. Uh, I was going to say, that looks familiar. Yeah, it's right here, right? Yeah, that's the Victorian house. Yeah, I was and just there. Two others is like the sheds behind it. This one's pretty balanced. Where's this at? Uh, that's actually the that's actually a Jack in the Box, uh, right there uh, on State College by uh, Cal State Fullerton. Huh. Okay, so let's start looking at this. So, like here on this one, I'm going to get the same color you're using. Find a well, darker. It's, uh, it's the indigo blue Coley Race uh, pencils I've been using. That used to be my favorite. No, yeah, indigo blue used to be my favorite. Okay, so like here, we've got an overhang. So you can get a little heavier on that and see how it'll pull it forward. Yeah, yeah. Then something like this, because these are like boards, right? Yeah. I will usually, let's just kind of reinforce them a little. I'm not going to overdo them. One thing I usually do with these is where they come out from here, I'll give it a little bit of a darker hit. Okay. Oh, That's a little yeah. too much. And what it'll do is it'll sort of just subtly separate them a little bit. Yeah. They pop a little bit, but not uh, too much. Yeah. And it also just gives them a little bit of weird, I don't know why, but it just gives them a little bit of three-dimensionality. This is an overhang, so I could probably hit that a little bit. Probably this a little bit. Then, so what's going, this is foliage here, right? Yeah. So is this like one of those cypressy kind of things? Uh, I I'm trying, I, th I think that was, yeah, I was just trying to address okay, it. Okay, I'm going to get into um, foliage next week. So mm -hmm. I don't want you to worry about it too much. But if this is sort of that kind of idea, then I might build it. Just get some little bit of indication of texture on there. And then this, I might make a little bigger statement with it. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is like when you're doing this kind of work, you know, the stuff in the field or whatever, you know, and then I can pop all these things or overhangs. When you're doing this kind of thing, I don't like this line work right here. I'd get rid of that. Oops. I'd be a little more careful with my mark making on this one. Uh, when you're doing this kind of thing, <clears throat> things like foliage and things like that, sometimes you have to go a little bigger with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll see a lot of people and they'll put like a planter, like let's say this right here was a planter. And they'll do like, they'll put foliage like that. You know what I mean? And then yeah. when I go, is that foliage? You know, it should go a little bigger. They'll go, well, it was small like that. And it's like, I don't care. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. It, you're the designer here. And, right. and again, I'm going to pound you on this. This this really is as much about design as anything. Yeah. Okay. Like deciding where to make a hard hit on the line and how I'm going to handle all these things stylistically is all um, design work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're indicating things that are away from the light and there's a certain logic to it. Um, but it's still design work. So here's another example of that. Make sure you're always turning your sketchbook to get a good angle. Yeah. Um, and then these, I might make a little bigger statement. That might be a little too big, but I'm just doing it to make my point. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I exactly know what you mean. What was here in this window? Uh, that, that was the, that that's like the logo. Uh, oh, okay. Not I, I didn't want to put the Was whole there logo. anything on the corners here? No, it was just a straight kind of <laughs> what's the thing with those restaurants? They're just kind of straight plain geometric shapes. They're usually stucco. Yeah. It's like, all but, it's all it's all just cost driven. Yeah. Like there's one I did a workshop one time over at or a couple times over at um um uh, UCR, UC Riverside or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Their extension thing. But across the street from their extension offices. There's a like a little strip mall shopping center thing. Yeah. And the person who designed it, they don't have any money. Okay. You know, it, it's a shopping center. They're not going to blow a bunch of money on it. 
but what he did was, or she did was, is they sort of like did things like, like they had a center piece just like this, only it was a little taller. And they like, they like beveled off the edges just to change the shape. It, it's something that doesn't really cost much more, but yeah. it makes the shapes at least a little more interesting. Right. And then, you know, and they put a couple of uh, arches down below and then they, the way they broke up the shapes, you could tell what they were doing. They were trying to get as much visual interest out of it for as little money as possible. Yeah. So like something like this, when they just make a box and they don't think about edges or corners, it might look fine in person. I don't know. Um, it's just cost. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of the things that I like to do that if we can get back out, um, I like to go to like the block or city walk or someplace like that. That's, that's kind of a cool place, but then pick a place that's not cool. Like that place isn't cool. And then redesign it with an eye towards not spending a lot of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's easy to sit there and go, because a lot of students will do this. I'll go, you know, make this, find a business here that doesn't look that cool, but it's in kind of a cool environment and make it cool, you know, do something interesting with it. Yeah. And a lot of them, if you don't give them parameters, they'll go, oh, I designed it so it's floating in the air. And I'm like, well, that's <laughs> not the real world. I mean, anybody can sit up or sit around and come up with that kind of stuff. It's like, I need real world solutions. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. fine if you're making a Marvel movie or something where they're going to do it digitally. That's one thing. But this is the, this is the real world. You know what I right. mean? Right, right. We don't have anti-gravity devices. Um, okay, so let's go. Here. Same thing here. This little thing needs to uh, overhang a little bit so it pulls in front of that back part. Uh-huh. See how it pushes it back? Yeah. Then here. So I'm just going into overhangs and things like that. Your proportions and everything look pretty good. I want to push this overhang just a little more. And by the way, when we're doing this, I think I've said this already, we talked about kind of ghosting your line and then sweeping it, right? Yeah. Um, and, and your lines, I don't think are bad or anything, but, um, and then make sure you're turning that board. If you're going to get a nice straight line, you, whoosh, you want to turn that board. Cause if you try and do it like that, it's probably not going to happen. You know what I mean? Or some weird angle. The same thing with ellipses. You want to turn the board, make sure you're always getting a good uh, angle to make whatever line or curve or whatever you're going to make. Right. That way, like when you're doing things like this, when we're doing mechanical things, and I think yours look pretty good. <laughs> When you're doing mechanical things, you know, they'll look mechanical because the edges aren't all wobbly. As soon as you start drawing really slow, you'll start getting this. Yep. That, that's... Getting that or this. This is another thing people do. They go. And they get that itchy kind of furry line. Yep. I do that all the time. Yeah. I, I think it's a uh, something there. But it's, some people like turn that into a style and that's fine or whatever. It doesn't work very good if you're doing mechanical things. Yeah. This is good. The tree good is here is good. Next week, like I said, I'll get more into that. Same thing here with these cars. Like they're right in front. So I'd push them. Normally I'd give them a little value, but right now I'm asking you guys not to do value. Probably pull that bumper out a little bit. Why do I do that? So I can break up the <coughs> shape. This, this thing is going to come in front of the tire a little bit. Make that maybe a little more prominent again, because it'll it'll break the edge a little bit. That's a little too much. Yeah. But still, you know, and start popping this stuff. This stuff's underneath. This stuff's meeting the ground. All those things. This is an overhang. I'd probably see a little bit of the top of this ellipse on this. Probably clarify these a little. Just make them a little more clear. And then sometimes, and I'm not worried about you guys doing this yet, because I don't want to add too much stuff too fast. But sometimes like up here, you know, I might just add something in here to make it more interesting. I don't know what that would be. <clears throat> I'll move things around. Like I might find something else, some detail on this thing, and I might put it up here. Like Fullerton College has these things that have these little wire things over them like that. I might put something like that in there. <clears throat> it might just be a vent, like up in here on certain yeah. buildings. This one doesn't really need it. 
I might put the little vent thing that they have in the apex sometimes right there. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I'll just find things that can pop in there and make it more interesting. <clears throat> and then sometimes, you know, later on, we can get into just completely stylizing the whole thing. But see how it's getting a little more clarity? Yeah. And Definitely. it just it pops a little bit. So yeah. really, um, and then when you get to something like this, so let's look at this real quick. When you get to a complex form like this, now, I'm not, in this case, you know, I'm not looking for big viscomy stuff, but this thing kind of thing, I will come in here and just sort of, before I do anything, I'll pop these things like this. Let's say I start, because I was over there, right? Yeah. I did a really crappy drawing of it. Um, I was just in a hurry, but um, sure, yeah. I think out of all the drawings, that took the most time. Yeah. I had there. So what I'll do is, is I'll start breaking down these simple forms, um, and I'll make sure that, like, like let's say this building. As soon as I put something down, it's like I said before. Then I'll go, okay, where does this land? And I'm sort of just landmarking it. Like I'm totally landmarking. I keep it super loose. I don't erase anything. I just keep readjusting. And then like this apex right here, and I, I don't remember where it landed, but let's you let's say it lands right where you did. Then then I go, okay, that's landing right about here. And I start just placing everything. And then some like let's say I put this building in, this roof line in. Sometimes all of a sudden I'll notice, oh, wait a minute. There's something wrong here because this does land here, but now back here, I'm landing way off of where the next landmark is. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm you're kind of putting that puzzle down. together and I'm not, and by the way, I'm not doing this in a very super systemic, super technical drawing kind of way. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and going, well, that, and, and if it's a little bit off or something, then I go, it looks fine. That's fine. I'm not trying to make a technical drawing here. But I'm yeah. using those landmarks and where things land, especially in a complex building shape like this. I'm using those landmarks to figure out exactly where things land. Sometimes I place something that looks fine. I pull it to the back and go, okay, the back line's up about there. And it doesn't line up there. So then it tells me something's off in my drawing. Yeah. Does that makes sense? And, bef- and I do this very, like I said, just really um, simply... You know, this you can think of as a wedge. You know, then I go, okay, there's my railing. Now, there's a balance here because I got to be careful that I don't get uh, this, this thing right. This thing, it's interesting how they do these when you sit there and you draw them. Like how... Yeah how this curved porch fits into the rest of this geometry. It's really interesting. It's really good lessons in like, cause you don't, again, you don't sit there and really stare at these things, but when you're, you're sitting there kind of building it in your sketchbook, you're like, man, that's weird how that shape, like all the work they have to do to make all these forms live together. Yeah. You know, and transition together. I mean, when you're doing these things, you're also getting a design lesson in whatever you're drawing. You know what I mean? Yes. Which I think is also part of the, um, the uh value of it okay but anyway i just keep putting these things in here like i go this one lands right there let's say you know and then i go and it lands here but then the roof lands like right there so i'm just kind of lining them up and here's the trick with it you have to do it in a sort of or don't have to but you have the best way in what we're doing in here is to you got to strike this balance between sort of loose and kind of putting down your big forms, but don't get into that sort of really viscom thing where everything becomes very stiff. Right. You know what I mean? Because you see these drawings all the time, <clears throat> like uh, Peter Hahn, where you know they go on field trips and his his drawings look very stiff. They look very viscommy. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. And they don't yeah. have a lot of personality. Now that's fine if you're just teaching viscom and you're going, this is just for clarity, uh, which viscom usually is. Um, that's fine. Okay. But what we're trying to do is strike a balance of like sort of accuracy and some illustrative qualities and some style, right? And the styles just right now, we're not pushing stylization, but just that these things have some nice personality. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
That's, yeah. you know, and the freer you get with your sketching, the more your personality starts to come into play and the more your quote unquote style starts to emerge. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you can't find a style. The style has to find you. Okay. Oh yeah. And I've that, heard that, that from a lot of students where it's like, Oh, I'm trying to find my style. It's like, good luck. You're not going to find it. All you're oh, going to yeah. end up doing if you're trying to find it is you're going to become a clone of some other artist. That's usually what happens. Right. And that, and I'm finding it just comes out through. It comes out through, through like, to be honest with you, creating a lot of work, working in your sketchbook cr like crazy mm -hmm. comes out of work. Like if you're doing enough work, um, your style will happen. Yes. If you're not working that much, your style's not going to happen because it hasn't had, it's got to evolve and it's got to um, percolate and simmer for a while. And then, you know, and then finally you get that stew. That's all the ingredients that are your influences. But look, we all have the same ingredients on the shelf, yeah. right? I mean, we all have line quality, value, contrast, blah, 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 right? Um, design, whatever. It's, it's how you use the ingredients and make your own soup, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all, it's like somebody said about uh, musicians. They all got the same 12 notes, right? Oh, yeah. It's weird when you think about it. They all have the same 12 notes. That's nothing. And they create an endless, you know, stylistic universe of music. You know, and you are going to be a little bit of a product of your influences in a way. So if you listen to... <clears throat> Jimi Hendrix, you can hear Curtis Mayfield in there. You can hear the Isley brothers in there. You can hear all the blues guys in there, but he doesn't sound like any of them. You know what I mean? Took the same ingredients, got influenced by them and then created his right. own thing. And the reason I say that is because people seem to get very fixated on an artist or something and they start sort of copying it and copying it and copying. It. I think that's a dead end. Okay. Does this all make sense? Right. Another yeah. thing I would do here, maybe. Yes. Number one, I get these perspective wise correct. These, these, uh, whatever they are, uh, whatever you call them, a lamp. But this is a good example where you could come yeah. in here and you could give these a pretty hard hit. Maybe even outline them a little bit or containment line them. Mm -hmm. Now, later on, we would do this just with value, probably. You know, but if I come in here, and give that a little more of a hard hit, it's gonna really pop into the foreground, right? Totally. So it might be a place where I might do a containment line. Um, a containment line just pop, you know, it, it, very, it's, it really pops something out. Does that make sense? Now you gotta yeah. be careful with all these things because you, again, you don't want them to become mechanical. Here's a, um, I always use these as an example because I think they're really great drawings. Okay, hang on. So separation, we've talked about this. So the, it's light and separation, okay? Um, now this has value in it, but we're gonna just concentrate on the line. Mm -hmm. So we have this foreground element, just like your uh, lamp, right? Yeah, yeah. But look at this containment line. You see that line? Yeah. Bing come, kind of can, goes through this whole thing, it more or less, and drops off a little. Else. But look you how know, it ties together. that whole unit together and pulls it right into the foreground. Yeah. You see that? There, there's so, no mistake that it's the foreground. You're right. And as soon as you do something like that, it goes, <laughs> which means everything else goes, goes back, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you look, so he's giving you a lot of information here on the leaves, mm -hmm. right? Then back here, it drops off into what? Mostly texture, right? Right. As it drops down here, then it dissipates. Then back here, it's really just texture. And then as you go back here, it, it's a little bit of information inside the silhouette and then no information inside the silhouette. So he's literally dropping off all the information in the texture to drop it back. Does that make sense? Yes. Totally. Um, very simple concept, but this is a very good example of putting it really into practice in a very smart way, right? Absolutely, yeah. 
He's got this dark value inside of here. What does that do? Pushes that light value on the roof, right? And if you go through things like this, you'll see this like dark light or dark light, you know, dark light, dark light, dark light. You'll see it, you know, you're always kind of trying to pop things with dark light, dark light, dark light, right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously massing. So if you squint down, this whole tree area is pretty much just massed together. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, a big light value right here in the foreground with zero information other than the edges, which will come in. We'll talk about next week. Um, and it, but when you look at it, it looks like a very, if I showed this to the average person, they'd go, there's so much detail in there and there isn't, yeah. but it looks very finished. Right. And to most people that means detail. I hate that word detail, by the way, um, because you can see this isn't about detail. Correct. Right. Yes. It's about really great um, design, really, right? Because these leaves don't exist in nature outlined in lines. I mean, none of this stuff exists in nature like this. You, it's all design thinking, okay? And value and all that stuff, which is all design thinking. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions? Um, I don't, not at this point. What was this right here? Oh, that was like that that was like some piping that was grouped together there right in front of the building. Okay, so you can see it needs to separate, right? Yeah. So again, this is a place where I'd probably come in here and now I would sort of might throw my normal uh light where the light is ideas and I might do it again, I might do a little just sort of like they did with the surfboards where I sort of give this thing a little containment yep. line to separate it from the background and clarify it. Yep. I also yep. might make it a little bigger. So here's a good, here's a good example of this. I like this guy's stuff because it's really simple, but really clear. Oh, yeah. so a lot of information that's a good one i mean look how clear that is it's really yeah. simple okay there's not much to that really controlling look at his line look at that hard line right there yeah look at these dark values he beefed up the line to separate these shapes really controlled line work and value right mm -hmm. but again very simple a lot of information here, but clear. And then start to stylize. This kind of thing, when we get back to our Friday night drawing thing, you need to be doing this kind of stuff. It's one of the best things you can do. Okay, that's probably from life. Look at that hard line right there on the overhang. See that? Yeah. Look at the hard line right there, overhang. This one's just separating. The hard line right there. So his light looks like it's coming this way. These are very simple, but very clear. Mm -hmm. Very simple. What I'm trying to find is, um, you know, if you look at this plant right here, it's very simple. It's just more of a textural idea, right? Yeah. His line weight goes really light back here to push all that stuff back. So he's not really hitting it. He's just letting them, you know, leaving it there. Foreground elements, hard outline. You know, and then things like in these planners, see, see how he's kind of beefing up these sizes a little bit. Those are probably bigger than what was there, but he's got to make uh, them read. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want to do this timid thing, okay? Which a lot of people do. I'm not saying you're doing it, but I'm just going over things that kind of happen, okay? Yeah, sure. And people tend to do these, like, I love these. People tend to do these. Um, I mean, it's normal. People tend to do timid stuff. You know what I mean? Or they uh, they draw a lot of little shapes, like a bunch of little shapes, and it's just it's not interesting. It's like. Give me a big shape up here and then maybe a middle ground and give me, you know, bump these up and 
move that tree over here because the building needs something like that McD or that Jack in the box building. I might have moved a tree over there and put it right okay. in front. I'm not asking you guys to do trees or anything yet, but later on, I might put a tree there and go, well, putting a tree there covers up how boring that building is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, totally. These are really good ones. Look. There's that dark line right there to pull that overhang forward. This containment line to pull those in front of the background. You see all that? Mm -hmm. It's really heavy duty management of line, which is the first thing I'm trying to get through to you guys is that. Okay. Is Disneyland open again yet? Anybody know? Not yet. And I miss it so much. I think downtown Disney is open. Downtown yeah. Disney and Buena Vista Street is. Is it crazy though? Is it like super crazy over there? Not typically. Wow, really? I would have thought everybody yeah. would be there. Because it's, it's kind of a fun place to go sketch. Okay. Where's Carrie? You hear? Sorry, what? My volume's super low. I can barely hear you. Turn it up. Yeah, it's at max volume. Um, okay. Where's this Tudor style house at? Uh, that bottom one is just like down the street from me. Uh, it's off of your Belinda Boulevard. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so what'd you think? I liked it. Like this was fun. I I started using digital art as a crutch, though. That became very clear as I was doing this. Um, you did what? I'm not used to traditional. You said what about digital? I'm using it as a crutch because yeah. I just like lost all ability to do traditional anymore. I haven't yeah, practiced that's in so my long. Point. You understand what my point is, right? About that, right? Yeah, I understand. Um, what happens is. This is weird to me because if I was a young person starting out, I, I would probably run my education the same way I did because I would know that that can become a crutch. Also, I'm not enamored. I mean, I like digital tools. I think they're really great, but I'm not all enamored by them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I've started using them because like I low-key started um, developing early onset Parkinson. So my hand is super shaky and I really like that undo button. Um, that's sure. really well, look, why well, I'm drawn to it. But. Look, when it comes to, um, you know, work, work, when I'm doing work, I'm, I'm going to more than likely do it digitally if it's, you know, like design work or whatever. But the problem with that is, is that I see a lot of people who are, they're I have photo bashing, whatever they're doing, and sort of using a lot of tricks and all this kind of stuff. And the thing that's weird to me about that is like, I always think like, doesn't it bother you that you really don't have that skill set? Like you really don't know how to paint. You know, if I put you in a, in a go out plain air painting or whatever, or paint a model from life or something, you're going to completely fall apart. And I don't know how that doesn't bother people. Like I wanted to have a really strong foundational understanding of everything I was doing. And I think if you do that, that the, what's valuable about that, A, you know your craft better. Then when you go into digital tools, they're absolutely great. Um, and you're keeping both going, a sketchbook, painting, whatever it is. Um, you know, it makes you much more valuable. Eric Timon's over at um, ILM. I think the reason he's, well, I know the reason he's so great at atmospherics and all that kind of stuff is because he's a plein air painter. Does that make sense? And I, and, yeah, I know and, I need more practice in traditional. Yeah. And you bet your ass that ILM knows that when they're like, Hey man, we got this big atmosphere thing called go get uh, Eric, you know, cause he's just great at that. Cause he's constantly outside working from life and he has a big data bank of all that kind of stuff you know and then his, his digital stuff is monster good you know um but i just think the foundation because i don't want people to, to get it that i'm saying digital versus because you see a lot of that i don't agree with that either i just think it's another medium the only thing that's different about digital from all other mediums is it, it can get very much as tied up and associated with entertainment design video game culture all that kind of stuff. And it, it starts to become a non art thing. And it just becomes like, oh, I like video games. And this is kind of an extension of a video game console. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
and they're not and students aren't really putting the art part of it first which i think is what you got to have first okay and then you can switch gears as you go down your career path because five years from now let's say you get a job two years from now and five years from now or six years from now you go i want to do that a little more you'll have the the skill set to move around does that make sense yeah okay So are these the last ones? Yeah, I did them two different spots. Like that top one is near a beach somewhere. I don't even know where it was. I was but is this your last um, page? Yeah. Okay, do you see the difference between the first ones, like that one and that one? I do. I definitely have darker line quality on the last Not only one. that, it's just balance and the proportions and everything are better way better like right there and this is are these chronological am i going first second third fourth not quite the second and third are switched and then it's chronological okay yeah i mean you made a big leap here now um just to end this thing here you know, I don't know what was here, but I'll just make it up. Man, I don't like this. Hang on. There we go. Um, maybe here. And again, I don't know what was here, but maybe I just put a something here. Maybe it's just some plants here. Just to give that an ending. Does that make sense? Okay. And then if there was anything back here, which there probably was like another house, I might just kind of ghost it in there just to give something behind it. Just to end things, right? Like this, you're sort of starting to vignette off. That could work. I don't know why my pen. I think that's fine. And then you're starting to do a little bit of it here again. I'd probably pop these lines a little bit. I'm just going to put the light there. And maybe over here. This could separate out. Okay, and this is a good example. This front line is, is getting uh, light but I'd still probably hit it just a little harder to separate it and not the whole thing, just a little bit of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's Eve. So just start punching the light on this side of these things. I could punch them a little bit. Might give this a little more heft here, but we'll, again, we'll talk about that next week. Maybe there's a, But I think it's mostly just because you're not real off on your, um, hang on, on your proportion. This looks pretty severe. So that might be a little more like that. Again, I'd give this like a little bit more information. I'd pop these a little bit. Again, maybe I just put, and again, if you're going to put any kind of organics, you can just do sort of this kind of outlining thing. I might put something there just to give this hard edge. Now this right here, this kind of thing, no more of that, right? Okay. No random mark making. Everything you draw should be purposeful. Does that make sense? Yes. What kind of roof did this have? I believe it was shingles, like those really industrial shingles that you see on the top of every business. So I'm just going to say, just for sake of ease of discussion that maybe it's got Spanish tile or something you know and then I can come in here and you know just give it a little bit of a sense of finish it's also going to give me a little bit of texture which is kind of nice you know and let it fade out over here I might put something here there was I'd clean this line up a little bit 
So once I do this, I'll come in here and I'll just kind of give a sweep to some of these lines. This probably had a little more thickness to it. And if it didn't, I want to make it a little fatter. There's probably some stuff in here. Was this, is this like an outdoor thing? Yeah. So I want to put a counter in there. Just some random, you know, maybe there's a display over here. Maybe there's a signage out here. And don't worry about putting things in yet that aren't here. I'm just kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But see if I put a sign out there, it just gets a little more interesting because I've got something overlapping. Yeah? Yeah, that does help a lot. Another thing I would do, put a put that indication of the sidewalk. What does that do? It goes, tells the viewer this is going this way and then it's going this way. Okay, so it's a really easy way to show surface contour and surface information without me doing much work. And then again, usually buildings don't just die into the ground. There's usually something here. Maybe it's a planter, maybe it's just a piece of trim. This could get a lot, I think, a lot bigger. This is a good example, this umbrella of something not making a big enough statement like we were just talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And then these things do this, but they're faceted. And then they have a little facet here. Then I build that. And then usually they have another little um, break right there. And then they have the top. Then I usually put that in. And then if that's there, I probably got a table. Then if that's there, I probably have chairs. And now I'm starting, and then watch your perspective here. The perspective's getting pretty wonky over here. Yeah, I'm taking perspective this semester, but, so I still have a lot to learn in perspective. Yeah. You'll find out it's not really that hard. Everybody thinks it's really hard, but it's not. Yeah, just need practice like anything else. Yeah, it's just once, you know, it's like everything else. Once you know how it works, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Then I might put the indication of a tree over there or something. Maybe I'll put a trash can here. Later on, we'd put people in here. We're not worried about that yet. Then maybe this is a window and I'm gonna put some, you know, 50 cents off or whatever it says. And then some of this. Now I'll put that little serrated edge up here. Break that up. I'll probably pull this eave over a little bit. So now it overlaps the building, makes it a little more interesting shape. Get these a little more lined up. This one is going straight down like that, which can't happen if this one's going over here. This one can't now go over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's going to radiate. And we're just eyeballing it, but it's going to radiate like that from wherever that vanishing point is. And you just got to learn to see it. What you got to learn to see is what is this angle? Hold up your, your pencil to it and just go, oh, it's an angle like that. Because that's all you really need to know with this, right? Okay. And then another thing I might do, if they had any kind of uh, lamps or something here. And be honest, like if I'm paint or drawing or somewhere and they don't have this and I'll look around and go, is there a lamp around here that I can kind of swipe? That's too many of them. But And then I'm starting to get a little more populated scene. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're kind of combining both drawing from life and some design elements well everything's designed to me <clears throat> and i'm not worried about you guys. i don't want guys making stuff up right now all i'm saying is that if i was there like i'd make a bigger statement with that umbrella if the umbrella is there it means there's a table i put the table in there if the table's there that means there's chairs there those are all things that are adding shape uh density of shape uh interesting shapes overlap all that kind of stuff if i go in and look at this scene i'm making it up because i'm not there um, if I went there and looked at this scene, I would find all these things that I could add in. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, but, but what my point is, is variety of shape and, and sort of density of shape um, makes a more interesting drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then later on, it'll get a little easier for you. I don't want to put making stuff up on you guys yet. It's too early. 
Okay, do you have any questions? No, I think okay. that all made sense. Thank you. Where's this house at? Uh, I don't know the street name, but do you know where the Walgreens off of Chapman is? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a little side street down there. I used to park there when we still had campus. There's a um, there's a building in Norwalk that looks just like that. It's on Rosecrans. I, mean, I don't think I've seen that like one. That. Whenever I see a house that looks like it's out of a fairy tale, I get really excited and take a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's a, I'm assuming it used to be a house, but I think it's like, it's been offices, like law offices forever, but it looks, I mean, it looks just like that. That's where I thought it was. That's cool. Ugh, I've had too much coffee already. Okay, who's this? This is. Uh... It's mine, Cindy Nava. Cindy, okay. Okay, what do you think? Um, I feel like, I don't know. The picture kind of got um blurry and like you can't see it clearly because I tried taking a picture of it, but my lighting like in my house is yellow, and when I tried using like a lamp, it just um kind of washed it Take out. Take it someplace like near a window where you're just getting diffused light. I mean, I can see mm -hmm. them. It's fine. Okay. Um, like I have a spot here that I do demos uh, when, when I record tutorials because li our living room is really huge um, and it has really high ceilings. So I get all this light coming in all over the place and it's pretty diffused. And that's, I usually, that's why I always shoot in the daytime because I don't have to use um, stage lighting or whatever. Because that panels in here I could use, but um, mm -hmm. it gives me a nice even light. There's always some place where you can get nice even light, and sometimes if you go outside, just go to like a covered area, and it might shoot really blue depending on the time of day. But who cares about that? You know what I mean? But just go someplace where the light's diffused, like in shadow. Like today, it's a really sunny, nice day. If I go out there, I could just get under a tree or something, as long as there's mm -hmm. not dappled light coming through. And I'll get pretty nice diffused light, and it'll evenly light my uh, image. Yeah? Yeah. But I mean, I can see them, so it's fine. Where is this at? Um, it's on Orangewood. Well, the one you were at right now was orange with, but these are different. Where's this at? Um, I don't know the street, but um, there used to be like a Wiener Schnitzel, and that it's like near where that used to be. Is this in a parking lot? Um, that's at a gas station. Oh, because it looks like an old photo map. I don't know if you know what that is, but <laughs> no. They used to have these little shacks and parking lots. They were just like a little tiny little building that looked like that. And it was where you dropped off your pictures to get your pictures developed. Mm. And it was called photo something, like F-O-T-O -O something. Back when, before digital. Okay, so what about, you have any questions on this? Um, I don't know. I just tried my best with like, the ability that I currently have, but um, well, you just described all of us. <laughs> but yeah, um, I feel like some of them look really plain. Okay, yeah. So what we were just talking about, that's really common. Okay, when you first start doing this. But what we just talked about with the last ones um, about adding, you know, some overlapping elements and all that kind of stuff. They're there. OK, you just got to start seeing them, uh, you know, and you'll start getting more sensitive to like just. OK, so like, let's look at this one, this one right here. Right. You with me? Mm -hmm. It's it's frontal. And that's what I asked you to do now, like this tree. And I yeah, it might have been that way, but like I would probably give it a little more um, of a sinewy kind of thing. I'd probably make it a little more important down here. And again, I'm not worried about um, foliage yet, but since it's here. Okay, so just adding that, making it a little more prominent already made it a little more interesting, correct? 
-hmm. Now, the next thing is I'm going to go here. And then be careful of this. Now it's just starting to feel like a saw edge. We don't want that. We want this to be, again, have some purpose so it feels. And then the other thing that's going to support that serrated edge is that I see a little bit of the, the whatever you call it, the roof tiles or whatever they're called. You know, and I can come in here. And what I usually do is I start scattering these around a little bit because I don't want them everywhere. You could do it with like where the light rakes. You could say the light's raking across this area and everything outside that spreads. But I usually just do it. Um, I eyeball it. And then I usually kind of cluster it somewhere. And then I like I'll show some of the bottoms a little harder, maybe a couple of individuals. And then that's going to support my serrated edge because you know that that's these are the overlapping elements. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make this little eave or whatever they call this a little more prominent. Also a little darker again because it's an overhang. These, I would put a, a ghost line over that. And then these are probably a little straighter on the sides, I'm guessing. Then I curve off the tops. I put that little guide on the top. You're pretty on on that part. I put that little guide on the top so I can see it. These are overhangs, so I'm going to probably hit those a little harder. You know, and then clarify that serrated edge a little bit. Don't don't go real sawish like that. You know, what they are is they're just sort of little overlapping elements. That's sloppy, but you don't want it too much. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then this one this uh, light post or whatever they're called that. Okay. So this one, I deliberately sort of turned a little bit. So it's a little more interesting shape. This one, I'm going to do the opposite. I want that to have, so I would have turned my board once I ghost that in and I would have went and got it really straight and mechanical looking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then it's what it's a contrast to this, not mechanical looking vertical line, right? Make sense. Yeah. I'm going to see a little bit of the top of that ellipse, depending on where I'm standing. A little more information here where it hits the ground. If it's hitting like in a, you know, grass or something, I'm going to give it both of these. I'm going to give a little bit of that grass texture down here. Then this is hitting the ground. What are these here? Are these columns? Yeah. Okay. So that's, I'm going to pop those a little bit. I want to put the light up here. I'm going to put the indication of maybe a tree back here. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Maybe there's something here. I don't know. And then, is this the entrance right in the middle? No. This isn't the entrance in here? No, because there was another part of the building to the left, but I didn't have space for it. Okay, since I can't see that, I'm going to make this up. It feels like there should be a, like a walkway going in. You know, and then I could put something else here, whatever. And, and see how we're just trying to plus it up and make it look a little more interesting? Mm -hmm. Oops. You know, and I might put a little indication of whatever here. Eventually, I'd probably give this a little bit. We're not worried about value right now, but. And again, in here, I might kind of pop these tops where it's an overhang and start to get a little more information here, which means this will probably have to get a little heavier. So I want the columns to pop forward. And, and again, I might put something organic back here. I might put. I'd look around and go, what's is there anything else? This, I'd sort of look up into a little bit. Make sure that this feels mechanical. 
you know, and again, I might put a telephone pole up here, whatever's back there. And you see how it just starts to pop a little more? Mm -hmm. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. You have any questions? No. Is this one, when was this one? This one here. Um, I put them all in order from one to three, blah, 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 till six. And that's chronological? Yeah. See, this one's a very simple drawing, but it's starting to work. You got this overhang popping, you got that overhang popping, you're doing it here. You know, I'd probably indicate, again, I'd indicate like a tree or something over here, maybe. And again, all I would do for now is just do a silhouette like that. I'll show you how to do that later. I'll show you how to do that next week. This is another example of where I might go. So this up here is getting a little mushy. You see that? Mm -hmm. So what I might do is just do a, just a line. Then I'd put my um, individual boards and I'd put another line up here maybe. And then I just kind of come up here and start building the individual parts. And then, you know, that other line's going to disappear, put a little darker line there, there coming up from the bottom and make that. So it's, it's floating in front of the building a little better. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. At some point, I'll become a broken record in here today. Because you're all going to have probably similar problems. Watch your perspective here. This is getting pretty severe, that angle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <coughs> when you're blocking this out, that's the first thing. You know, you want to go, okay, how, <coughs> how much of an angle do I have here? And how much of an angle do I have here? I've got to make it work just from a simple <coughs> box perspective. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And then I can start building all this other stuff. And then I go, okay, well, if that's that angle, it's going to get a little more severe. <coughs> and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. Why is this taking so long? Where's Daniel? I'm here. Okay, what do you think? Uh, a lot of fun. Just drawing buildings and stuff. Yeah. Okay, this uh, one. What do you think the problems were? That's a nice one. Um, I was trying to be as loose as I could. I guess Good. I'm not loose. Uh, I think maybe some parts I need to like reel it in a little bit and be more intentional with my lines uh, on some of the lines, you know. Um, yeah, I, I found myself just like, just like basically like scribbling, like just really quick, you know. Um, so now I think it's time to like slow down a little bit more and to like. Yeah, to be honest with you, my draw, the way I draw is I kind of do throw down just a lot of really loose, I call it smoke, and then I solidify it, right? that all stuff is all really light and I, and I build it. Right. So I, yeah, I totally agree with some of the things you just said, like here. So here's the trick to that. <coughs> like here, I would definitely hit this. I mean, pop that forward. Um, so what's happening here is we're starting to get, the hell is this oh okay um okay so what's happening here is we're starting to get a little bit of a mushy line like right there you see that yeah that makes sense like here okay so what i tend to do and we'll see this more when we start doing like planes and things um is now i'd come in here and again this is an overhang but it's not just that it's an overhang. What I do is I've got these loose, you know, things that I threw down and then I'll go in, turn that board and ghost over it and sweep it and, and clean that line up. And all of a sudden I just clean up certain lines over the okay. ones that, that are loose. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So I'm going in and I'm just structuring everything sort of based on, you know, what's mechanical, what's going to pop. You, you, you hit this one a little bit. I'd hit it a little harder. Mm -hmm. I'd probably pull that dark into these a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'd probably hit these under here just to sort of have a reason to pull them over this bottom part of the board here, here, here. And you're already starting it. Now I just get a little, see, look at this, this line and I get it. It's like worn, but I'm still going to structure it maybe to there. So I just get a little bit of like that. It's a board. It's structured. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not, you know, I don't need to overdo it. Cause you know, it looks like it's a pretty dilapidated thing. Then here I'd probably put some grass or something. Same thing here. So really it becomes a game of structuring and uh, clarifying in the light and all that stuff with your line. Cause then you're starting to pop, right? Yeah. You know, and I don't want to overdo it. Like see how that's all starting to get a little more structured and a little more clear mm -hmm. down here. This is hitting the ground. So I'm going to hit that a little harder. You know, is there a path here? Actually, kind of come like that a little bit. You know, where I can put some of that. Is there, um, maybe there's grass here. And I don't know what was there. Where was this? Riley's Farm. Oh, out in uh, Oakland? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It was like dirt. <laughs> the ground is just dirt. <laughs> what I might dirt. do then is I might, and I don't, you know, you're a little further along, so you could do a little of this. Okay. Um, I might maybe put like a little cobblestone path here. Yeah. And what am I doing? It just leads the eye into it. You can see it just makes it a little more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it comes up <clears throat> this way, you know, and I could put some grass around the edges and around where it's a little overgrown. I could drop in a little texture on these. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's something here, like a weed or something. Uh, you know, I see already it's starting to look a little more like a scene. Yeah. And then, you know, I might put a, I'm sure there's trees around there. I might put a tree in here. Yeah. And then have that tree cross over the back maybe. So now I got overlap again. Then, you know, I could mass some leaves or something here. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> put a little bit of texture on the tree itself. And again, I'll go over this next week, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, but I just want to show, I have to jump forward here and there. You know, maybe one more thing over here. And now we got a little um, scene, right? And we punched yeah. the buildings. I like this. I like the way these are clustering and then dissipating. I might put a few more over here. So it doesn't totally disappear. You don't need a lot. Okay. Uh, up on these industrial buildings. Okay, so here's another example. So here's what I want you to start doing. When you get this kind of thing, then then turn your sketchbook and start cleaning up these lines a little bit. Oops. See, I'm not turning it. That's why. There we go. And this one's new. Okay. Okay. And on these industrial buildings, I can always get away with going, there's stuff up here. There's air conditioning units. There's something up there. And see how it breaks the roof line? Yeah? Yeah. And by the way, if I'm looking at something like this and I don't see that up there, then I look around at some other building and go, oh, I'll put that up there. It's usually like boxes or like they'll have this round thing with the, um, mm -hmm. with the uh, heating unit. Usually has this round thing. Um, but I mean, I could basically just put little things that break the silhouette. I'd probably put a few things in here, just indicators, like there's something in there. This is going to come down, I think, more. Uh, see, see this line here, how it's getting very wobbly? Yeah. So watch that wobbly line thing. So now we want to get into that thing we talked about where you ghost it and then put the board in a really nice angle and, and just get mm -hmm. a nice clean up that line. When you first okay. put it down, when I first put it down, I just put it down light and loose. Then I go in and I structure what I need to structure. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Watch your perspective here on this car. So this is another thing where sometimes I'll draw the car like this, or I'll draw that rear window, and then I go, okay, where does this part land out here? And then where does this part land? Where's my structure? You know, and then I'm going to have a, whatever you call it, a fender well there. The tire is going to be covered partly by that. You know, I'd make sure that I'm getting this perspective correct, and then I can build all the other stuff into it and get a little more structure to it. Does that make sense? Because this perspective is yeah is is, a, is kind of wonky so sometimes mm -hmm. when it's really wonky like that i sort of build it like this which is a little different than and again this starts to come into spatial relationships again which we'll really talk about later but you know i, I again i'll just go okay so a lot of times i'll start if it's a weird view like that i might start with that back window and I go, how high up is the trunk hitting it? Maybe it's there. And then I go, how far out does it go here? And then where does it end here in relation to the window? Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I could go, how much of this do I have? And then how much of this do I have? So there's my, let's say there's my wheel well. And let's say this is the other one. And then I go, okay, the front of the car comes out a little more and it tilts. This actually comes down like that. I can see the other side of the car there. Then I can start going, okay, comes here. I can see the other tire over here. And then I can start going, well, the trunk comes out about there, drops down. Then I've got the license plate. Then I've got my bumper. Here's the door. There's the handle. Again, this usually isn't the star, so I'm not that worried about it. But do you see how I built it based on where everything's placed? Yeah. Because sometimes it can throw you a little bit, cars, like in perspective like this, where kind of building out of a box sometimes will kind of screw you up a little bit. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then there's going to be a little bit of business under here that I want to get just to indicate that there's something there. I always draw old looking cars. So I'm going to put the old antenna on it. Um, and then, you know, I can just do a little bit of an indication of what's inside there. There's probably something here. There's probably a little thing there that come, this probably cuts in a little bit. There's my door handle. There's probably a little indication because a lot of these lights wrap around a little bit. That's off. So I'd fix that. And then this, get a silhouette going in here of that other side of the this strut mm -hmm. between the windows. <clears throat> Give a little bit of depth to the windows or shape. Dashboard, maybe that. You know, and I start building it, and then I could go out here and go, okay, I'm going to ground it now. Right? Yeah. But sometimes, like I said, it's, sometimes it's easier to build shape to shape if it's tricky, because I think cars are actually fairly tricky, even though they're very, they're in a weird way, they're simple in a weird way. They're really complicated. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. got ellipses and then if the front tires are turned this way, now you got a whole different deal with the ellipses mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You know? <clears throat> yeah. And then here establish these things right off the bat. So we can start getting this, what I want you to do is start seeing this perspective better, right? Mm -hmm. And then get that. So I want to get that established first. <clears throat> I don't want it to get all viscommy, <clears throat> but I do want to establish my overall sort of structure. Okay. And then, because I'm looking at this and these are going this way and this is going this way, right? Mm-hmm. So these are going to, you know, they're still going to follow that perspective. They're going to be a little more like that. And then I'd put this little crack in the sidewalk again, drop it down. So it tells the viewer what's happening. Very simply get this. I'd probably hit this a little harder. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> really pull yeah. it forward. So a lot of this stuff, I might even start to indicate that there's a crosswalk right there. What does that also do? It shows me that that's a ground plane, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that you put a tree back here. I like this, but all this, I think, 
you know, you might want to play around a little bit with a containment line and really get this thing to pop out of here. Or it might just be. Yeah, that was a separate drawing. <laughs> that was, was it? That's just technically a separate drawing. It's not connected to that building. I like it there. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense what it says, but who cares? Actually, it does because there could be a. And then look, I'm going to separate this top thing a little bit, a little of this, yeah. a little of this. So now, what does it do? You get the basic shapes established. Yeah. And then it becomes about refining and popping, right? which I love. I love once the drawing sort of ghosted in there and then you get to go in and start to play with it and pop it and refine things and clean up a line. I love that part because I've got the, I've got the basic information in there, right? Mm -hmm. Which makes it really fun. Okay. So it's something like this again, I might hit these I'm going to hit these Mm hmm because that's an you know the lights above it and it's going to help pop these out so this i'm putting the light up here mm -hmm. and i can come in here and i can start hitting the opposite sides and the down uh the overhead railing or the top railing you know and that's going to help me pop that forward so it's sitting in front of things again right I think here, these are getting a little sloppy. There's probably a little more information in there. Make I'd probably pop these. Make sure that they're proportionally about the same. See how this one's really narrow? This one's kind of narrow. This one's wider. You see that? Where'd you yeah. go? This, again, this can get, all that can pop. You're starting to hit these windows. That's good. Now here, again, see how wobbly these windows are? Yeah, the line work, the line work here. We're starting to get a little bit of random mark making right here. I'm going to beat you guys up on random mark making all the time. <laughs> Look at these. These are not uniform enough. That's a uniform thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so when you're drawing that or any kind of repeating pattern, what I do is I put a little ghosted line, a little ghosted line. Then I can just kind of come in here and hit that, hit that, hit that. And I know top bottom they line up, so then I can start hitting these, and that line will just disappear if I do it right. Then let's say I've got some depth over here, and let's say the light's coming from the left, so these would get a little darker, and then I could start to build. You know, I could put some curtains in here. Maybe this one's got a lamp in there, and then my trim around it. But if you ghost that little line in there, and then I can pull this down here and create the next layer of it. And once I get that one, I can establish the next one. And then I'm starting to get more of a um, <coughs> uniform um, mechanical thing, correct? Yeah. And what we want to do is we <laughs> want to really, you know, when we're saying something's mechanical and and it's a repeating shape or whatever. This too could also get, I, you could hit this a little harder, put it out in front. So now we got a nice overlapping element. These could get a little more prominent. You know, just starts, it, it, it's structuring, getting that line mm -hmm. when it needs to be. So, I like that you're going in really um, loose. That's good. But now, can you see how we just take the looseness and we just structure a little bit of it? Yeah. That's kind of, to me, this is a nice one. I like this one a lot. <clears throat> this car looks nice. Where is this? That's my house. Wow, that's a cool house. <laughs> what city is that? A walnut. Oh, walnut. I don't know much about walnut. A little town between L.A. County and Orange County. Yeah, it's off the 60 or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see, here you're starting to feel like the lines are popping a little more. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to push them a little bit. You're starting to see these feel a little more. Is this a later drawing? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I numbered mine also by time. Do you see how the more you go, the better they get? Yeah. So that just speaks again to... um um repetition mm. warming up 
you know. Yeah, I like this. I'd probably put a little more texture down here. Yeah. And and especially like where it hits, if this is a sidewalk or whatever, mm -hmm. I really like to hit it right there because that's where you're going to see the edge of the lawn. I don't do too much of it. Even around these little stones, you'll see a little bit of um, ground texture. Yeah. Same thing with the rock. You know, rocks, by the way, are just series of planes, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of keep that in mind when you're drawing them. You know, and then you can kind of come in here and start to soften them up a little bit. But mm -hmm. they're really, you just got to find the planes mm -hmm. in them because that's really what they are. Yeah. Now it looks like a buried car or something. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does look like a car. <laughs> Is this that place over by Northgate? No, this is uh in Cherry Valley. What are you doing out in Cherry Valley? I went to Riley's Farm. Oh, that's to right. Draw. What'd, you, what'd you guys go out there for? Just to go hang out? Yeah, and sketch. That's great. Yeah. No one's wearing a mask. <laughs> you know what though, Riley's Farm? It's weird because they. I think I, I think it's them. Uh -huh. I, I read some. Or something popped up where they had had like a Trump rally or something there. Oh, really? So that might be why. And then I, because I cut them off now. I'm like, I'm not going to buy anything from you guys if you're hosting Trump rallies. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, I get emails from them all the time. And it's a drag. So here we're getting a little funky with our perspective here. I like this drawing, but we're getting a little fun. I think this one is a good example of starting to be really loose, but starting to structure. But now let's make sure that that yeah. perspective and everything's happening, right? Yeah. Be careful with this kind of thing, with these slats, where I feel like these some of these are sort of random. Mm -hmm. um, be purposeful in your mark making. See, you're getting a lot yeah. of this sort of that kind of thing in this sort of wobbly line where, you know, in, in yeah, again, a rule of thumb, you can pull them out from the top a little bit. And yeah, you can put a few here and there. Yeah. But I'd pull them out from the top and bottom a little bit as a start, not everywhere. And it just separates them really nice. Yeah. You know, and again, here, we could probably go a little darker there, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, be careful here. Oops. Ugh. This is to me all the time. Hang on. I have to um, calibrate this stupid thing. Okay, let's go here. Come on. It'll probably do this one more time. It usually does it again right after. Oh, okay. So this um, tree. Usually, I mean, you have to find the pattern in it, but like these, you know, and one thing I think about too, is I go, okay, there's a, there's a, um, you know, a volume to this. So, yeah. And a lot of times these things are sort of this weave pattern where they go and they weave around. So I yeah. find the weave pattern and then I just sort of do like I do with a um, uh, roof or something. It's, you know, it's, I can let it drop off at some point, but I got to determine it. This isn't giving me enough information, right? Yeah. Where'd you go? Yeah. Sorry. I was muted. So you'll get this sort of basket weave thing here. It's a very easy pattern to see. <clears throat> and, you know, there's different variations of it, right? Yeah. Or uh, there was one I drew over at uh, um, Arboretum, and it sort of did something like this. I know there was more to it. I can't remember, you know, where these were sort of the leaves were sort of following this. Some of them would drop over. Mm -hmm. Some of them would kind of come up like that, you know, and I, I'm kind of thinking of how the structure of it works from a logic perspective, like mm -hmm. figuring out the, the con, this construction of it. And again, I'm trying to do that without getting too mechanical or anything with it. I just want to have a, a basic breakdown of the shape, right? Yeah, and then and then I get warmed up, and a lot of it I'm just sort of freehanding, and I want it to be real loose, and I don't overthink it, you know. Once I'm good and warmed up, but if it's an interesting like that wrap around a the other thing when you're wrapping a texture around something, 
<clears throat> like if you have some sort of animal and again we'll get into more of this later <clears throat> i'm still thinking of the same thing there's a volume there right mm -hmm. and then i got to think of that 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 fur texture is going to wrap around it's going to compress as it gets down here and it's going to wrap around that volume the mistake people make a lot with this sort of thing is um, they'll kind of just go straight across the form and it's not, it's wrapping around the form. And if I wrap it around the form, it's reinforcing all that three dimensionality. And, and I consider like a pattern or fur texture or something like that kind of a freebie because it shows the viewer very simply what's going on on the surface. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Why do I always have this lag whenever I'm talking to anybody? I take for some reason it took me a while to unmute <laughs> to like click on it to like get the unmute button. All right. It all makes sense. Uh, you have any questions? Yeah. No, it all makes sense. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> I told. Yeah. No, this is on point. Yeah, it's good. Um, for me, it's the next stage of what you need to do. Like really push that. Um, yeah. Uh, now, you know, really push everything. You know what I mean? Ooh, these are nice. Where's uh, Eli? I'm right here. What do you think? Um, I think I could have gone a bit cleaner. I love this one right here. I think this is pretty nice. Oh, thank you. There's a lot of good qualities in here. So like here, again, again, I'm going to start becoming a broken record. I get it. Um, um, you know, I could pop that, you know, push that over, pull that over a little bit. Separate this out. Maybe clarify this a little bit. Be careful also because those steps look like they're like three feet high. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what was here? Was there a cap on this? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> yeah. So I always look for that stuff. And again, I don't want to make stuff up, but like, you know, I'll go, eh, maybe it's a stone fence. And then same thing applies. I'll hit some of these sides of these stones to show that the where the light is. Maybe put a crack in that. You know, and a little bit of texture on these things. Maybe there's some grass growing out there. Maybe there's some cracks on the sidewalk. Maybe there's a curb. This drops down, starts telling the viewer what's happening. Maybe there's something, a light post there, or I'd actually overlap it. Um, and, you know, just start punching some of these lines. Like, this is overhanging. We could punch that. I'd probably, oops, I'd probably do the little roof edge there. They usually have standard. Mm -hmm. Do it here. Maybe I'd put a sewer stack right here. This has one of those little pieces of trim or whatever that is right there. And then you got some nice little slats in here. That's all good. I mean, all the bones are here already. All I'm doing is punching. Do you see that? Yeah. See, I just repeated three shapes right there. That's not good. You know, there's usually an edge to this right here where that comes up. Usually has a cap on it. This looks like one of those kind of craftsman style houses. I might even. And then I'd pull that over here maybe. You know. You know, just kind of same thing. I was just talking to Daniel about just kind of start structuring it up and popping. Right? Right. 
The same thing here. I mean, you got the bones of all these things are pretty good. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Um, I I like what you did. Like, uh, yeah, just like putting more. Um, I guess like detail. Not detail. <laughs> I guess structuring it out more. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm doing is is I'm you're gonna find this out with painting, but we're only dealing with with line and value, right? And right now we're only dealing with line. Um, I have to have enough kind of shape in there to sort of make it interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my, one of my tools there is, uh, and, and by the way, that doesn't just mean cram a bunch of stuff in there. It's just like, okay, there's an umbrella there. I'm going to make that a little more prominent. If there's an umbrella there, there's a table there. I'm going to put the table there. If there's a table there, there's chairs there. So now I start getting a little more overlapping rhythm, more shapes. It breaks things up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> And they're usually there in front of you, usually. Um, and I, I'm, not, I'm not asking anybody to make anything up yet because I think that's sort of putting the cart before the horse. But you're going to see by the time we get done with this class that you'll probably start getting much more comfortable doing that. Um, and especially like if you put down a box shape, you know, a building or something, um, uh, then you kind of know where the perspective is. You know what I mean? And you can start kind of building another box and all buildings are for the most part are boxes and spheres and um basic shapes right right <laughs> so um and then here i'd probably have this tree sort of break over this so i got like a nice little silhouette breaking hanging over the house mm -hmm. Does that makes sense So on and so forth, right? And then we get like a nice little scene. But uh, are you understanding how we're doing the line, right? So if I put the light up here, this over here is going to get a little darker. This over here, anything on under, you yeah. know, things away from that light are going to get a little heavier. Things that are your basically your shadow values, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason I don't want any value in these yet is the first thing you guys got to learn is line quality, right? If you don't have line quality in your drawing, you're screwed. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just never going to look pro ever you know um and by the way there's people who make styles out of dead weight lines and that's fine but um you really need that uh especially for things like um like entertainment and stuff where you're um you're conveying ideas and design ideas and all that kind of stuff that have to be easily read by a lot of people yeah mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people have to see that and they all have to understand it. And a lot of them aren't going to be creative people. So, you know, things got to read clearly. Like I've talked to people who are non-creative people and it, it's shocking to me how much they can't visualize things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I always tell this story. I went into a meeting and it was way back and we were doing product for Stuart Little. Okay. Remember that movie? Mm -hmm. And I had to go over to Sony and present all these ideas. Okay. Because I think it was Sony. It was in Culver City, whatever it was. But anyway, um, it, it, there, it was a line of stuff that was going to go out with the movie somehow. I don't remember how. And um, But it's not big budget stuff. So you sort of go in with kind of standard stuff like, hey, we'll do a Stuart Little bank. We'll do a Stuart Little, you know, very common stuff, right? But it's inexpensive and blah, blah, blah. And I went in and I go, and I had a, uh, no, I didn't have any render. I brought in product. So I had a Mickey bank. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I go, because I didn't want to spend the time on the, uh, doing a bunch of renderings for stuff that was just kind of stock product. So I go, hey, we can do, you know, a Stuart Little Bank, you know, like this Mickey Bank. And somebody goes, I don't get it. And I go, it's a Stuart Little Bank. It's just like this. It's a character bank. I don't get it. And then like three other people in the room go, I don't get it. What? They couldn't even visualize that. It was just shocking to me. And like, Nobody in the room could visualize it. And there's probably at least four to six people in there. You know what I mean? Uh. And um, it really taught me a lesson. It's like, wow. You know, and then I had some other really standard thing and they were like, I don't get it. Like I couldn't just go, it's um, it's a Stuart Little Bank, just like this. So, you know, it just tells you it really made. And then I had to go back to the office and I had to render all this stuff, you know, for them to visualize it. But um, which was what I was trying to avoid.
but it really taught me a lesson where uh, that's why you're valuable because you can do that and you can make them real on paper or whatever. Um, and for people to understand it and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your skill set becomes very valuable in that way. Not just that you're a good designer or whatever, but just you can convey this information to people who cannot visualize anything. And I'd also say, if you're dealing with people who are non-creative and you don't know them, assume that you're showing this to a six-year-old. Like, <laughs> make it so clear that, like, if you were presenting it to a six-year-old, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that in an insulting way. They just don't have the ability to visualize. Yeah, I understand. My girlfriend does it. I'll say something to her about something. And she'll pick up one word in it. And I go, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm using that as an analogy. And she just goes right to that word and goes, well, I don't want it. We're a pizza place. We don't do that. And I go, okay. <laughs> and she used to be a marketing person. Okay. You have any questions? Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. Now go do 10 billion more. Okay. <laughs> Where's Eric? Hello. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. What do you think? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. Well, not hate him. I just, I like like Carrie said earlier like digital has kind of become a crutch and uh -huh. even more so um <coughs> like characters and and character coloring and all that stuff has become a crutch so I've really disregarded any sort of like building or prop which is definitely showing here <laughs> okay so, what I yeah. like about what you guys are saying because I always feel like I'm some old man yelling at all you guys to get off my lawn when I start talking about this digital stuff and I'm not and I, again, I want to make this clear. It has nothing to do with, with actually digital. It has to do with how that can rob you of your fundamentals. There's nothing wrong with digital at all. It's a great tool. But, um, but and what I like is that you guys are identifying it. You know what I mean? That, that makes me happy because it's like, good, you're identifying it. So you're seeing it. Okay. And that, again, that comes back to, um, I, I was always very skills-based in my head, even when I was a kid. Like, if I want to do something, it's because I want to have that skill and be better at it than anybody. You know what I mean? So when it came to this stuff, I was like, I have to know all this from the ground up again, right? And that's what I want you guys to have. And then when you go into those tools, you'll be amazing. That's why when you see, uh, you guys have seen Craig Mullins, right? No. Craig Mullins is a monster, or a... Greg Rutowski, let's look at him. I mean, it's painting, but so what? P.S. I'm like taking notes, like as you are. I'm gonna put all this up. I'm gonna put all this oh, up okay. on, a, on a whatever you call it, YouTube. So you're fine. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay, so this is Greg Rutowski, or however you pronounce his name. I mean, his stuff looks like it looks like oil, right? But it's mm -hmm. digital. Mm -hmm. um, why? Because he knows how to paint oil. So mm -hmm. he's just bringing mm -hmm. that skill set over. And I bet you anything. I don't know if he'd admit it. This probably seems because I know it does to me. It seems a thousand times easier. Like you can rip through digital if you know how to paint. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because it's just like, wow, this is just, I don't have to worry about paint handling. I can cover anything with anything. I can use any kind of brush mark on any type of brush mark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which you can't really do traditionally. Look at this one. I mean, these are great, right? But it's because he's coming out of traditional. Okay. Same thing with... Um, Craig Mullins. I just found a really cool guy the other day. I forgot his name now. Um, on Twitter, he popped up on my Twitter. Or this guy. You know, it just comes up with these really interesting points of view. Because he, he knows how to paint. You know what I mean? Now, he's using the this 
the tools and everything he can use in Photoshop. Because why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? Right. Makes your job yeah. easier. But those things are to make your job faster and easier. They're not in lieu of the actual skill set, which I think is where people fall apart. Right. Okay. And, and they go, and you know, again, now I'm going to sound like an old guy again. And then they get caught up in the, the extension of that as they get caught up in like, I want likes and all that crap on Instagram or whatever it is. And it's like, worry about drawing. Yeah. Worry about painting. Worry about getting your skill set good because likes and all that crap don't matter right now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even understand that concept. It's like, what do you want to watch likes for? It doesn't matter. Right. Like what you should be focused on and obsessed with is your skill set. You know, and then, yeah, mm -hmm. go have all kinds of fun throwing it all over social media. That's part of the game now is when you go into your career and all that's great. But it doesn't matter other than that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What matters is your skill set. Okay, so what we're getting here, like here, and this is really common when you first start doing this kind of stuff, <clears throat> is we're getting very geometric, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you probably want to kind of loosen this up a little bit. I'd probably pull this up a little higher. See how it's, it's almost a tangent right on that edge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'd pull it up a little higher. I'd break it. And then like little things like this, I don't want to overdo that either. Another thing I do with like brick is if I'm doing like a chimney, oops, too heavy. And it's got this kind of a thing. Okay, so I can sort of separate them a little bit. And then I'll come in here, here and there, and I'll put sort of a, a little bit of a shadow value on that thing. And then like where it breaks right here, this is to me the trick with this. And then I'll go in here, let's do this. And right here where they meet, let's go closer. I put that little divot where the mortar is. Okay. See how much that helps the edge? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very small stuff, but what am mm -hmm. I doing? I'm getting it away from just being a box, right? And then let's pull this one. Let's pull this one over here a little bit because my size. It. And I don't delineate all of them. And then I'll come in here and put a little bit of texture on them. I'll do the same thing maybe here, put the little mortar line in there because they dip in a little bit out here. Heavy up this line a little bit. Probably has a break in it here and there. And then, you know, maybe there's something like that. And then I go into my roof line. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So it's little things like that. Okay, so and then here, here we are again. That's random mark making, correct? Oops. Here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, because I was thinking about your tutorial the uh last week about how you were being intentional with like oh putting only indications of yeah you know like the shingles or whatever and i was like trying to do that and then i was like the perspective is all off but then you also like mentioned like well don't draw in perspective like perfectly and then just, i get in my head of like perfection syndrome and so i that's why everything was so like blocky and stuff in there yeah, to think, where it was hindering me yeah so I was trying yeah, to like, like <clears throat> the one I do in the video, it's pretty accurate, but it's loose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's accurate, but it's loose. And and if you see it at the end of it, there's like a nice quality to that drawing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and yes, people get into, I, I hear that all the time. And my answer to that, because I don't like this idea of perfectionism. Um, and, and you're saying it a little different way, but the way I normally hear it is I go, hey, how come you did that? Well, I'm kind of a perfectionist. And I go, let's go through all your work and you show me anything that's perfect. You show me anything that's even close to perfect. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, and I'm not saying this in the context of what you just said. <clears throat> uh, it's a, it's, it's a, they sort of weaponize that idea. Oh, I'm trying so hard for it to be perfect. It's like, that's, 
That's not what you're doing. Usually it's the opposite. Usually they did a really half-assed job and then they say they're a perfectionist. It's really weird to me. Um, plus the idea of being a perfectionist, there's nothing wrong with like wanting to be very good <clears throat> and make great drawings and all that sort of thing. I, I just think, try and get that word out of your mind because there's just no such thing as perfectionism. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just isn't. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're gonna, you'll never make anything perfect. None of us will. You know what I mean? This is never gonna be anything. Anything you make, you're probably, you're, you could put it in a gallery and people ooh and all over it and think it's great. And all you see is, oh man, look at the way I did that. That doesn't work. You know, it's just the way it works. And you know, you can have some satisfaction in it. That's a good piece or whatever, but you're always looking at what to make it better. Then you look at it six months later and you go, oh God, I hate that thing. You know what I mean? It's just normal. And then by the way, that's not a bad thing. That means you're probably getting more and more sophisticated with your scene. You know what I mean? <clears throat> You should be looking at things you did six months ago and go, God, I hate that now. It's good. That's healthy because it means you're getting better. And it means that your eyes are getting more sophisticated and your brain is getting more sophisticated in what you're taking in. Okay. <clears throat> Which is why when the rest or when the um, museums open and stuff, um, and I'm going to start doing this with all my classes. I decided this while we've been off. I'm going to start taking classes to, to certain shows and things to, to get exposed to different things. And also to get your mind blown. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The Masters of American West show, I don't know if they're going to do it this year, which bums me out. You want to get your mind blown? Go to that show. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I've actually had, I've taken classes there. I've actually had kids stand in front of these oil paintings and go, it, they, they've never stood in front of something like that. And they stand in front and they go, is that digital? Like literally, like they can't comprehend somebody did that out of paint. And I go, how could it be digital? It's got texture and everything. You know, it's paint, it's oil paint, you know, but they're so good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So what we want to do now is what I just said. You want to take some of this stuff out of this sort of very, let's, so let's do it a little, I'll just make some of this up maybe. So you can put in these sort of things, but then I want to come in here and I'm going to pull this out a little. Why am I doing that? I want to get a very, a very clear overlap, right? This could go a little darker. Okay. And then you've got your roof. So I'd probably go this way, actually. You know, these would be much lighter than what I'm doing, you know, and then I do exactly what I've said before is I'd start indicating some of these. I'd start um, putting some of them indicating some of them cluster them up what was this here <clears throat> this shape honestly these are houses in my neighborhood and they just have these random they're not chimneys they're just kind of they're to break up the form yeah. to make it look more yeah. complex yeah so like the door is like a little bit receded which i didn't really know how to indicate but like where the garage is um it kind of pulls forward and the door is further back well one thing then... you do with the door is you can darken up this leading edge line and it'll come forward a little bit right that's why it's called a leading edge right mm -hmm. <coughs> um here you know i'd hit these i'll give them a little bit of depth because they're overhanging here there's probably a little bit of um uh, volume to this this uh whatever it's called garage door make sure that these feel uniform these are manufactured with these kind of things like these light and, and i know they're small i'll do a light thing like that Mm -hmm. and then I'll make sure it's balanced. And then I come in here and I sort of separate them using my line based on where the light is. And now I got like a little more believable window. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, I'm cutting it out of a big shape, but I'm that's very light. And then I punch the lines and all of a sudden it, it connects, but it feels like separate elements. Right. Okay, same thing here. Like I'd probably put that crack there whatever however it goes what's this here um it's like a like a brick walkway kind of a thing going down again just i was like don't get too detailed like no that's good you know don't you look you guys i want you to understand something i don't expect everybody to come in here knowing all this stuff otherwise why would you be here right right so you're in a learning process i'm very aware of that okay uh, over here again, I might put, or, you know, maybe there's a, I could, you know, I don't know what was there. Maybe there's a fence there. I don't know. 
Uh, but you know, I could put a tree or something there. Now, when you do these, see how these feel like stringy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into this next week, but you know, you want to go, you know, this is like one, uh, depending on what kind of palm it is. Again, it could be one of those ones that's like this, and then you get these like serrated edges in it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be sort of the one you're doing, but you know, I might sort of gather some of that together and show some of them separately, but not all of them. Okay. But what I'm trying to get to is you don't want to do this and like hair coming out of it. You want yeah. to sort of mass that thing. So squint down and mass it. It's like if you're doing a, um, <clears throat> a palm tree way back here, you know, there's sort of just this radiating shape like that way back here with that little bunch at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a palm tree, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you broke that down, you know, you come up here, it has a mass here, which is all the old leaves that have fallen down around it. Then you've got a, you know, center point here and everything sort of radiates out from it when you get closer to it. And then these are basically triangles, right? That then I serrate and that's kind of how that works, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but I'm mm -hmm. still breaking it down into simple shapes and looking for the logic. Oh, the logic is as a center point. These come down and create mass. Then it thins out, comes up mass, center point. Everything radiates out from the center point like a fountain. Then it's got big triangles on it and I just build everything into those shapes. Now I'm not mm -hmm. sitting here putting all those shapes in there all the time. But in my mind, that's how I'm thinking of it. I'm taking a big shape and knocking it into the, the personality or whatever it is I'm trying to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. And look, this, this is on, not on purpose, but having some uh, overlapping element in the foreground helps us quite a bit. You know, if we had some leaves going in here, there's a trick you see constantly. Look, I mean, in every kind of art, let me see if I can find this. Oops, hang on. What do you think this tree's for in this whole mass? It's just like that Lilo and Stitch drawing with the mm -hmm. surfboards in the front, only we did, he did it with line. Here, and we'll do some, we'll start using tone probably after next week. Um, what does that do? It puts a big dark foreground element there and everything goes boom, right? Mm -hmm. And like what a lot of people do is they'll just use this sort of bran overhanging branch thing when they don't have a foreground element. It'll just, you'll see it all the time. This branch comes into the thing. They just, and it's usually really dark, like devoid of color and almost black. And they just put it there because it's like, I don't have a foreground element and I want, a, I want a foreground element and I'm going to pop it in there. Or it could be a fire hydrant or it could be a whatever. You know what I mean? Um, and then look, he's got another whole dark mass over here. If you squint down, that's one mass. If you squint down, this is one mass, right? Mm -hmm. And if I remember right, this is a really big painting because I think they had this up when I was at Imagineering. When you come in, I think it's the lobby. They have all these legendary concept paintings like this mm -hmm. which is mind-blowing and they were i remember this thing being really big like really big and, and it's in gouache which is kind of weird to work that big with gouache mm -hmm. but anyway um totally mind-blowing stuff look at the difference in color on those two scans okay all right so what we're trying to do here is come in here and go so now we have a lot of hard geometry right what was here does this just die right there um like in between the door and the and the garage yeah, right here on the ground um nothing i mean it was just like i said that that what city is this fountain valley 
Fountain Valley's pretty like a uh, suburby, subdivisiony, right? Yeah, our slogan is a nice place to live. <laughs> is that it's what pretty, it is? <laughs> it's literally like it's it's calm here. So nothing is really standout-ish. They might as well um, just say, hey, we got nothing. Yeah, we're pretty beige. Here, we don't have any ideas <laughs> about what we are. Like yeah. I think here in San Bernardino, it says like land of oh god what is it land of many something i can't remember i think it's something like that it doesn't mean anything either but it probably did at one time all right so here like you know like here there's probably a, a shrub or something here before it hits the ground right yeah okay well also too there was a big giant tree blocking the front of this house but i was like i just want to see like the house like i, I so yeah, yeah. i didn't want to you know have that completely be like half of what that house was kind of a thing so. sometimes what i'll put here too if i have a hard edge like this i'll put the little eve two by fours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even if they're not there sometimes i'll put them there okay just see how it just breaks that up makes it a little more interesting yeah i'll put sewer stacks up here Maybe if they have some, you know, nobody really has these anymore, but like the dish or something like that, I'll put that up there. Mm -hmm, I'll mm -hmm. serrate this edge a little bit at the ridge line of the roof. Yeah. You know, I would put, you know, I'd, I'd work out my uh, shingles and all that kind of stuff. You know, again, not overdo it. <clears throat> and then, you know, I'd come in here again and I just start hitting these little places that are going to catch shadow and are overhang because if I build it that way and not just linear, see how it feels a little more dimensional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That helped a little bit. And then I put the cracks in the, um, so you have to have expansion cracks and concrete. Yeah. And, you know, I put a little bit of texture here on the lawn and see, it's already getting a little more interesting, right? Yeah. Now, again, I'll go over foliage next week. So you could just put silhouettes and things like that. But, um, okay. you know, I might put another tree back here just because I'll get an organic against that. I do that a lot when I don't have, probably everybody does, maybe over here. When I have all these hard edges, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a tree or something back there. So it breaks up that edge. It's just like the, um, I probably might've said it in that video. The, the roof line of the science building as I was drawing, it's just boring. It just has this big, long, hard line. So I usually put a tree or something back there. So it's like, boom, organic shape. Makes mm -hmm. it a little more interesting, right? That's what I attempted to do with that little stringy palm tree, but um, it didn't work out. <laughs> well, look at it in mass. Look at it mm -hmm. as an overall shape. Mm -hmm. It's really common. I, I call it itchy line where people, you know, when they're drawing hair, they're drawing individual hairs and things like that. Um, and they, and they tend to draw everything sort of in this stringy way. It's just normal. What you got to do is kind of look. I'm always looking for the, the logic and the language of something, right? So if you have a lot of trees, let's say, you know, trees have a very distinct, usually, personality where they might sort of, you know, come up here and sort of, you know, come out in that sort of normal tree way, or they might come out here and they sort of, I call it knuckle. They, they have like a, an abrupt change. So it's like a knuckle and then it changes direction, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll even have like a little bump on it sometimes. And they're very angular as opposed to this sort of smooth thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm always mm -hmm. looking for that personality of the tree, especially if I've got multiple trees in there, right? Mm -hmm. Or like if I'm doing... Um, um, If you're doing a forest, like a forest has a lot of repetition where, you know, you've got these trees. Let's just make it real simple, you know, and they just keep repeating where you have another one, right? And another, you know, they might be different heights, but they're all sort of this sort of idea, right? So then what do you do? You go, okay, well, I'll throw, and you see this in the forest all the time anyway. I'll throw one that's dead in here and it's at an angle and it doesn't have any um, foliage on it. It's just, um, it's a dead tree, but it also gives me an angle. You know what I mean? If I'm doing a street scene where I've got um, maybe uh, telephone poles going back, 
which might be fine, but you know, I might do one that's a little off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and mm -hmm. you see it all. I just saw one the other day. It was leaning like that, like mm -hmm. a lot. Like if you ever mm -hmm. notice, it's interesting because that stuff to me is important. It, 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 it Like all these things you're going to catalog in your head are important because they give you design elements like this curve right here. Half the time, if I put a telephone pole in there, it's because I want to get that big curve in there. You know what I mean? Um, because I need, I, mean, I need an overlapping element and I've got too much geometry, right? So if I put a telephone pole back here somewhere, let's say, and, and then I can go, well, here's the lines radiating back to it. And I can overlap something and get a big curve in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then this right here, obviously, if I have them going back in perspective, it's going to really show depth. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I don't want it, everything to get repetitive. Okay. You got to be careful with that. And I'm really bad about this. I think everybody is. It's like repeating things and you won't see it. Like I, I do it more when I'm painting. And then I'll go back and look at the painting. I go, oh my God, I repeated that same thing like four times and it wrecked the painting. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Or, and this is, speaks to your eyes getting used to what you're doing without being, uh, it, your brain starts telling you when you're drawing or painting, it starts telling you everything's okay. Right. Okay. So it just starts going, yeah, it looks fine. Looks fine. Looks fine. And then somebody else walks over and goes, why are all your trees like slanted like that? And I'm not kidding you, man. I've done paintings on, I did, I've done a lot where I come back and I, I look at it in the mirror and everything's like this, like pretty mm -hmm. severe. And it's mm -hmm. weird how used to it your eyes will get and your brain will get. That's why it's helpful to get, like I said, bust a mirror off a compact or something and just, you can put it right to your eye like that and you can see it over here and it'll flip it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't do that so much anymore, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. sometimes if I'm questioning myself, I don't know if I'm drawing at a cafe or something, I'll go in the bathroom, look at it in the mirror. Mm. I'm sure people think it's weird, <laughs> right? Because they don't know what you're doing. That was totally a thing too, like just driving around my neighborhood and then people just like looking at me like, and I'm trying to be discreet, but <laughs> I never, <laughs> so I'm just you know, like, what this guy's doing? Like, most people, like I said, most of my encounters with people are pretty positive. Mm -hmm. And if they notice me at all, and most of the time they don't. Like if I'm out painting, but I tend to go out painting places where I'm going to be left alone. But sometimes I like to set up a paint box. This is interesting. I'll set up a paint box, like, I don't know, at the restaurant or something. And I'll just sit there and do little watercolor studies or acrylic studies of people or whatever, like little portraits. Um, they don't even notice it. And I've got a paint box and paint and a palette and they don't know, you know why they don't notice it? Because none of them know what a Peshad box looks like. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like mm -hmm. they know what an easel looks like. If I set up an easel, they'd be, oh, he's painting, but it's a little Peshad box, paint box. They don't know what that is. So they leave me alone. Mm -hmm. They're not interested. And also I've said this before, partly what's good right now is people are so narcissistic. They don't care what you're doing. Right. You know what I mean? They're right. sitting there taking pictures of themselves, you know, and putting them on right. and, you know, the only bad part though, is everybody's constantly looking at their phone. Like you get sick of drawing people looking at their phone after a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, what can you do? What I try and do then is get people in conversation, you know, like, Oh, they're actually talking to each other. I'll draw them. You know what I mean? Um, and get away from this all the time, you know? And like, when we get into drawing people, one of the things I used to like to do up here is go to the McDonald's up here. Like, right. I did it on accident the first time. Um, but I went to McDonald's because I go up there to draw. It's right on the lake, uh, draw people. And it's a pretty good spot. And, um, and you get free iced tea refills, but um, it was right when school let out. Mm -hmm. So it was all these dorky teenagers mm -hmm. and it's really fun to draw them. And especially up here. Cause they're super not cool at all. You know what I mean? They're way mm -hmm. out of it. Cause it's a small town. It's weird. Um, and they're just dorky teenagers. You know what I mean? They all think they're cool. They're not, you know what I mean? Just like I wasn't cool when I was, you know, and I'm sure I thought I was, <laughs> but they're fun to draw, you know? And like mm -hmm. one thing that was fun to draw is like they're, they're, bad posture when they're they, they sink down into these things when they're looking at them you know mm -hmm. so it gave you a lot of interesting poses it's much more extreme i noticed with uh like high school kids you know mm -hmm. they're all gonna have bad posture because i mean they were really leaning over like really severely doing this you know it was interesting at least to me all right so you have any questions 
Um, well, I guess I just wanted to point out that like I tried to do on like the next couple of drawings or at least on the next one after that was I tried to do the massing thing of like, um, you know, like doing the palm tree or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But then I just kind of got frustrated with foliage and I was like, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> So don't worry about foliage right now because I'm going to go. Yeah. Over okay. I, okay. And I, I want you guys, I, I've said this before and I want to say it again. <laughs> drawing buildings is not about drawing buildings, right? When we go and draw airplanes, it's not about drawing airplanes. Okay. Uh, foliage is not about foliage. It's, it's a, it's sort of categories that I'm hoping that you'll start to go. Um, shingles. Oh, that's texture interiors of trees that's texture how do i and then you can start applying that to things when you're going i don't know how to draw that because i remember when i was learning all this stuff you'd look at like i don't know ground texture or whatever and you go how do i draw that like there's nothing there mm -hmm. you know what i mean so then it becomes like t teaching yourself to go well it's texture um you know it's going to be sort of random mark making but with purpose like i just need to find a couple of shapes in there that i can sort of start to repeat I can break it up with the rock. The, at the bottom of the rock is going to have an irregular edge. That's going to reinforce that this is dirt or whatever it is, or grass. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and hopefully you'll start to um, take these components and start to mix and match them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and also start to learn when something, like I think that it's very important that you question your, um, when you look at something and you go, later on, hopefully this will happen in here. When you look at something, again, you're going to go, okay, what is that? How do I interpret that? Okay, it falls into texture. And then you start to interpret things as they fall into these kind of things. Um, you know, it's just like when you're doing color, like if I look at a tree and I go, I was talking about this yesterday. When I look at a, uh, a tree, if I ask somebody what color that tree is, they'll go, it's brown, right? But if you're a painter or an illustrator or whatever, you go, well, what temperature is the brown? You know what I mean? And up here, the trees tend to be purple. Now, if mm -hmm. I showed people that and I said they're purple who aren't artists or whatever, they'd go, what are you talking about? It's not purple. And I go, everything up here is purple at certain times of the day. The ground texture is purple. The trees are purple. It's, so if I'm going to mix that tree trunk color, I'm going to mix a little bit of purple and knock it down with um, some yellow and get me a sort of a neutralized brownish yellow or a brownish purplish yellow or brown, sorry, right? So when I'm looking at something, because I learned this when I was learning how to paint, I look at something, there's a lot of colors that you go, I don't know, I don't know what that is. Well, if you don't know what it is, it's probably gray, right? right. right. Then the next question is, what temperature gray is it? Right. right. Oh, it's a little bit bluish. It's a warm gray. Okay, that's a warm gray. I know how to mix that. You know what I mean? And then you, you put, throw it down, you go, oh, it's got a little more yellow in it. You nudge it a little more yellow. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with this, where you look at something... And if you don't know how to interpret it from a drawing perspective, then you start breaking it down and go, what is it? Okay. You know what I mean? And what mm -hmm. is, what category is it falling into? Because mm -hmm. if you're starting to think about it like ground texture or something, it's like some individual shapes or something, it's not. And then you'll start to develop a language for that. You okay. know, you start developing your own language. And, and it'll just be like, when I do the demos of that, people think I'm just randomly scribbling things and i'm like does that look like i'm randomly it looks like it when i'm drawing it but when i get done with it does it not look like what it's supposed to look like and that's just experience okay like mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is just experience mm -hmm. so like here again we'll go back in and sort of individualize these kinds of things correct yeah this has got some overlap which is good you got to watch your perspective but that'll get better and better it looks like the brady bunch house yeah that one i kind of like that super long like yeah this sloping thing all the way down yeah. you know why you like that because it breaks the shape up mm. it, it's asymmetrical it mm -hmm. handed you something that's that's a freebie mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. like when you're drawing a house it's just like a box with a roof on it you're kind of like what am i going to do with this you know what i mean mm -hmm. but when they give you like this big sloping asymmetrical shape you're like yeah i don't have to make this more interesting that made it more interesting right right so those to me are just freebies <laughs> cracks and sidewalks are freebies because they they yeah. describe the surface form um tree trunk that follows a form or follows the cylindrical form it's a freebie because it tells the viewer that's cylindrical and i don't have to make a lot of 
noise about it, right? Mm -hmm. Nature's mm -hmm. handing me all those things, okay? Yeah. Or manufacturing process is handing me those things. When I draw a plane, those seam lines on that do the same thing. They show the viewer like that's a curvilinear form going around a cylinder. I don't have to work that hard on it because it's got a cut line in it from the manufacturing. All those things I look at and go, I'm stoked when I get those things. I'm like, okay, now I don't have to work so hard to make that look like a cylindrical form. Right. Because those things are doing it for me. Same thing when they roll over a, a wing, because a wing's a very complex shape. And if I if it's just a smooth shape, then I'm gonna have to go in there with a core shadow on the leading edge and then some reflected light underneath it to turn it to show them that it's turning, that it's not a flat plane. Does that make sense? But if it's got those cut lines, it makes it a lot easier because they're gonna roll right over that form, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so does all make sense? Yeah, thank you very much. So we're throwing down what you're doing because to be honest with you, the most important thing right now is that you gotta understand proportionally those simple shapes, okay? Then we can complicate them. We can make them more interesting. We can loosen them up. Um, and that's gonna be the trick, okay? Okay. And then using all our tools, like we've, you, you guys have probably learned even down to basic drawing or basic, uh, not basic drawing, basic design, you know, overlap, shape relationships, size differences, contrast, value, all those things you've learned. Okay. Those are, those are the things you're going to access for the rest of your life is nothing but fundamentals. Like you'll get up to an advanced level, but guess what? It's still just the same stuff. It never changes. You just get better at it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's no big advanced bunch of knowledge all of a sudden you're going to get that's different than those basic tools, right? Mm -hmm. Again, it goes back, everybody's got 12 notes, right? Okay. Oops. Okay, where's uh, Ernesto at? I'm right here, sir. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's the second page. There's a... Uh... Yeah, they're in a, that's the first one, yeah. Proportionally, it's not too bad. What you want to get to here, like these are showing, it, where's the light, here? This is saying, except for two of these, these were all drawn at night. Not the best idea. But, I mean, if you have to, that's fine. Is this the city hall? No, that's, um, that's some office building that's across from uh, from my job. Now here we're getting a little too much with the, whatever you call it, the shingles, yeah? Yeah, that was that was at uh, Citibank over on, not far from Kramer and Yorba in the Boulevard. And that one, uh, that one was where I had to start guessing because it was dark, that one was at night. And I'm like, okay, this one, that was not a good idea because I had to do a lot of guessing. The hard part like, about that is that, the hard part about starting this off with at night is that you're, you're where you're, your shadow values and everything is going to get kind of funky. Yeah. You know, and, and it might not make sense unless I put in all the value and show that something's, you know, the windows on, you know, lit or whatever. Um, and then I'm, I'm trying to avoid, you know, when we're working observation like this. I'm trying to avoid making stuff up. Now, obviously I'm making some stuff up as I go and you guys will too, as you get more and more comp, um, competent at this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But be careful doing it at night. So same thing here. And again, I'm just going to have to pretend that it's daytime. Yeah. Hang on. I don't know what's going on here. What is going on here? It's weird. You know, this is an overhang. Same thing. Okay, this has some mass to it. It's not that thin, probably. It's going to have some mass to it. By the way, you guys, I just popped into my head, sorry. Because <clears throat> I always see stuff that just looks like interesting reference. Where is it? Hang on. I 
might have to find it later. Maybe I'll find it during lunch. Damn it. Yeah, I'll find it during lunch. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, what's this here? Which one? That is that a railing? Yeah, yeah, that was a railing. That's the the second floor of the of the Rose Church. Part yeah, of Rose that's Church. starting to come under the same uh, heading as sort of this, like we we're talking about with the palm tree. You know, these are going to have a little bit of, of weight to them. It'd be smaller than this. I get it, but they're going they have some dimension to them, right? Mm -hmm. So then I come in here and I just ghost it. This would probably get darker here. And then away from the light, these things would get darker away from the light. And I'd start to punch them a little bit, but separate them because they're, they're not just going to be sort of like that, right? Yeah. Well, if I drew these small, I don't, they're maybe, most of these drawings are maybe like. Look, that's one of those things thing. too, where I like, I can beef them up a little bit if I need to. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. That way I can get them away from just feeling so linear. Yeah was linear the trees i'm not worried about yet because i'll talk about those later um this feels like it should have some sort of dimension to it so everything right now is feeling very outliney and just 100 linear <clears throat> where some of these things have some thickness to them does that make sense mm -hmm. i'd probably round this edge a little bit more even if it's a little sharper it's fine And then, you know, get some, you know, what kind of roof is this? Oh, it's just a straight roof. There's no, it's just exactly that. It's just very, it's a very blocky kind of. Uh, but this is the structure. roof, correct? Uh, yeah, but there's no, the roof itself is, it's literally just a straight up slab. So it just goes straight and then it just, it, 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 there's no it angle to the it roof. It doesn't have any shingles of any kind? No, that one, the other church, which is on the other page, that one definitely has shingles. That's a Danish church up uh, up on that one right there on top. That has shingles. But the it has one to have rows, no. It either has to have a tin roof or it has to have shingles. Because I don't, they have to shingle the roof or it'll leak. Possibly. But with this, at least like this building, when you see it, it's just, I don't know, I don't picture it, but that particular building, it's just, it's a, it's a concrete building and they may have shingles up on the, Okay. Uh, on the top plane but you can't here's yeah. right this here one. right here is another thing that i see all the time <clears throat> which is this roof line right here feels like a sheet of paper like it just feels very thin do you see that mm -hmm. so you know there's usually there's got to be something here like a fascia board or whatever they call it maybe here. Yeah, that does have yeah that one does have like a little something like that it does have so you paper. have something here i put that in so <clears throat> Things don't, they're not usually paper thin looking. They have some sort of structure to them. Um, you know, and then I'd probably, whatever kind of roof that is, whatever kind of, how this top breaks up, I'd break that up. Um, this I'd get a little more. Now this is another one where I'd probably put a line. So think of it this way when you're doing this kind of a thing. If you're doing that mm -hmm. kind of a thing, I'd probably put my line like that. And then it's sort of straight. And then I can round off the top. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And then, you know, give it a little bit of thickness and it feels a little more architectural that way. Then I thicken this line up, but that's the one in the direction of the light because this one's going to catch light here. This one's going to go into shadow and that'll pull it forward. If I've got something on the interior, it'll pull it forward. And then it's something will get buried back there if it's really far into the interior. Yeah, and just sort of uh, hit these. And then also, some of these I hit a little harder. It'll mm -hmm. kind of break up the texture a little bit and then let them kind of fade off a little bit or let them sort of dissipate a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, same thing we we're talking about with, uh, I think, it was, was it Eric? Um, you know, like this little piece of trim, I might pull it out past the the, the wall a little bit to get break up that edge and make it a little more interesting. Same thing here is probably got something here. I might, if there's a bush here and there's nothing here, I might make the bush a little bigger. Uh, 
so on and so forth. This is in front, so I might punch that a little bit and push it forward. You know, same thing, right? Mm -hmm. so you've got to be descriptive because like when I look at something like this, I'm confused as to what's going on with that shape. So we got to make sure that it's it's really descriptive, right? Yeah. And, and when I say descriptive, descriptive enough where I know what's going on, not like overthinking it to death, right? What we're trying to do That's here something. is get to these sort of um, simple fast sketches, right? But yes. looking like they're, you know, being very descriptive. Is this the first page? Yeah, that's the first page. Wait, I should have four pages, right? I thought, it was, I thought it was eight. Or well, I thought it was like a total of eight. It's six. <laughs> I think I said two, but they're front and back. Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I start off with two this week. I usually do like four. I start off with two just to not overwhelm you guys yet. I'll overwhelm you later. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense, all that? Yes, sir. Again, think about the thickness of an object, that it has um, dimension, all that kind of stuff. Where's Evelyn at? Hi, I'm here. What do you think? These look pretty good. Oh, thank you. Um... In the beginning, I struggle a little bit because um, I'm not good at uh, drawing tre uh, trees or plants. So you can see, this is the, the last drawing. So you can see the beginning. Ooh, I, I like I, these. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, and you can see on my second page, I really struggle with the plants. And I, and actually the plants are in the foreground. It's blocking the, the buildings a lot. So. Um, towards the end, I try to remove all the trees and just focus on the structure of the yeah, houses. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go over trees with you next week. Thank you, yes. And also, probably you guys... Sorry. Hang on, I got to put on a sweatshirt. It's cold in here. Hang on. getting cold now i turned the heater off okay uh yeah don't worry about that so what i'm probably going to do is i'll probably do a <clears throat> half an hour hour demo i'll throw it up on youtube i'll link it this week uh before class so you can sort of get a look at it and i want to make this mm -hmm. clear i probably already have it i want to make it clear i'm not doing tutorials to go go look at the tutorial i'm going to do it i'm not doing that it's to sort of give you a little bit of a um primer on what we're going to do in class and that we'll already have some questions about this that the other and then i'll still go over it in class also does that make sense okay but it's nice to have a sort of controlled uh lecture and then i'll go over it in class with whatever you're having problems with and i'll do demos and all that stuff it's not so i don't do it in class it's so it's sitting there and it's a very clear demo hopefully okay okay Okay, I, I think these look pretty damn good. What's your major? Um, I want to work in the visual development. So I'm trying to improve my sketching and design skills. And here I do struggle, uh, like you said earlier with other students, like to make the drawing pop with the hard outline. And yeah, I, yeah. I try to clean up afterward, but Actually, in the beginning, I put down too hard on the outline, as you may see. So I, it's hard for me to clean up after work. Yeah. Okay. So what you're doing there is exactly what I want you to do. You're, you're trying things. Some of them are going to work, some aren't. And we'll get more and more controlled with it. But you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for something like visual development, you need this skill set. You have to be able to draw up quick and clear. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So now... Where's the light at here? Is it up here? Uh, yeah, actually uh, around the noontime. So it's uh, up. Be careful around noontime because the mm -hmm. sun's like right overhead. It's kind of the worst lighting. Okay. It's not too bad when you're drawing. When you're painting, it sucks. Um, 
but you know it's nice when you got a nice directional light um because it's just you know it gives you a directional light gives you some nice shadows mm -hmm. and so forth right so here let's just go through here and punch this a little bit i'd punch that this is overhanging i punch that pretty hard mm -hmm. um normally we would put a shadow here but i'm not going to worry about that and i would go okay this part is hitting the light but i might give it a little pop there to separate it so i pulled it forward okay can you see that yes okay you know i'm not going to overdo it um if it was a viz dev drawing i might just give this whole thing a containment line because that's it viz dev and um when you're doing stuff for work it's a little different what i'll do with stuff uh with line i'll, I'll knock into it a lot heavier in a lot more just in a different way it feels like a less artistic point of view and a more clarity point of view okay because mm -hmm. when you're doing that sort of thing so if i take this like if, okay so you have this car here now what would have and i think you're like i love this building here and all this kind of stuff is this a tin roof here uh it's a shingle roof. okay okay because so, the texture is too too much give me a I little just... bit of that in there okay. a little bit of the shingles again i'd probably just break that top edge up a little mm -hmm. i like the way it's sitting there now here's what i probably would have done hang on let's do this i'm going to put a layer behind this i probably would have taken when i was drawing this Okay, so remember I said I usually just sort of ghost everything in and start just placing things. Mm -hmm. So before I would have placed all these objects there, then I probably would have hit the, I'm just gonna, my line work in the back here Let's just try and do it like this. Good enough. My line work in the back here. I don't want to lose the color. Hang on. I probably would have not leaned on the line work so heavily there and see how that'll push it all back. Yeah, this is why I want to do <laughs> like try to achieve. Yeah, and all you'd have to do there is just not lean on your line work that line work back there could stay much lighter and then you just punch your foreground line work. Does that make uh, sense? Okay, yes. <clears throat> so this is important because what happens is and people do this a lot with painting too, by the way. Mm -hmm. They start, so you've probably heard you should work foreground to background, right? Or background yes. to foreground, I'm sorry. Um, here's the danger in that, and you have to contain it, <clears throat> it which is the reason why it's good to put, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, <clears throat> like, I might start building up the background a little bit, then I'm going to stop and I want to work in the foreground a little bit, because what can happen is you'll overwork the background, and then the background and foreground are, are on equal weight and they flatten. Does that okay. make sense? Okay. Actually, on this one, I started from the background, the, from the back of the house, then moved to the foreground because I um because I think that would be easier for me because I think No, that, that's fine. Just mm -hmm. make sure that when you're working on the background, you don't take yes. it far before you start working on the foreground. Okay. Because what people do is they forget about the foreground, they totally trick out the background, and now the two are competing. I see. Like my line work in the back has to get a lot lighter, not as descriptive. And then the foreground stuff as it moves forward is going to get more descriptive and darker and all that kind of thing. But you okay. can see how easy it is to pop it, right? Yes. But I think these are a really good start. Okay, great. Yeah. And your proportion looks pretty good. Yeah. Like this looks pretty good, which is which is okay. half the battle, to be honest. I'm taking a perspective class. So Good. I'm glad yeah. you guys are all taking perspective. That's great.
Yeah, the class is really helpful. Mm -hmm. If you don't know perspective, you're screwed. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to work on the structure to make sure it's precise in pr proportion. This is interesting because I thought this was BS when I heard it. When I okay, so my perspective teacher was a total hard ass over at Art Center, mm -hmm. and he would go, he would go, if you can't draw ellipses, you're not going to get a job. And I just said he was full of crap. And um, <laughs> I go, really, dude, come on. And then flash forward, I don't know, ten years or whatever, and I'm an art director. Guess what? I would shut people's portfolios down over ellipses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They draw yeah. a car and the ellipses were out of purport or uh, out of perspective. And I go, mm -hmm. they can't draw. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a dead giveaway that you don't know how to draw. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and then, you know, but that was a real dead giveaway. It's like, you can't see that your ellipses are leaning the wrong way. Like you can't see that. That tells me you don't know how to draw. You know, it's just a dead mm -hmm. giveaway. And I needed people who could draw, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also needed people beyond that who could sketch like what we're doing in here, who could sketch fast and throw ideas down fast, not somebody who's drawing there forever. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And that's what we're trying to get to here. And we're trying okay. to do it hopefully in a, in a very clear and artistic way. Okay. So we have some personality to these things. Okay. okay. Like, let me see if I can find this real quick. Wait a minute. Let's go. Oh, shoot. Let me see if I can find it here. Hang on. Yeah, I can't find them. Yeah, I'll find it later. I can't find anything today. Okay. So here, again, let's start punching these overhangs a little bit. Yeah? Yes. Uh, you know, again, I'd put some indication of maybe a uh, foliage. You know, is there anything that overlaps in this yard? You know, overlap. Oh, usually, it. usually houses will have some sort of foliage before it hits the ground or something. Sometimes they don't, I know. Yeah. Because uh, I, I try to like look for some houses that have don't much that not that have, that don't have that much plants in the front yard. So I can focus on the houses. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I'd probably <laughs> pull this Eve out a little bit. Okay. Just makes it a little more interesting. Here you want to indicate some of those um, shingles up there. Mm -hmm. Probably break up the roof line a little bit. Um, you know. What's today? Today's Saturday, right? Yes, it's Saturday today. <laughs> okay, sorry. Lockdown, I don't know what the hell's going on. All right. You know, does this window have any trim on it? Yes, it does. Yeah. So you want that in there. Okay. That really makes a difference. So what we're trying to do here, obviously, is uh, put that little crack and have it drop down. Mm. Describes the thing. Maybe put a little more indication, that bigger indication, that foliage maybe. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you know, go back in and sweep these lines and get them a little cleaner. Okay. Right? Yes. Same thing here. Let's get a fatter pencil. Um, that's an overhang. This is an mm -hmm. overhang. This is an overhang. So those are just easy spots where I can start to punch things. You know, what was here? Is there any eaves on this? Mm, there was not. Okay. I, 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 sometimes okay. I'll put them in there if I think it's too boring. Okay. Like I that, I don't care. I don't Sorry. care if you add that kind of stuff yet, because that's pretty simple. I don't want you to get too crazy with uh, making stuff up. Go ahead. You had a question? Yeah, I want to know how do you know where to apply to the, the hotline, like the 
line work that you're doing? Okay, How it's, do you know? it's based, it's, okay, here's the rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Here's my light, right? Yes. Anything away from that light, i.e. your shadow values, anything it's like overhanging, mm. right? <clears throat> it's indicating your shadow value, basically. I right? see. <clears throat> now, I also make strategic choices where like this necessary, I mean, this is away from the light. So this is not a good example. But mm -hmm. like if I had something, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if I'm drawing somebody. And they have a shirt on. And this shirt, they have their arm here. Okay. And this shirt, let's say, has a lot of pattern, and this sleeve has a lot of pattern. So when I turn this way, or even this shirt, when I turn this way, this can get lost in this, where I don't know where it separates. Does that make sense? Yeah. But the light's coming from here. So in theory, my heavier line would be back here, correct? Uh huh. Because it's in shadow. Yeah. But I might hit right here. I might come up here and sort of hit that just a little bit to separate it okay and make a design decision that's like that okay that's not it's catching light but i'm going to darken it to separate it a little bit so it's uh, light and separation uh, and, okay. and separation includes things like these eaves that are over something and when i darken a leading edge it will come forward mm. does that make sense yes yes it does mm. And, you know, and, and, and by the way, when we get to drawing people, <laughs> it's no different really than drawing buildings. Yes, they're organic, but we're going to look at it as a superstructure graphic shapes the same way we do with buildings, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not really going to change that much. What we're, what we're learning how to do is we're learning how to see. Does that make sense? Yes. You got to learn how to see. If you don't learn how to see, everybody makes it about this, about all the dexterity right? Mm -hmm. It's not about this, really, this will follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's about your brain seeing pattern and shape mm -hmm. and abstracting it. Okay. And then abstract by abstract. It's that like you guys have all heard this exercise where they'll have somebody draw a face or a class draw a face and they all kind of suck at it. Then they flip it upside down and they do better. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. The reason I do that. Is because now you've abstracted it and your brain has gone out of going oh my god it's complicated it's a face and it turns upside down it's abstract shit if i sit here and draw almost anything and i go hey you guys follow me make this line make this line make this line you'd make a pretty good drawing okay mm -hmm. um because you're you're just following um you're abstracting the idea you're just going oh oh yeah i can i can make a line like that okay i can mm -hmm. make a line like that because all the moves are fairly simple um but that's what you're, you're trying to do is abstract the shape so when you look at something you don't care what it is. It doesn't matter. It's just mm -hmm. shape. Does that make sense? Yes. And it, and you really have to train your eyes to do it. And but mm -hmm. once you do, you're golden. You can draw anything. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes. But okay. So does, does the line thing make sense? It does. Yes. Thank you. I like this tree. That's a nice yeah. little silhouette. You know. I, I yesterday in class, I I always tell everybody I go when I start talking about trees. I go, don't make lollipop trees like this. And then I did my demo and I made a lollipop tree. <laughs> it's like, it's weird. It's like, and I started off the silhouette, you know, sort of, you know, not lollipoppy. And I made sure that this kind of curved a little bit, but all of a sudden mm -hmm. when I started painting it, I painted it like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you got to be careful of that. So this one, okay. I think is, this is kind of a nice shape. I think that's a nice shape. Okay. Thank you. You know, mm -hmm. this could probably get a little extra on it. Mm -hmm. Just here and there. Maybe it's got a couple of leaves. Some leaves in front of it. I like to break it up with like leaves in front of things and maybe a little bit of something. Do you group the leaves when you draw it? Do I what? I group them to Absolutely. make it. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that next week. But yeah, so okay. this could come out here and have a mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to mass this together, right? Yes. And then I can have a few leaves here, you know, and then again, if you look at a leaves and you squint down on them, they're basically like a big ink blot. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So then I can mass these together. And you see, I've already done anything, but it pluses it up, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can put a couple of, you know, leaves out here, you know, by themselves. And some in front. That's where a mistake people make is they don't put any in front. You know, maybe it's a couple on the ground because it's losing its leaves, whatever. Okay. Okay. And then, you know, later on, we put value here. Why would I do that? Because it's right against that edge. And sometimes I'll put a mass of leaves or, or a mass of foliage, and I won't even have this line here. Mm -hmm. And it's just what I like about it. Oops. Hang on. Is that I can get rid of this line sometimes and just let the value hold that together the value oh. that's butting up against it right so it, sometimes it'll give me a little relief like i'd have a little and that this mass of foliage will define this edge yeah so it, it's nice it just sometimes you can get rid of the line and just bump a value up next to it right mm -hmm. yeah so it gives you a little like again it's contrast it's like we've got all this line now we got a little relief from the line right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have any other questions? Uh, nope. Thank you. Okay. That's a good job, man. Thank you. And now just go lighter on these lines. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think there was one like here, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go a little lighter back there. It's sort of like we had here. It's the same thing. Look. Oh, I do have a small question. A quick sure. question. Um, will you upload today's video? Yes. Okay. I will every class. Okay. Let me see if I can find this again. It's like this one here is exactly what we just talked about with your Jeep. It's this, and then look at the background. Right? Yeah. This is amazing, this story. Yeah. It's just really simple. You'll know how to do that by the time we're out of here. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, but see how the line back here, he leaned on it way less? Yes. There's your, there's your thing, right? That's it. So when you're sketching, like whatever drawing you're doing, you consider the light all the time? Absolutely. Okay. It's what's going to give my drawing. It's just like what he's doing here. Mm -hmm. it's what's going to give my look at there's the overhang thing right there see that dark yeah one? there's the overhang thing right there see it mm -hmm. then dark shape in front organic shape very mm -hmm. light line back here so it dips back he oh he uh really made this negative space and uh made a big statement with the umbrellas because it's, it's the exact same thing we've just been talking about right yes um <coughs> hang on um here's another guy hang on who who really worked this is great stuff we'll be doing this later oh i forgot to put up the disney um pdf i gotta put that up today i, I like this because this is just everyday stuff right mm -hmm. piece of but it's piece. stylized yeah but it's stylized it's really nice i don't want mm -hmm. stylization yet we'll get to that okay? okay you gotta you gotta learn to run before you can walk or walk before you can run <laughs> yes um, here's some nice, you know, things. And I'll give you a really, I don't know if I showed this. This is a student from this class a few terms ago. And she That's just cute. went off. Like she is so good. I hired her actually to teach. I'm trying to hire her again right now to teach. Um, most of these were done in my class. So this is when we went to San Pedro. Mm -hmm. What I like about her work is it's super designed, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. she she captures interaction, which I think mm -hmm. is one of the really important. So these are all done from life. Look how she put this this curved shape in there, sort of like we talked about with the um, telephone pole, right? Mm -hmm. Really nice stuff, man. Look at this one. The guy was selling booze. Mm -hmm. These two, this is what I like is these interactions. And then look at all the silhouettes behind her of the, um, the harbor. Yeah. Right? Very simple. Mm -hmm. Look at these boats. 
These are all from life. And then when we went, look, here's our tree studies. Super great. Look at these. These are when we went to the Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. and, and but look, really smart choices. How she puts that dark in there to, and lets the negative space carry the rib cage. Right? Yes. Really, really great. This is a cool one. I love sketches, man. <laughs> and you know, it's beyond this, by the way, it's beyond work. Okay. It's beyond mm -hmm. just your work skill set. This is, you know, if you keep a uh, sketchbook, you're keeping a diary. You know what I mean? Yes. You're learning all kinds of stuff in a sketchbook all at once. You're learning mm -hmm. editing, you're learning composition, you're learning design. You're, and then eventually we're learning, we're, uh, flexing our stylization muscles, you're drawing people, you're making notes, you're observing people, you're learning nuance of pose and how people talk and how they react to each other, which you can't do unless you do it that way. Um, you're filling up your data banks with all sorts of shape language. So when somebody goes, you're sitting in a meeting, somebody goes, hey, we're gonna do like an old school dog fight with biplanes, you're like, you go like this, you know what I mean? Yes. You just cut a week off your production time because everybody goes, yeah, I've done this a million times. When I'm sitting in a meeting with a bunch of people, I'm sitting there drawing what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then normally what happens is you go off and do that for a week and you lose a week. And I would just do it in the meeting. And then I go, is this what everybody's talking about? And everybody go, yeah. And I go, good. Everybody's signing this, that they agreed on this. And then this is what I'm going to produce. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yes. then when I come back to the meeting, I go, okay, here we go. Here, my team worked on it. Here it is. And they go, well, that's not it. Uh-uh. Yeah, it is. Here's what you signed. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. Now you can say we want to change it, but you can't tell me that's not what I said I was going to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it locks me in or it locks them in to their, you know, and it's weird because a lot of times when I do that, people be hesitant to sign it. You know what mm. I mean? Because they don't, they want to dick around forever. And I don't, I want stuff off my plate. You know yes. what I mean? And by the way, my team's the one who has to produce the actual product. These people don't. Mm -hmm. right? So it's like, we actually have the burden of all the work yeah which irritates me when they and that saves time otherwise you... oh it saves a ton of time i'll give you another example of it. we were doing product for um the galaxy that uh soccer team and they didn't like the and the sales guy was a great guy but they didn't like him okay there is it's very much a certain culture over there mm -hmm. and so he goes we're running out of time on this thing um and i got there so anyway he goes go to the meeting with me and so i went to the meeting with him totally not cool culture there they didn't like either one of us um and they're being or you know they're just being a pain in the ass and so we were sitting there in the meeting and the sales guy started talking to him and he goes well what's the problem here and they were like figurini kind of thing so they had to be posed and all that and they go um <clears throat> you know they're just him hawing around so while we're sitting there i'm picking up what they're saying because they're just saying stuff to say it and i drew the like they said say the first pose of the soccer guy in action or whatever. And then I go, is this what we're talking about? Immediately those people loved me because that was a magic trick. Do you understand that? Yeah. That's a magic trick to them because they, they never see that. And then they mm -hmm. go, yeah, that's kind of cool. And really what I was doing is trying to pull them into a conversation with me that was friendly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so once I did that, then they would go, yeah, but what if he's holding like a, the ball or whatever? Um, and I go, okay. And I pop that in there. And now they're part of the design process with me. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means they're going to, they're going to take ownership of this thing because they felt like they had a part in it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes. So in that case, I'm using it to, to sort of um, get them to loosen up and be a little friendlier and, and, and approve something and take some ownership of it because what they want to do is when that product comes out, they want to go, I designed that. And I don't care if they go around saying that. Who cares? I just want the account. Does that make uh -huh. sense? Yeah. I just want to get paid uh -huh. at the end of the day. And it worked. Okay. So that it, it's really valuable. It's your language. It's your design language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And if you don't have it, you're kind of screwed. And um, you got a good start. Who's this? Where's Gavin? Hey. I'm here. Where are you at? You're not lighting up. 
Hello. Oh, there you are. Okay. These look great. Where are these at? Because this looks uh, like Frisco. Yeah, that one actually, I'm not proud to say, but I use a photo for that one. No photos. Yeah. Because I was wanting to play with the idea of using one small, tall building to fit the whole photo, but that was the only one I used. The okay, photo. so here's what you do. Um, you go to uh, Google and you go Victorian houses in Orange County and you'll find them. All righty. Actually, the one I put up, the Founders uh, Park has a Victorian building. All right. right? Or you yep. go to downtown Riverside and downtown Riverside is full of um, Victorian buildings right yep but they're out there it's a very common design style right yep the, and that's the second page to this one <coughs> so these are from life yes <coughs> those are nice uh same thing now uh, the next thing because i think your proportions are really nice what's your major i'm kind of just generally an art major i'm still trying to figure things out well let's get them figured out what do you like i'm into illustration Oh, me likey. You know what I like? This probably has something around it. And if it doesn't, I just put it a frame or something around it. Um, what I like is I'm starting to hear a lot of uh, students say they like illustration. I'm taking is... your illustration course too. Oh, good. Because that's much more thinky conceptually, right? Mm-hmm. So I just reinforce those a little. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the tops a little. Why? Because they're coming out of sort of a shadow. Yeah? Yep. And then I do the same thing here, maybe a little out of the bottom. I'd probably give this a little bit of an irregular texture, unless it's a driveway or something, which it probably is. Uh, you know, and then I'm just kind of hitting these overhangs. I'd put a little bit of the texture of the roof on there right? Yeah. Break that edge a little. You did a little bit. Break this up up here. I'd probably make this a little more prominent. Get that thickness to the overhang. Get a little bit of thickness to this railing. Make it a little darker so it pulls forward put something over here i don't know what you could put a plant maybe it's another house back there same thing here maybe you know and then i probably come in here between these things here maybe hit these spots between and start to pop these forward a little bit maybe make this pot a little more interesting knock this, you know, pull this tree forward a little bit, give, give it a and same thing here, here, a little bit of thickness there. Maybe there's a frame around that. I don't know. I like this little, um, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, the little vent that they put in the attic. But basically it's just like, let's just start popping our line based on our, uh, um, cause you got a great setup here. Now you just got to come in here and start popping this like, see how that just pulled it forward, doing nothing on the on the arches? Yeah. That's what I want you guys to understand. It's how simple this stuff is. It's just knowing when to do what. That's about it. Because you got your proportions are really good. Thank you. I had fun doing these. Good. That helps. You know, some people, it's weird. Look how much these pop, these ones on the left now. Yeah? Yeah. And I really didn't do hardly anything. Really didn't do hardly anything. And a little bit of this texture. Make that a little more prominent. Edge. Blah, blah, blah. But proportion wise, all that stuff. You have any questions? Um, no, not really. I, I kind of wish I did. All of the ones I did are straight on, like the demo you did, but I kind of wish I messed around with doing some. Um, We're going to do that this week. 
What was yeah. that? We're going to do that this week. Oh, all right, cool. You know, we'll start turning them now. I'm going to take the guardrails off of that front view thing and we'll start turning them a little bit. Okay. All right. Because I don't really see anybody in here who can't go for it, at least so far. Okay, but no photographs. Yeah, I understand. It's a whole different thing. I'm sure you've noticed. Yeah. Right? Like drawing with, um, from photographs is a whole different thing. Where's Haley? Hi. How come I only have one page? So sad story. So I was supposed to go out with my dad this week, but um, he got really busy with work and taking care of my grandma. So I, I, I barely got to go out yesterday and it got dark and like less. Why than do you got to wait for your dad to go out? Huh? Why do you got to wait for I, I, I can't drive. Well, and I mean, my sister's busy with school. You can just walk around the neighborhood. That is true. I, I did not think that through very well. Yeah. It's like I finally realizing this, all the stuff I could have done. You got to have the same enthusiasm just for straight drawing that you do for like fan art or whatever. Yeah? Yeah. Because I'm seeing a lot of people do that. And I, I really think it's a dead end, man. Um, you got to get this down. And then just make up your own crap, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's the same thing. You've sort of got some of these thrown down. But this one, it would be a little more about me sort of clarifying the shapes here. Mm -hmm. So this might, I just saw something. I'm just making this up. But a lot of times these have some sort of little filigree kind of thing here. So I'm just going to put it in. I'm also going to put a, a uh, little banister base thing here because I just because I'm not seeing what you were looking at so I have to make it up right yeah you there yeah and then here and then here again I want to emphasize that little divot I want to emphasize this little um, railing I'm going to extend it over here and then I'm going to put that. I don't know. It feels like it should be like that, actually. You know, and just start sort of clarifying these shapes a little bit. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. you should be whipping through these. You have drawing ability, yeah? Yeah. And then is this a railing here? Uh, that's a, like a fence in front of the house. Oh, it's like a fence. Okay. You know, and again, maybe I put something over here, back there. I don't know what was there. Maybe there's a fence back here. Maybe some grass. Lawn. Maybe the driveway's over there. Maybe there's a fence here. A gate or something. Maybe they got a workroom back here. It's facing a little differently. By the way, a lot of times I'll just start making shapes and then I'll figure out, I was just talking about this, <clears throat> making random shapes and then I'll plug things into the random shapes. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I don't know, you know, if I don't have something there, I and mean, I don't worry about that yet, but we will later. You know, and I can put that so at least it's got some <clears throat> some depth. And then maybe here. Door. And then this is cool. You got these kind of little things in this Victorian -y kind of I don't know what kind of house this is, but, you know, they have cool little things like sometimes they have the gingerbread house um whatever you call it shingles right uh -huh. so whatever it is get a little texture on there again i might break this up just with something on the roof like a sewer stack or something okay does everybody know what a sewer stack is i'm always saying that no it's that little pipe that sticks out of roofs it comes out of your um like your sink like your sink actually runs up to the top so it it 
I, I'm assuming emits odors and things like that. So your kitchen is high hell, right? But what I do is I, I take advantage of them and I go, well, maybe there's one right there, right? Haley, does this make sense? Like sort of clarifying the drawing a little bit? Yeah. So when you're putting these down, again, get all your shapes sort of balanced and then build into them, yeah? Okay. And like here, let's not do any random mark making. I'm going to be all over you guys about that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If we're putting a shape down, we want it to be, and then I could put a little grass here yeah. on this path here yeah. where it breaks up, you know, because that's where I'm going to see it a little bit. And then if I really wanted to go further, maybe I put a little gate here. And maybe you know maybe the gate kind of comes up like that you know that makes sense yeah so then i'd have a nice foreground element now something like this is no big deal because it's just a straight when we're in this perspective it's pretty simple but again you don't have to worry about drawing things out of your head yet. We'll get into that later. Put a couple of birds up here. I want to put a tree over here. So you've got the bones of it there. Now I just want to start making sure, make sure everything's balanced before you start working into it. Like I just did make sure everything's balanced and then work into it right right okay and by the way you can draw the hell out of buildings you did it in 107 yeah okay you did that um that neighborhood remember yeah which was a really good one okay where are we at oh we're past 12 let's take a half hour you guys yeah okay well i i kind of want to go into storyboarding Oh, that's interesting. Was it always storyboarding? Huh? Was it always storyboarding that you wanted to do? No, I just kind of started looking at all the different things. And there's multiple parts of storyboarding. Sure. And I'm just starting to learn about which one I'd kind of want to get into because <clears throat> I like creating scenes and I, I want to incorporate buildings and areas, environments along with the characters. And storyboarding just seems like, you know, the way to go with that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's good. Cause this class is a fundamental building block for that type of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause you got to have this like fast sketch uh, skill set to be able to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we can like crank them out, you know? Um, so you want to be more involved in the story part of storyboarding, right? Contributing mm -hmm. ideas, right? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. That's good. And it'll get good when we start getting rolling here a little more, where we can start to loosen up a little bit and stylize a little bit. Um, uh, you can start flexing that muscle a little more. Does that make sense? Yeah. The good thing is every time you get into a sketchbook, all of you, you're you're flexing that muscle, really. You know, um, one of the things, have you had Brian's class? Who? Brian Murray? No. Well, you, well, you got to take that class. You know who Brian is, right? I think so. Yeah, he, he that's all he does is storyboards. You know, yeah. he's worked with Spielberg and a bunch of giant people and worked on a bunch of giant stuff. He's still in his career. Um, and I'm really happy to have him there because he's he's really specifically into just that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, like I've done some storyboards here and there years ago. It was never my thing. And it was also a little different thing. You're talking about contributing to the story and all that. Um, but it's changed so much. You don't, there's so much more to it now. It used to be, you know, you drew panels. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's way more than that. Okay. Let me see what my, yeah, I'll just keep going. Who did I leave off with? Haley, was your last one I did? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got somebody here that they didn't claim these earlier. Who is this? Okay. 
Okay, I'm moving on. Where's Jennifer? I'm here. Okay, so what do you think? Um, so first of all, the first time I went out, I didn't realize I didn't have my pencils with me until yeah, I was already driving pencil. around. So I was using a ballpoint pen. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I, I felt like strangely, I felt more like loose with the ballpoint pen, just in terms of being able to look at like the bigger scale of things, but because I knew I couldn't erase it probably, but, um, I think in general, I want to <laughs> definitely, uh, focus more on, I wasn't drawing, focusing on the shapes enough. So I would get into the details before I should have. Maybe I shouldn't have done the details at all or focused on the smaller bits or. Yeah, okay, so what you just said, and you probably had this experience, I'm, I'm assuming, how the drawing gets very disconnected when you do that. Yeah. Where it starts to be, and I remember this in my drawing too, where I was like, I, and it really irritated me because I was like, why is my drawing look so jacked? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And it wasn't structured or whatever. And it was really frustrating until I figured it out, you know, and then I figured out like, oh, you're not putting in the big shapes. You're just jumping all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And again, um, this is a methodology we're trying to put around this, which is, you know, it's not that like I invented it, but, um, and again, it will morph and change. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, you know, you'll put your own little spin on it. I like, again, I think I said this, sometimes I like to work big shape to shape or drop a head in and drop a hand in and then drop the back in and then, you know, and it's a weird way to work kind of, but it's just cause, um, or if I'm drawing a face, especially if I'm stylizing it, I might start with an eye and start working out across the face. That's a real fast way to disconnect everything. It's just that I've been doing it for a long time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I'm fine with it. It's just sometimes it's the way I draw, not always. Um, so I'm okay with it. But um, and, and once you get that experience and everything, then you'll start refining the, um, the methodology to however you like it or whatever, okay? But the main thing is, um, there, and there's a reason why you see this type of methodology with painting, with drawing, with all sorts of things is because <clears throat> you're locking everything together as you're moving along. You have that big shape that locks everything together, right? Right. Okay. Where's this at? Um, that was a shopping center on, uh, is it beach or not? No, I think it's not beach. It was over by, there's like a farmer. One of those is like, there's a farm boys and like a, uh, and that's over at the apartments I live in. He liked um, the farmer boys, by the way. Yeah, huh? I like farmer boys. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was at night too, so. Yeah, um, tr as much as possible, try and avoid that because the lighting is going to be completely weird when you're first learning this because it's all um, artificial lighting, right? Yeah. So it gets a little tricky <clears throat> when you're first learning this. I don't think proportionally they're too bad. I think what's happening though is we're getting a lot of this random mark making. Yeah. Okay. And, and by the way, that's totally common. Everybody does it. Um, like this on the roof, right? Yeah. As I saw you like fixing other people's and doing the shingles, I was like, oh, yes, that is exactly what would have worked there. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to go over that, right? No, I, I got it. But, you know, if you look at these, I mean, Here's the thing with these, a lot of these things is you go, eh, it's not this or that, but it's like, I could go in here pretty quickly. I'm going to thicken this up. That's too thick, but I'm just going to do it anyway, you know, and start going over these a little bit and cleaning things up a little and adding a few little like this. I'll add a little, I always call it a facial board. I'm not even sure if that's what it's called. Maybe something in here. Is this a window here? Yeah, at the top. So I might. Or that was like actually something that's attached to the building. It's like. Um, oh, like in a, front of the windows. Like cross pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd give those a little bit of. Uh, I'm going a little fatter just because it's a low res image. <clears throat> and then if this is overhanging, you know, maybe I give that a little bit of trim. Yeah, my brush is so thick. Hang on. You know, again, I'd probably put the. Now it's too thin. I'd probably put the um, cracks in the sidewalk here. Yeah. 
Yeah. You've got, looks like a trash can here. That's good. Probably this is an overhang, get a little darker. Maybe I put the parking spot things in there. You know, add in a little bit of this stuff, break up this shape, maybe put a, again, an organic in here. Look how putting the organic in, it made a huge difference, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, and again, <clears throat> the reason I keep pointing that out is that you're going to find out once you get sort of experience a little bit with this, a lot of this stuff is fairly simple. It's just knowing when to do it. Right. Right. And again, I'm not saying, oh, it's too simple. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, <clears throat> again, the underlying logic underneath it, the, the theory behind it is pretty simple. And the reason I say that, too, is that when I was in school, one of the things I had to do, and, it, and maybe it was just me, I had to um, <clears throat> simplify this stuff in my brain so it wasn't overwhelming. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one of the things I'd always do is I go with drawing, I go, all I got to do is put the right mark in the right place. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. But if I broke it down that way in my head, it helped me where I just go, all I'm doing is putting the marks down in the right place and I'll have a bitch in drawing. That's all I got to do. That that line just has to be in the right place, you know, or whatever. Um, and it just helped me. Uh, maybe that's just me, but it helped me psychologically somehow. Okay. Which is why I always say, hey, this is simple. I just mean the underlying theory is simple. Again, maybe I've got something up here, maybe over here. And again, maybe I'll put a vent kind of thing in there. I'm going to darken that up quite a bit. Maybe there's a few things back here. Again, maybe we can do maybe a couple of palm tree uh, silhouettes back here. Maybe another telephone pole back here. And I didn't do hardly anything to it. And it feels like a little more finished drawing, correct? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Right? But simple, right? So what are we doing? The same thing I've been going over and over and over, which is the line. And you're understanding like why I'm punching the line and where I'm punching it, right? Yeah. That's really important. And somebody asked that earlier. I can't remember who it was. Um about how do I know where to punch the line? <clears throat> that was really important. Um, and <clears throat> um, when I was in, at Art Center or whatever, somebody said, you, you know, you need to push your thin, thick line, but they didn't tell me where, you know what I mean? So yeah. then I went down this rabbit hole of just doing thin, thick line that didn't have any relation to light or any of that kind of stuff. Cause they didn't just tell me that, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I'm supposed to do thin, thick line. And I thought, okay, well, that's the answer. You just do thin, thick line. Well, no, you do. It's show it's descriptive thin, thick lines. Does that make sense? Yeah. And remember, we probably talked about this, but let's see where my, again, the, you know, if you want to put a car in there or whatever, Even now that they're much more modern, they're still basically, at the end of the day, two cubes on top of each other, right? Yeah. A couple of ellipses. You know, and like my car, Prius, it's almost like more like this. But still, the underlying concept is still there. You know, the window's one unit like that. This is much lower. So this stuff with the buildings, and then this goes straight back like that. Right. So it's the same sort of shape breakdown as what we're talking about with buildings. Right. Right. And the reason I'm saying that is that, <clears throat> hang on here. Now it's going to go way too big here. You know, what would be nice to have as an overlap is maybe a car here or here. Right. Yeah. 
I was nervous about adding any of the cars that were Yeah, the don't worry about that right now. Um, I'm, I'm concentrating on business, uh, business uh, buildings for a reason because we're just starting to understand, hopefully understand this basic shape idea, right? Right. But again, it's going to apply to everything we ever draw. That makes sense. Okay, any other questions? Um, no, I just no. I, I'm going to practice a lot more. Yeah. And by the way, I'll say, you know, do two pages, you know, do 20 pages. Right. There's no limit to it, right? And then we're going to, and by the way, at some point this will break open and everything's fair game, okay? People, buildings, cars, trees, I don't care. At some point I'm, it's, you know, it's going to crack open and we'll be able to um, broaden our subject matter. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then we'll also, you know, get a little more free reign to stylize a little bit if we want to. The thing I have to be careful in here is that there's sort of this thing. And again, it kind of, it's kind of come out of a lot of it's come out of entertainment art where I get worried about that. People are, are sort of jumping over to these tricks that they see and they're not tricks or techniques, but they're kind of tricks when you don't know what's going on. We're using all these sort of <clears throat> entertainment design things. A lot of things that come out of art center and Viscom and all that you know, big, heavy out white outline containment lines, um, like that kind of stuff. But you're looking at going, wow, you don't really know when to use that or why. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I also go, okay, now you're putting lipstick on a pig because that drawing's not very good. <clears throat> and you're putting all this stuff all over it that's supposed to make it look all cool. And what it's really doing, I see this a lot. Um, like let's say the white outline thing on tone paper or whatever, they'll do that. And then they put that white containment line about it. And then the, what it actually does is flatten the whole drawing. Okay. Because the drawing right. itself is not strong. And all of a sudden all the interior parts just flatten. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you sort of defeated the purpose because the purpose of that is usually to make that pop off the wall on a presentation or something like that. But it sort of puts a containment line around sort of a, a blob that you can't really read and it made it less readable okay so underlying all this stuff that we're talking about really at the end of the day what we're talking about is good drawing skills and draftsmanship right yeah that's really what we're doing and we'll learn all those cool techniques in here but and but i'm hoping we'll learn when to use them and all that kind of stuff right yeah because they're great i mean they are great to really pop your work and all that by the way, on simplicity, I was going to show you guys this guy earlier. And this is very much design drawing, this kind of stuff, but I still love um, uh, the simplicity of these. And I think it's relevant to this class. Oh, wow, he finally changed his website. That's weird. Oh, cool. He, he uh, updated all this. So let's look at this one. Now he won't let you. So look at the simplicity of these. Now, we don't want to quite go this far, and sometimes we will, but do you see the simplicity of that and how clear they read? Yeah, yes. this is so cool. Yeah, right? And he's expanded this a little bit. So this is a sketchbook, very much using, look what he's using here. It's all line, correct? Yeah. Just nice fat line, um, very controlled, very readable. He's expanded this. He hasn't expanded his website in forever. Um, so here's a little bit of a close-up of this kind. This kind of stuff is great. Um, and then the, the reason this guy, look, these are fun. Much more of a Viscom language, but it's still cool. I can I ask a question about those? Sure. Um, do those start off as like rough pencil-y sketches and then he goes over them? Or is that just like boom, boom, boom? He's just so strong at it that he can go in with that like defined line. He's, he's more than likely just going straight in with ink. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Cause I was just like, it looks so distinct and like nicely placed and stuff that I was just like, not sure if like, oh, was that like 
going in first as like a sketch and then coming back later. No, he went in and just threw it down. Is my guess, right? <clears throat> um, I get that a lot because I used to draw nothing but pen for like 15 years. Um, and I get that a lot when people are always asked that. They go, oh, you ghost in a pencil thing. And I go, I don't ghost in a pencil thing. You know what I mean? I don't want to, I don't want to have to carry a pencil. The thing I loved about pen was I go, I got a sketchbook and a pen. That's all I need all day. Right. Right. Once I add a pencil into that, then I got to have an eraser, a pencil, a sharpener. And, and I don't want all that. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do that later where you can go in very confidently with your, um, um, and do this kind of thing. Um, and I like a really inky pen usually, uh, like a, like a rollerball or something, uh, or a fountain pen. Um, but if you look at, okay, so like, look at these right here. Okay. If you look at them, they're all built out of very simple geometry. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so that's sort of how he's doing that. And then he takes it into, um, this kind of thing, very descriptive, you know, using the same technique, only adding color to it. Let's see who's gotten retail. Like some of these like this, he might've done that. It's hard to tell here. He might've built like a really simple SketchUp model in there and worked over it. Right. Not this kind of stuff, but look at this is this kind of, you know, this is very entertaining. -y, I get it. But it's like what I'm trying to get to is like the simplicity and the readability of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And here's the other thing. The reason I know about this guy, when I was at Imagineer and he was there, I never met him. But I remember we'd have these big boards that would, that would be for presentations, right, with all the work on it and all that stuff. And it'd be about, I don't know, eight foot by four foot sheet of um, foam core with all the, you know, the presentation on it. <laughs> and there'd be multiple ones up for the presentation, all that stuff. And I remember his stuff. Every time he had work on those boards, you could have 40 pieces of art on that board and your eye would go bang right to his stuff. It was, fr it was irritating. You know what I mean? because it was so punchy and readable that he just dominated everything he put his work on. It was awesome. You know what I mean? Um, it was a good lesson to learn, you know, and I was looking at it because I knew all the techniques he was doing, but he was really pushing them down to their simplicity and really pushing the fat line work and all that kind of stuff. And the stuff would just read like crazy. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's something we can take away from this, which is just clarity. Or like uh, Haley talking about doing storyboards and things, this kind of stylistic thing works really well, okay? And then if you look at people, you probably guys already probably know this person. Oh, yeah, I want to show you guys this for a second. Where is she? There she is. So this girl is a story artist at Disney, I think. Where'd she go? There she is. And if you look at her drawing style, it's really simplistic. You know what I mean? Like here. And that's kind of how you draw in that world, right? Because you, you got to get the idea across fast, the staging, the emotion, all that stuff, but, but quickly. Does that make sense? Yeah. And another guy who I really love for this class is this guy. really simple i think he's another story guy and but what i love about these is he captures really interesting things in these very simple sketches i like his sketchbook stuff hang on maybe he's got a section here does he oh he does but it doesn't have a sketchbook hang on These are fun.
Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm trying to find, he's got some old ones in here that are really cool. You know, talking to storyboarding, look at the simplicity, but boy, do those read, boy, do I know what's going on. These are great. You know, look at things like he doesn't overwork the hands or anything, but they're, they're all there. Everything's there. These are great. See, this is this kind of thing I love, this kind of pushing that pose, right? Yeah. Like finding really cool things to push and all this sort of mundane stuff. <clears throat> this is great. He probably did this on TV or something. Here's this one. Here's a couple in here from, this is cool. Look at that little stylistic thing he did with the finger and the pinky. See that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everything is sort of pushed. Interesting. Look at that. That's a great drawing. Mid-conversational. And what this is doing is it fills up his data banks with things like nuance and things like that from when he's working on these things he's working on. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's almost like, don't think too much. Just do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, no, look, we, we want to get to a place where we're not thinking too much. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We want to get this fundamental skill set under our hands so we cannot think too much. So right. it becomes second nature. It becomes a language. Okay. What I always say is what we're trying to do in here is get fluency in our language. You know what I mean? Like at one time you didn't know how to read obviously. Right. And you had to struggle through it. Now you, you can't look at something without reading it. It's not, it's an, it's an impulse. It's a automatic reflex. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's where we want to get to with our drawing as close as we can get. Look at these. Cause these are going to be important later on when we start getting into people. And this is normally, by the way, this is what I do every day. Every day I'm out sketching people in the sketchbook every day, pushing them, drawing them straight, pushing the poses, just whatever I'm in the mood to do, okay? I'm trying to find his older ones. Look at this one. I mean, he's just capturing these little moments, you know what I mean? Which is the most fascinating part to me. Look at this. I mean, these things are great, man. Look at this. I love drawing people in line for some reason. I like drawing piles of things and people in line. Look at this design idea here. This big square with just the hand here. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is that doing? It's really flexing his design muscles, right? I'd argue all of these are doing that. <clears throat> it's his design muscle. Look at this. You know, this cross pattern he put on here. No detail in these. You guys are seeing that, correct? Yeah. For some reason, some picture of him naked, which I have no idea what that's about. Look at this one. Look at, this is using that foreground element like we talked about today. Big, dark foreground element overlapping the barista, right? Yeah. So what the reason I'm putting all that out is because those ideas aren't unique to those things. Those are just design ideas that work across... Same thing here. They work across different um, uh, media or whatever. <clears throat> this is great. So on and so forth. I'll link these people. But it's so much, man, when you start doing this kind of thing, <clears throat> going out in the world with a sketchbook, <clears throat> especially when you start feeling a little bit more proficient at it, <clears throat> it really makes the whole world a sandbox. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
like I can, I get excited in the morning and I'll go, cause I found out over uh, at Citrus Plaza, which is down the hill here in Redlands, they, the farmer boys there is open. It has an outdoor area. There's a couple of places there you can eat sort of like a food court, but it's outside and they're just serving food. Right. So I was like, people, I can go draw people. And I get up in the morning. I'm totally excited about it to go to farmer boys. Cause I can draw people. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And it's like everything becomes exciting to me because I go take a sketchbook anywhere I go or a paint box or whatever, and everything is interesting. But anyway, these are really great. And there's some attitudinal, attitudinal stuff he does in here that I think is, I mean, I already showed like this, that expression, huh. posture, all those, but look at you guys. Can you see that this right here is just a big square? Yes? Yeah. And this right here, in a certain way, you know, he's got this, look, he's playing with that curve against a straight. You see that? Mm -hmm. But all the, and look at this one. It's just an inverted, this is an hourglass. Bink, 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 bink. It's a geometric shape. And then that little round element, it's all built from really simple geometric shapes. And I'm hoping you guys can see this isn't a big jump from buildings. Does that make sense? Yeah. When you break them down like this, and then you can take these as far as you want. You can plus them up. You can add, I love the way, like pushing those hips forward. That lazy um, doesn't, you know, feels weighted, feels lazy. Fun shapes. Ah, makes me want to go out and draw right now. Look at this one, really pushing the. This is something we talk about. I talk about all the time how guys will do this. They sort of kick their hips out. And it's one of those poses that you can push that idea. Okay. Because when we get to this stuff, we'll want to push those. He's pushing everything if you look. Okay. So you guys, I hope, can see that those are all constructed out of very simple shapes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Who did I leave off with? Jennifer? So Joyce, didn't you email me or text me or something? Where's Joyce? Uh, yeah, I texted you because I didn't like my buildings and I wanted to ask you like what would make them better. Are these, this is a different, which one did you send me? Was it this one? Yeah, those are, oh, the, the I sent you that one, that picture. This one? No, the that one, yeah. I like these. Oh, thank you. Where's this at, this thing? Because that looks like the same thing Daniel had. Yeah, we went together. Oh, and that was at Riley Farms? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what don't you like about these? I like these. Well, I felt like I was too focused on making it accurate that I didn't, oh, okay. yeah, I didn't like so, think about okay, the design. So, okay, but you've got the, you again, you've got the bones here. Does that make sense? Mm hmm You've got the bones of it going here. Your, you know, your proportion's pretty good. Here it's a little little off, but that's okay for now. Um, this I think is pretty nice, and I think this actually. What kind of roof was this? Was it just planks? Yeah, it was weird. It was just like planks nailed and it to just that. Just like, sort of broke off. Did it break over? No, it was like literally like flat on the wall. Oh, weird. so they did that on purpose? I don't really know like how they made these things it just looked interesting <laughs> and was yeah. this okay these were was this planks or was this core or uh like corrugated tin oh no it was it's planks that's why i tried to indicate it with like the nails but didn't do a good job no i think it's fine okay this is the same thing where we can kind of maybe make a little more here and there like start to punch a few of these mm -hmm. So they're making a little more of a statement. So I'd say the main thing here is you just want to start um, working, you know, you're placing your shapes and then let's get a little darker here, you know, getting your shapes in there. And a lot of times, again, you might want to try this. Hang on. Let me find a pencil. I, I use pencils constantly and I can never find one when I'm looking for one. <laughs> Hang on. Um, 
you might want to try this just as an exercise. You might like it. I'd like to draw this way anyway, but, mm -hmm. but you know, you might not. And that's fine. But as an exercise, I think it could help you. Cause I think you have, it looks to me like you see, and these are all from life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it looks to me like you see shapes pretty well. Mm -hmm. Right. How long have you been at Fullerton? Um, this is like my third year. Yeah. Third and what, year. what's your major? Uh, I want to do children's books and illustration. Now you're right up my alley. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, okay. okay. So when you're doing something like one of these, whatever it is, and I think this one actually is pretty nice. Mm. I don't think that's overly stiff. I think this one's got the, like, okay. So like this one, mm -hmm. I think that this is working pretty good. But again, I think what would make it, sing a little bit is this daniel's house <laughs> yeah it looks like a cool house is it a cool house are you guys just making yeah it no it's cool i only drew like a part of it so there's like more to it, this house it, it, it what this one and the one that daniel drew both mm -hmm. kind of feel like one of those cool old um you guys probably don't, you guys won't remember this but like in the 70s my dad would get these books from sunset from sunset magazine but there were books they were kind mm -hmm. of or they were like big magazines or whatever they were. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and they would have, I was totally fascinated with them. And they would have these houses. Some of them were kind of like this. And some of them were sort of like my house that I live in now where they'd be like, um, or actually I live here now, but my house um, would be sort of these like mid-century modern, but a little, like they look like they were in like rural areas or something. Mm -hmm. And they would have pictures kind of like this. And you'd be like, man, that looks cool. Or sometimes it'd be a rendering or a, or a drawing or something of them and you know what mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. and this one I, has that yeah. vibe mm -hmm. yeah. okay so like this go ahead oh no this one i think again i'd probably make that tree a little more prominent mm -hmm. you know and then maybe this comes down here and again we'll start talking about trees and stuff next week so don't worry too much about that but I, it kind of feels like the, <clears throat> all this one needs is just some sort of organics or something around it mm -hmm. to sort of help it out. And then like here, there's got to be some dimension there and some dimension there. Mm -hmm. And then there's got to be dimension here. See, when you're doing this line thing, you're telling me that everything's like a string. Does that make sense? Wait, what? You're telling me everything's like a string. If I have a, a, a sliding door, which I'm assuming that is, and you just do that. Well, that's not really, that's a string. Oh, uh, I see. What mm -hmm. it probably is more like something like that or whatever. And then right. this has probably got some sort of framework around it. Mm -hmm. You know, and those things, you know, they're small little things, but they matter. Right. Yeah. So like what's here? Is there anything on this wall? No, it's just a flat wall. Okay. Well, you put the number on it. I always love it when people put like uh, rain gutter pipes or whatever these are called. <laughs> Because they just crawl across a building, they give it some kind of surface detail. Yeah. Um, be careful up under here that these stay consistent. Is mm -hmm. this what is this down here? So we were like sitting on a hill because his house is on a hill, and then we we're sitting on the like so we we're like sitting underneath it. So I, I had um a hard time trying to draw that like, perspective, but that balcony it's supposed to be like underneath it, and then that two two zero zero two zero wall like that sticks out and then you see that like block that's supposed to be underneath that part. what is this what do these lines right here represent oh uh i didn't do the details but i think it's like brick but like oh. a white brick wall okay well you need that in there because that would really that's going to make a huge difference mm -hmm. just putting some of these in here at this distance i'm not going to put too much uh information in there just enough to tell you it's brick, right? Right, yeah. <clears throat> Make sure these are kind of laid out nicely. I might, even if they're all the same size, I might tweak them a little bit, mm. put a little more, that, like this rock, <clears throat> it's not gonna end like that. This is gonna be an irregular edge here because that's mm. going into dirt or grass or whatever. Oh, I see. Right, okay. so they're never, this is something everybody's gotta be aware of <clears throat> when you're doing something like a rock, okay? And you do that. That's not how it's going to be. It's going to be either sitting probably in dirt or mm -hmm. maybe some grassy edge. And then maybe this side. 
and a little bit of texture on it and you're out right yeah <clears throat> this <laughs> yeah well they're again they're just they're you got to look for the uh the facets of it mm. you know that they'll kind of come down and then this one will kind of go over here maybe there's a down facing plane there and i just i'm looking for the facets of it and then i'll soften it up you know mm. i mean i usually I, again i don't draw all these things all the time but that's just how i'm thinking of it okay yeah yeah <clears throat> even as round rock will have sort of you know flattened off areas you know they're not totally round mm, yeah you know, i'm gonna give them a little bit of texture and you know break them up a little bit and some grass down here or whatever and blah 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 right yeah like <clears throat> this another one you kind of already doing it but like this is kind of nice the way you're pulling that dark down into there i'd probably hit it here and there yeah a little little here oh, so you know you want to build these things up oh what i was going to say so we're just doing little things that are starting to punch things, right? And yeah. this is another example where I go, okay, I've got a lot of hard geometry. So maybe there's something organic over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe there's something, maybe it's a. Maybe there's some barrels over here. Mm -hmm. In an old box. Maybe it's a milk crate. And then maybe there's something here. And some leaves back here. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So once we build a little bit of uh, asymmetricality in there, see how much mm -hmm. better it gets? Yeah, definitely. And like here, adding this tree, look how much that added to just that tree. Mm -hmm. And the tree to me, it's, it, this whole house just has this kind of cool vibe about it, at least in this drawing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who knows what Daniel actually lives like. I mean, we. <laughs> That's really know, nice. I don't know if I really want to know that. Okay, so back to <laughs> part of the hill again. Yeah. Maybe a little of that. Um, maybe I'll just put a little, I don't know, a little bit of texture on the wall or something. Yeah, Where's the wall was it? textured. It was it, it was like your typical um the like the speckled wall. I don't know how to describe it. Like the bumpy. Yeah, it's like a stucco wall, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel I was built having... this house himself. <laughs> scratch. Okay, I'm just cleaning up these lines on here. What were you gonna say? Uh, yeah, I had a question about that. Um, I was so focused on making my lines straight that I would overwork them and then it become kind of stiff. So I just I didn't. How do you like? OK, what I was going to say was here. Let's see if we can see this. Is that OK? Yeah. <clears throat> When I'm drawing something like, and this is the way I draw, but it might be helpful as a, as sort of a, to loosen you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I tend to start here. Right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Right. So I might come in here. Okay. It does a couple of things. It, it, I can't get fussy because mm -hmm. I don't have the control. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I also am not going to I'm not going to bear down real hard on the uh, lines yet because it's just awkward to do that with in this position. Does that make right, sense? Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to come in here really lightly. You can see that all right, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to come in here and really lightly start popping things in. Being very loose, I'm not even worried about it. Yours actually comes out here. So 
So what am I doing here? I'm just placing things like that line needs to go out here. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it's that dark, I might just kind of knock it back, but usually I don't. Mm -hmm. And I, if at this point, I, if I were you guys, I wouldn't. And then, you know, I'm going to put some of these in there and start getting all this stuff going. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, this. Like, when do you start? Because I remember you saying in the last lecture that you started from like the end of the pencil and then you'd go to the middle part and then. Yeah, I'll go to here to... and I'll start to go. Like, I might go, I'm going to darken that and I'll get a little closer so I can get a little bit of control. Mm -hmm. What like I'm doing now is uh -huh. just the side of the pencil is a is just a big dark line. Oh, I see. Okay, so I'll start doing this and then maybe here. Put in that dark one. See, that's already starting to punch forward. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, and then you know, let's. I'm just gonna make some of this up. Mm. I found myself like jumping to the tip of the pencil too, way too fast because like I wanted to control it better, but I well, didn't know like how to use the middle part. Understanding is that I'm not going. Here's the way that you do it. I, it's a way. Yeah. And what I'm asking you to do is just give it a shot. Mm, yeah. Okay. Then I go to here, and here's what I always say, and I might have already said this. Mm -hmm. If you're a kid in Little League and you go and you're pitching, and I don't know anything about baseball, okay, so I'm sure my terminology is completely wrong. <laughs> um, they'll go, hey, man, you hold the ball like this with three fingers here and your thumb over here, and you when you throw it, you throw it out to here and you spin it. And they're teaching all this technique about handling the ball to get it to do something, right? Yeah? Yeah. But then you go to art school, and nobody talks about handling your materials at all. Mm. And, and this is important this is a really versatile tool but if i'm always here yeah yeah i'm sort of limiting my options okay and then also like if i go i'm going to put this big tree over here and we'll get back to this again on next week and i'm putting all this in here you know i might just come in here with the side of my pencil and just get a nice big velvety shape going there and i could even use that stylistically but what i'm probably going to do is come in here and start putting some leaf edgy shapes in here right yeah but then you know where it turns into a mass i'll go a little darker here mm. and i'll start building all these forms out of this sort of thing and i'm keeping it all you know maybe this and I know we're not using value yet, but I'm just talking about the versatility of a pencil. Right. Right. Maybe right. do that. And then I'm going to go, okay, there's a door here. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, maybe it's one of those 70s houses. So they got one of those round windows in it. <laughs> you know. I want to put a piece of trim there and there. Okay, then here it's getting a little little trickier now. I want to punch this. So now I'm going to go here. Mm. And maybe I'll go. See how mm. straight that line is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. My light's up here, let's say. So I'm going to start hitting these. Just pulling them straight down. Then I go, okay, I've got this. Um, sort of geometric thing here. Mm -hmm. So I just straighten that all out. And then I'm going to make it where I have a little support there. And then I'm going to give it, yeah, you do have that. I'm going to give it a couple of supports here. And in my house, it has these round things that go into the ground. Mm, yeah. And then, of course, that's going to hit organic uh, edges and things. This can go into value. This can get a little bit of value. You know, and then this is also really good when I go, well, I just want to kind of indicate another shrub or something over here. Mm. And I just need that silhouette, let's say. And then I'm going, okay, I'm going to put this here. And then I'm going to put a stair while it maybe goes... Or maybe here. I 
And then, you know, because I want to put in a railing because it just is interesting to me because it'll, and I go straight over, I pull a line straight over, pull a line straight over, pull a line straight over so they line up. Mm. And then I go, I'm just going to make up this. Maybe they've got a little thing and then and then this is all natural elements. It goes right to here. Maybe I'll put the front door here. And it's a double door with those things on it. And you notice I'm adding these things in and until I kind of add them in, and then this is gonna come down. So I need a little bit of indication this is coming down. So mm -hmm. now I've got, and then I wanna put a little thing here. So maybe there's a little stream that comes through here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm going to go have all the light reflecting into it. You know how you're talking about like um, for things that are kind of in the distance or like you kind of um, don't give it as much like Wait. texture or like detail. Yeah. yeah. Like how do you decide that? Like, is it just like distance or sometimes it's like, it's the same plane, but where do you put? Uh, then it becomes what's important to me in the visual picture. Mm, okay. So let's say that we got. Let's say Daniel's got some secret lab back here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Which he does. Yeah, he does. And he's time. He's trying to make a time traveling machine. <laughs> Something like that. But it's just, he's really inept at it. So that's why it has to be. <laughs> so I got another building back here. Okay. Maybe it used to be a barn. So this to me, is less important, right? Right. So I'll show a little bit of this. Maybe there's some more foliage here, so I don't have to, you know, to break it all up, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it has the barn doors that do that. And then there's a path leading out from it to somewhere. <clears throat> now, as I build this up, mm. I'm just going to leave that, okay? Mm. Because what I'm going to do is start going, okay, I'm going to build this up because this is my main thing, let's say. Yeah. So I'm going to come in here and start really – but look what I'm doing. I'm starting to dance over this with some rigid – Mm, uh, yeah. mechanical lines over this sort of organic drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm You're only just... plussing a little bit of it. I'm not going into everything and, and plussing it. Mm -hmm. I'm going into like, to me, what's important and what needs to get mechanized, you know, to become more man-made looking. This is important because I want this overlap of this railing. Because mm. it's coming into the foreground. This will become important. This would probably be a smoke glass window. And then I, I put, I pulled out some of this tone to get something reflecting into this little pond or whatever it is, yeah. right? Cause everything's gonna be reflecting into it. I could also start to pull the idea of what's up there reflecting into it. I could even put a little bit of it in here if I wanted to, mm -hmm. where some of this stuff's literally reflecting into it, you know? Yeah. Bake that a little bit. Um, you know, let's just say there's a little bit of cast shadow off here. And then now this is starting to pop forward is in relation to this, right? Yeah, definitely. So, but this might be a red barn. So I'll give it a little value, but I'm not going to give it as much value. Mm, okay. And then this will get a little bit. And then, yeah, you know, now I go, okay, it's sitting a little too far back. So now I'll give it this, I'll start to punch a little bit of this line, but I'm doing it much, um, not nearly as hard and not nearly as much. Yeah, 
but I do want to have a little bit of line in here. See, now it feels more like it's living in the same drawing. Mm. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Let me do this. And then we'll say it's. And then we'll take this. Where is it? Hang on a sec, you guys. Somebody stole my thing. My girlfriend. Hang on a sec. Did you guys see this tone I put down? Uh, yeah. So I might now come in here and start to pull out some cloud shapes out of that tone. Probably go a little darker, but does that make sense? Yeah, looks cool. And then another thing I could do is I could get an old t-shirt. I'm going to use a Webro pad, which works really good. I don't know if there's any. Let me darken this up a little bit. It's a little light. And that, look how I'm putting that tone down, nice and velvety and even. You see that? Yeah. And I'm stopping just short of that. If it goes over, I just carve the edge. And then I should be able to, because this paper is pretty smooth, I can go over it with a Webro pad or something like that and get it a little more smoky. You see that? A, a, we, what, a what? This is a Webro pad. Oh. You can just use a, a, a cotton rag you could use a probably uh kleenex just anything that's soft uh, now, like a chamois or something like that yeah yeah you could use one of those these are just one of the best things for it um and then now i could really pull out some value see that oh that's so cool looks like a little ghibli scene a what <laughs> a ghibli scene Oh. <laughs> oh what I'm, I'm assuming that's something good oh yeah like uh studio ghibli oh. i mean and now i'm going to darken this up now now i'm looking at going well the values are competing so i'm going to darken this up that means i have to come back in here and reinforce these lines right yeah and maybe this and so it starts to become you know and i'll put my little roof line on there and so you can see when I'm going back and forth here now, right? Yeah. Now I'm going, this tree needs to get a little darker. Or later on when we're doing tone, now I might just come in here with this tree and just give it a nice silhouette. And then give it a little texture on. And then I can do my serrated pencil thing. Start to get some ground texture going on here. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Okay, and then we'll go look at who is who am I talking to? Oh, Joyce. Joyce? Yeah. yeah. Joyce just keeps going like, yeah, okay, I've heard enough. And I keep going. No. <laughs> this is great. I'm like, I'm just like in awe of what's going okay, on. Okay, so then we'll put a little 
you know, so now I can just, I like this being the, the, the edge sort of a, now I could go and maybe go and build a little, oh. whatever you call it, containment line or a border. Yeah. You've got a few tree things coming in. It's very natural. And then that connects down to this and here's the border becomes the border. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. And then now I've contained it into a scene, right? Mm, and cool. then I would come in here and probably push the tree more. I'd put some individual leaves down here. I'd break this up so this leaf or this tree doesn't feel so uh, lollipoppy. Mm. Maybe have one, maybe have some of these branches kind of come over the tree. Yeah. I'm always thinking about which way my direction is going when I'm adding tone or, or line or whatever. Is it because like the tree is like vertical, so you shade vertically? Or? Yeah, I mean that's not always the case, but mm -hmm. like usually like this, when I'm putting just sort of some round and grand texture, yeah. I want it to follow that form, so it's helping the viewer understand that that's going this way. Mm. And then I'd have to do something here because I got a, that little stream or whatever in here. I'd have to really make sure that I show an edge here, like. You know, if it was the right area, I could do some cattails. So I know that this is dipping down into like a little chasm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Darken that up. And now it's just this, go, okay, like this, I go, that's a piece of trim. So I can use the side of my pencil and just get one big fat line. And I can do the same thing here. These are boards or whatever. And I can, instead of building them up with just lines, I can use the side of my pencil and just get a big fat line like a carpenter pencil. Mm -hmm. And then maybe right here, I could put, I forgot what they look like. Maybe there's like a little Japanese gardener or whatever. And it has those little, you know, those little stone things they put in look like little houses or something. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I put that here and I know I'm just making it up. And then, but I don't put any detail on it and I just go, okay, this is just gonna be a nice foreground element. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go over like that cause I like to carve the edges out like a painting. See how it does has a different oh, effect. Yeah. So I'm not really erasing the, to, uh, correct anything mm -hmm. then within this i could put my little openings maybe it's got the little openings where you can see through it right here yeah i'll just pull those out pull a highlight out you know now i got a little foreground element yeah okay and now we're done right yeah and then, now it feels like yeah and i probably work these a little more i might go back next to these and go i can really push as the sky gets darker up towards the sky Mm. This guy can go a little darker up here and it'll start to show this edge a little more. Yeah, that's cool. And then I'm going to soften it again. Sometimes I'll just lift out and now we've, we've got a little scene. Yeah, I feel like I learned like a thousand things right now. <laughs> and I'm trying to like remember everything. It'll be on the Zoom. Oh, okay, cool. Never worry about that. It'll be on the Zoom. Sorry, once I start these, I don't want to stop. <laughs> okay. I like... right now, I'm totally sketch starved right now so <laughs> yeah okay so there's that okay mm -hmm. did that answer what you asked which I forgot now what you even asked <laughs> <laughs> yeah it did and a whole bunch of other questions I had to so okay good, good. thank you so you guys could see all that right because I didn't stop sharing my other thing yeah okay all right so I think that kind of covers that right yeah thank you so you might want to try what I just did with your um you know, just to loosen yourself up, try starting with the way back of the pencil. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'll try that. Thank you. You know, and you might come up with some variation on it. You might go, I hate doing that, you know, because um, I, I there was teachers that, uh, when I was in school. I had a couple of them like this and they would go, they'd come over to you if you're doing this or something. They go, this is the way you hold a pencil. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you go, yeah, well, that's the way you hold a pencil, dude. <laughs> and it's yeah. like and i get it it's a it's a i get what you're saying but don't tell me that that's a hard and fast rule that i have to draw like you mm, i don't yeah. like that you know what i mean yeah 
what I'm saying is like, hey, here's something I try. Try it. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you might go, you know what? I, I go this way, but I'm really loose with a pencil and I get the same kind of line quality and really loose. It. Cool. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Anybody tells you something is a hard and fast rule, it, it that's BS, I think. Okay. There's hard and fast rules with like contrast and all that kind of value and all that. But when you start getting into this stuff, you want to have some expressive quality to your drawings that say they're your drawings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to make clones. That's not interesting to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's see how many I can get through here because we're almost. But I think what I'm, okay, so what tends to happen in here when I'm doing this, at some point I'm starting to repeat myself and that's when I start to back off and feel like I've made what I want to say. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Yes. So maybe I'll go. Okay, so from here, does anybody have any specific questions? Things are having trouble with? Because I'm kind of repeating myself now. Line, um, you know, all the things I've been saying all day, if you notice, I'm kind of saying the same things over and over again, proportion, basic shapes, don't jump ahead, don't jump to small shapes, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so do anybody have anything I haven't covered that they've had problems with? I have a question. Sure. When I was um, drawing, I put a little value on the trees like you did, and I had a problem with it accidentally smudging on the page. So I had to oh, like, yeah, just that's... go Okay, so it. one thing you can do, so whenever I go into some place to draw, well, and I actually just grab these. It's probably if I looked at my sketch bag, I probably have one. <clears throat> you know when you go to like, um, uh, anywhere you go to a fast food place, you go to whatever, and on the counter they'll have like either some sort of coupon or some sort of or a or a discount to Sea World or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I usually try and grab the ones that are laminated that have a glossy surface and they're usually perfect. They're about that big. And what I, and, and you don't have to do that. You just take a piece of sketch paper. It doesn't matter. A piece of your paper out of here. So look, let me turn this on real quick. Can you see my board again? Yes. So what I do is when I'm drawing, I put this here. So it's covering my hand. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. And I just like to get those cards because they're fairly durable. They'll last a while. But I mean, you could just use this. I just fold a piece of paper in half, um, especially if I got a lousy drawing on it. And I just keep it here. And it's going to keep it from smudging everything because your hand will smudge the hell out of it. Especially this is a pretty soft pencil. It will really smudge. <clears throat> Does that answer that? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I don't have anybody who's got any specific questions, right? I've covered everything that you guys are thinking about. Um, yeah. You didn't um, check my um, I know, that's why I'm asking, do you have any specific questions? Because yeah. I've, I've gone through them all. I'm saying the same thing over and over again now. Okay, so I like to yeah. go through enough yeah. where I feel like I'm giving you guys a variety of answers. But then I start feeling like, okay, I'm just repeating myself. Okay. And then I open it up to do you have any specific questions? Oh, yeah. I was I hoping... like... Lena. I was hoping you'd. Jerry, do you have a specific question? I was hoping you'd go through mine. Do you have a specific question? Is it something I haven't covered with everything else? Hmm. Uh, not really, but is the next assignment going to be like um, posted on no, I'm gonna talk about. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. That's why I want to get a little bit of time here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And by the way, I don't even think yeah. I have yours. I don't think I have yours. I could have sworn I turned it in Canvas. No. Oh, on Canvas? I don't look at them on Canvas. Everything is going through the Google Drive. No, like I literally can't find your Google Drive somehow. Well, there's a link to it on under announcements. Yeah. Under announcements. 
Yeah. Well, just like I said, everything in this class will go through announcements, every single thing. So every time that I post, mm -hmm. like today, I'll post probably today, I'll post the video from today. It will also have the Zoom, link, it'll have the folder, it'll have any links I want you guys to see, it'll have anything I talked about, like I'll put Chris DeBota up there, I'll put Ian Abondo up there, I'll put Tally Chick up there, I'll put all those people up there, okay? So if I talk about something in class, I'm going to read, and I'm also going to put the Disney PDF on there because I forgot to do that. So what that'll have is a link, it'll go to the Google Drive and you can download it. Does that make sense, you guys? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. yes. Lena, what was your question? Um, I remember I texted you yesterday, um, not yesterday, but like it was a few days ago about um, my buildings were tall and I felt like I was squishing them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a good question. I'm glad you reminded me. Do I have your, do I have yours? Um, yes, I think I turned it in. I think you downloaded it. Oh, hang on. Am I saying your name right? Yes, you're saying it right. So what your question was, was basically fitting things on the page, correct? Um, wait, can you repeat that question? Basically, you were talking about fitting things on the page, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a hard time doing that. Um, I'm, I live near Disney, and there's a lot of hotels. So most of the hotels are kind of tall, and I was like drawing it. And then I no, felt like I was- How come there's so much background noise? Sorry, I was in my I'm in my living room. Wow, it sounds like it's a party in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a common space for us. That's why. You got a kegger in there? Oh no. All right. So, but you were basically talking about fitting things on a page, correct? Yes. Okay. So one of the ways you can do that, it's pretty simple. When I'm doing, when I'm drawing something, oops. Um, I don't know how that happened. Hang on. So let's get rid of this car. Now what happened? Let's get rid of the. Oh, let's just erase it. Uh, when I have my paper, so let's say this is my eleven. Well, it is eleven by seventeen. What I'll do is I'll really lightly, again, just like I just showed you guys with the back of the pencil so I can barely lean on it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. Yep. What I'll do is I'll go, okay, here's a big main shape. And then there's this part of the shape. And then I, let's say there's a cupola or whatever it's called on the top of this. And I go, oh, that's going too high. It's gonna go off the page. Then I'll go, well, I'll just drop it down here. And I'll just put in the just the most basic of shapes here and just make sure they land on the page. Does that make sense? Yes. So I kind of just barely ghost it in. And if it's you know not landing where I want, now I have the thing where I can put the little point on top and I go, okay, that works. And then And then I might go, because I'm not always trying to fit this thing on the page, but I want to get what I want to get on the page, right? All right. So let's say that I go, okay, here's the front part. Here's the, whatever it's called, the hallway or whatever it is, you know, and here's the entrance and it's got something here. And then I go, okay, so here's sort of the end of the building. And then I, there's a big tree here. That'll be a nice sort of little finish on that side. There's something over here. And I go, okay, it all fits on the page. Does that make sense? Yes. So all I'm doing is I'm really lightly ghosting that, um, the biggest shapes in there. I don't erase or anything. I just go, oh, it's too high. And I drop it down. And I just sort of adjust the biggest shapes. That's it the biggest geometry, make sure it lays on the page where I want it, and then I can go for it, right? You disappeared. Lana? Yes. Okay, so it makes sense, right? Yes. Okay. That's a good question, because everybody has that problem. Everybody. Okay, because I, I kind of adjusted like once I 
went into like the third or fourth page kind of. Yeah, it's just putting those big basic blocky shapes in there. That's it. Okay. Got it. it was peopled and I'd do the same thing. I'd go, here's the head. There's their collar. They're sitting here, sort of leaning forward. They're looking at their phone. Yeah, his leg's going to fit on there. And I'm doing the same thing. Just getting the sort of basic stuff in here. I'm just going, okay, that's going to fit. There's my table. But let's say that I go, he's got a table here. And there's an umbrella up on top of him. I don't really, I don't want to shrink this whole thing down on the page for that umbrella to be in there. Does that make sense? Yes. So there's a couple things I could do. Now, do you understand how I'm still using the same idea to place this person on a page? Yes. Okay. So let's say that I go, because this, this is sort of me figuring things out. Okay. So I go, okay, sh you know, that's fine. This arm should actually be out here. So I move it. Legs should probably be more like that. His pants are going to ride up, so I'll see a little bit of his ankle. So let's say I got just that much, okay? Because that's all I'd need for now. But then I go, see, this is the mistake people make. They go, well, there's an umbrella right here. So now I got to shrink the whole thing down to fit that big vertical umbrella. And now my whole drawing gets this big. And the whole drawing becomes about the umbrella. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So there's a couple of things I can do from a design perspective here. And I, sorry, I have to talk about these things in real time as they pop into my head. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, okay. So one thing I always know, almost always they have, a, there's a certain kind of these things that have this sort of metal sheath right here. And then this comes out and it's got a little hand crank on it that they open the um, umbrella with. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. So that's my first clue. I could just leave it at that. And then I'm also going to put my Starbucks cup here. It's important that I put that little shape on top because everybody knows that little plastic lid that goes on these things. Correct. Yeah. 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 And then I'm going to put a little bit of value right there. Okay. And then the other thing I could do if I want, I could show the edge of this umbrella and use it as a nice little design tool. Does that make sense? And then this could probably go into silhouette with the side of my pencil. I'd show a couple of those little structural things here. And now it's kind of a nice little design vignette and I didn't have to put the whole damn thing in there and shrink oh. my whole drawing down. Does that make sense? Yes. So we'll talk about this a little, a lot more later where we're gonna, cause first we're gonna go through people and I'll put this little thing here. And then maybe this, you know, start to, ref and you know, and then do the same thing, just start to refine, put some folds on his shirt. It's going to gather up right there, really make the statement on the back of the chair, give him an armrest for his arm to lay on, put another pull fold, put his hand out here, start to refine the hand and the sleeve, put some folds there, so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. And then I just start to refine. I know I'm jumping ahead, but what I want to do though, is I want to show you sort of how we're just doing the same thing, no matter what we're drawing. Okay. I had a question. Sure. So like with drawing the buildings, I feel like that I struggle with getting like a varied line quality. That's not like so stiff. I feel like my lines are too stiff because I'm so focused on getting the perspective correct. But like sure. the way you're doing this, like, it looks really like fluid and I don't mm -hmm. know, it looks alive and stuff like that. Like, I guess, how do you achieve that just by strokes or? Okay. Yes. It's partly that look, by the way, now I would turn this this way. And this little edge of the table needs to get darkened up. Why? Cause it's, it's over something, right? Okay. That's a really good question, by the way. Okay. And then I just build this up so on and so forth. Right. Give, put his girlfriend over here. Maybe she's leaning forward. Like telling him she's sick of him being on his phone. 
maybe her hands up like this and she's gesturing. The other hand's down on her knee. Does that make sense? Shannon, where'd you go? Yes, I'm here, sorry. Okay, so to yeah, answer to your question, here's how, uh, which is a really good question. Um, what I'm doing here, if you notice, now I'm just gonna use people here for a second, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Okay, um, because you know they're very organic. And you kind of saw the way I built the one of Daniel's um, secret lair or whatever. Um, I'm when I'm coming and it's partly that thing that I just showed you where I'm sitting way back here on the pin. It's part of the reason I love drawing on paper more because it's a little harder to do that with a stylus. Now right. I can kind of draw back here a little bit and I, and I have ways of making it work. But um, what I'm doing is, is when I put these things down, it is very loose, like right off the bat, it's loose. Look, I just put the bottom of the nose. So I'm, I'm starting off with a really loose idea to begin with. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what I'm actually doing, which I think people do backwards, at least in my opinion, is they, um, they sort of start with this sort of idea of like, okay, okay like here's a, um, like they'll start really constructing. I'm very leery of this, by the way. When uh, I think that there's things that people use as, as, uh, as uh, and the reason I'm saying this, by the way, is not to bag on people. I just want you to be aware of these things. And maybe the things that I'm talking about do speak to you, then throw out what I said. Okay. But what I've seen a lot, like when I was going through my education and just in general, is somebody will go, okay, when we're doing the head, it's, you got to establish all these, um, planes of the head and 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 from a teaching perspective all that's fine okay but what i think happens is i look at this and i go oh that's a methodology to teach me how to see how the head works that is not a way to draw does that make sense right right right, right. okay so what you have to identify and i really would argue that a lot of people don't identify it so you can see now this would start to become much more rigid okay um is that that information is good information. My problem was, is that I, I, and I didn't identify this until later, that a lot of the teachers that use these sort of systems, it's because they can't draw, okay? They can draw ahead if they construct it with all this like systemic stuff, which means they're not, they're not really drawing. That's not really drawing to me. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes. So what I'm trying to do is, you know, I know all that stuff, but now I'm going to come in here and just sort of go, well, I like to go off the shadow values and I'll start building the shadow values off the nose, you know, and then I'll push this and maybe he's a little older. So he gets jollier here, you know, put a little ball in the end of his nose and I'll put that little zygomatic arch and maybe he's got a little, not as much hair, make him a little older with some glasses. And you can see how it goes a little more less rigid, okay? And and by the way, it's it's still, when I'm going and drawing people from life or whatever, you know, I can start, and we'll get into this more later, but I can start with almost any kind of shape, right? And if I just okay. sort of go, okay, there's that, there's the brow line, there's the bottom of the nose, if I want to exaggerate a little bit. but I can start with almost any sort of shape and I can make some sort of thing out of it. And the reason that's important is because it's just sort of applying these ideas. And then again, I'll come in here and start hitting my lines. Right, and you can do the same thing this way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to draw this guy the other way and go? Here's his. Here's the shadow values of the eye socket. If I want to do that, here's the shadow off the bottom of the nose. Here's the upper lip in shadow. 
here's the underneath the lip and shadow and say you start to get structure right away yes why because mm -hmm. it's the same idea as what i'm talking about with buildings i've got some big shapes in there that are starting to lock it together then mm -hmm. i can go let's pull this here let's put a value in here now i can come in here and start to build some eye shapes in there and start to put the wing of the nose and the nostril and the ear and the hair and structure this let's put the shin right there a little of that a little top of the nose if there's a ball in the nose and this is a little hard edge for me so i'm going to soften this up and i would do this and if i was doing this with pencil i would do it with the side of my i just smudge it probably hang on so let's do exactly what i would do with pencil hang on here they are oops right here um i would put a little bit of value right here on the nose normally i would do that with like red Oops, I got the wrong brush, hang on. I don't know how that happened. And then I just take the side of my pencil or my hand, smudge it a little bit. And we get that little value on the nose. I take an eraser, I'd pull out a highlight. Then I go back in with my brush and let's get this softened up too here. I don't like this. Now I'm gonna take my eraser, just like I showed you guys, and I carved that shape a little bit, put that on the nose, go back to a brush and reinforce what I lost in the smudge, which is that. Sort of start to build this a little more. Get a little more of this under here. And then I'd go in and start building these eyes. I could start putting in the eyelash or eyebrows. Get that little cheekbone in there. Start to give some tone to the hair. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, really so good. in answer to that, I'm always throwing everything down. I'm throwing it down super loose and then I structure. So what I was going to say is what people do is they go get all these structural elements all together. Well, now you got a stiff drawing. And what mm -hmm. I do is I throw it down very loosely. I'm still thinking about the structure and all that. I'm not disregarding that. It's all in my head. But then I structure up what needs to be structured up. So what I'm really doing is dancing line over things to tighten them up where I need that over a very loose thing. And it ends up looking much more natural and energized to your point. Mm -hmm. You know what okay. I mean? Um, and good. also this is holistic. So you have to think about a drawing or a painting or whatever as a, as a holistic idea. So if I'm doing Daniel's house, now I can do a vignette of the house, that's fine. <laughs> but if I'm gonna put trees in there and something else, then all of that has to work together as one piece, mm -hmm. okay? I went painting one time over in Allensworth. By the way, if you ever get a chance to go there, go. It's out near Bakersfield. But um, it's, a, it's a really preserved, um, community it's a state park now but anyway um i was painting out there and i'm painting and i'm painting everything everything looks good like the buildings look good blah 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 get done with the painting and as i'm painting i'm going, go ahead i think it's looking pretty good then when i get done mm -hmm. with the painting i take it home i throw it on the east i don't look at it for a couple of days i come back and look at it and i go this looks like shit and, um <laughs> and and i'm looking at it going why does it look like crap it's like the brushwork's not bad the the rendering or whatever you want to call it the representation of the buildings isn't bad it didn't work compositionally mm. composition didn't work and the thing is it's like you can do the most beautiful figure thing in the world but inside an environment or you know a, a whole drawing it doesn't matter if the whole drawing doesn't work okay right. so everything's holistic everything has to work together whatever you put into that or those ian abondo ones i just showed you those just quick sketches well a lot of those are just the person but what really works about that is like him really exaggerating poses, him really exaggerating weight, him really exaggerating that lazy feeling of somebody's been sitting in a chair too long, is like sitting there reading their phone. That's to me the whole holistic thing. If those poses didn't work, mm -hmm. like if you shove the hips out like that, because I do that all the time, that kind of stuff. If you don't shove those out right and it's half ass, then people are like, 
why is he standing like that? Like they don't get it. Right. They're not going to get no, it. No, I think, I think with like people, it makes sense to me because I, I like to draw people. That's like my, I guess that's where I am the strongest, but I think applying that to buildings is, I think I just need to practice more, <laughs> but okay, part of this, yeah. What, like, I, just said, what mm. I just said about drawing, when I was drawing Daniel's house and I was way back here and I was drawing it real loose. If I draw buildings, it's the exact same thing. It's this. The same way I'm drawing. I'm going to start them like this. And again, I'm throwing it down. I'm going to find out things that are wrong at some point. Hang on, it's a little big. I'm still sort of drawing gesturally. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Do like a tutor thing here. You know, here I, I'm getting a little more stylized here, obviously. Mm. So I'm going to put that. And then here, maybe I'll do the, the shingles not exactly perfectly even. I'll give them a little more of an overlappy feel. I can push this a lot more because this is stylized. Same here. Let's put a so let's do this real quick and I'll show you how you do this. I don't want now most people will do this. They'll put a pad, a path, right? Mm. I think this is more interesting to do this. Correct? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to put this. There's a wood door in here. Big handle, maybe. And then this down here can be that stone. They always put a stone, not always, but they put a stone trim down here. Two, two of these are too much the same, so I'll break them up. And then I let them break this edge, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to break the edge a little bit because they just do because they're stone. Okay, then this gets a little trim. And then maybe... Maybe he runs a business out of his place. It's my business. Okay, I could put some of those shingle things in, or uh, shutter things in here. Maybe there's a lamp up here in the window. Okay. Again, I'll do my old trick where I put a big tree here. Do you see how loose I'm drawing? Mm -hmm. Okay. I see then. what you were saying also about composition. Like the composition adds to like, I don't know, it being like less static. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm coming in here and I'm starting to go, I'm going to hit these a little harder and sort of define them a little more. Maybe there's another one here that goes like that. And then maybe back here, actually a little further back. And maybe this is cobblestone again. I can show some grass growing between the cobblestones. As it gets here, I'm going to make them bigger, which is nice because it gives me that foreground element. Again, maybe I'll do the old fence right in the foreground with the gate here. 
Maybe it's Daniel's lair and he's got skulls on here of victims that'll tell you to stay out. And then here, I'm going to put a little bit of um, texture on here. You know, I'd eventually add leaves and stuff. I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. right now. You know, probably some plants down here. Maybe there's Maybe there's the the town clock tower down here. And there's this connects to it. It's got a wing going out this way, maybe. Maybe this has got a driveway and then maybe like a little bell tower kind of thing up here. Much less information, maybe another tree back here. A lot of times I'll use trees, not only to, um, to build texture or whatever, or, you know, organic stuff. I'll also do it to go, well, I don't know what to put there. So I'll put a big tree there. Mm. Eats up space. Right. Right. Maybe there's some more stuff here. And then I start just getting really, you know, maybe there's a lamp here. Maybe there's one here. You know, and then I'll start going in here and going, okay, what's working? What isn't working? Maybe there's something up here on this hill. And then I'll just start making random marks and I'll build into the marks at some point. You know, maybe this path comes all the way down here somewhere. Maybe this one's got stairs with railings, you know, maybe there's some clouds. And now I'm starting to build a scene very loosely. Okay, so now I've established it loosely. Now it's the next part, which we've been talking about, where I go, okay, now I'm going to start punching my lines, start taking out things that don't work or de-emphasizing things that don't work. And I'm now I'm going to go in and start to structure over my nice loose drawing. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. So we're kind of treating that even if it's a building, this is why I tell you everything's the same. We're kind of treating the building like we do a gesture drawing, mm -hmm. right? right? So I, to, for me personally, I kind of treat everything like it's a gesture drawing, if that makes any sense. That does makes it? sense. Yes, okay. it does. <laughs> and then I structure it. Then I start going in and figuring out how to, you know, what's working, what isn't working, what to emphasize, the line weight, the da da da. But I'm always going in like super loose. This is how I work. Mm -hmm. now, here's the thing usually, when I go and do the first drawing, it ain't loose like this. It's stiff, it sucks, and it takes me a good a half an hour to an hour to get there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I found with my drawings too. Okay. I think that's, and this is something I cannot be clear enough on, hopefully, or hopefully I can be clear enough on it. So I keep seeing things I can add here. Um, this is the only bad thing about me doing this. I don't want to stop. Um, <laughs> wait, what was I just saying? I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. Uh, you're like, I don't know. You're talking, about getting in, you're talking about the flow state, kind of like it takes you like a half an hour or an hour to get oh, yeah. to like this oh, loose. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, I've had students over and over and over again, and maybe I've said this, but I've had students over and over again where I go, where's my... Um, 10 pages or whatever it is we're doing. And they go, and I go, how come I got two drawings? Oh, cause I did those two drawings and they sucked. And I'm like, yeah, they're your first drawings. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always go, uh, my first couple of drawings always suck too. Like, so what? And, and I cannot emphasize this enough, how much it'll help your, 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 um, you know, getting better. Mm -hmm to um, really give yourself time to just warm up. 
what we have to get out of in our thinking in this class and, and just in general, not in this class, in your sketchbook, whatever, never think of it as practice. Try not to ever think of it as practice. Try and think of it like I do where I go, oh, I'm going to go down and sketch people. I just get excited about it. I like doing it. Mm. Now, the byproduct is I am practicing, but it does. It's not in my mind. It's not practice. It's not like sitting down when you're first learning piano and, and Da, 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 and you're doing scales and you're like this sucks you know what i mean and mm -hmm. but you need to do it right so you guys are lucky you're kind of doing your scales i think in a way that's much more fun but you're doing your scales and you got to do your scales does that make sense yes um so anyway that's how to approach that and then i okay i've got a, this this one in the foreground built up enough where I could build up the back a little bit so I don't overdo it. And then I go back up the front and you know, and I punch things and make sure that the background doesn't start competing with the foreground. Don't put nearly as much information in the background, not as dark, um, values get closer together. If you guys look at the mountains, you know, that you see, right? It, you'll notice that like, if I get close to the mountains, those shadow values, you know, where the mountain dips and it catches a big shadow, up here, it's or like, you know, if I go down the bottom of the mountain, I'm looking at it from a couple miles away, it, it's pretty dark, right? But you'll notice as you get further away from that, that shadow value gets much less further away on the value scale than the light value. So what looks to me up close, like maybe a nine or an eight, like almost a black, is you move away from it. Now this becomes like a three and this becomes like a six. Like they become much closer together as they go back and softer, obviously. But as they go back, the values get closer together. They get lighter, but in relative, in relative to each other, they get lighter. So there's not these big jumps like you see here where it's like going from a pretty light value to what almost appears to be black. It's going to go to a pretty light value to a relative value that looks dark next to this value, but it's actually not. Does that make sense? Yes. And you're doing the same thing with line where that value is all getting much reduced. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I have a question. Sure. Oh, uh, uh, yes. So um, I found that a lot of the drawings that I did, I had to do them standing up because um, there was things in the way if I was sitting down. So do you have any tips for drawing standing up or any supplies that you recommend that I get to help drawing standing up easier? It's one of the things that the reasons that I, these look pretty good. Oh, thank you. It's one of the reasons um, that I tell you to get a spiral bound book that you can flip over. Okay. Because then, you know, you might be able to find a fence or even like, you know, if you're doing this, it's just easier than, than having a book doing this is kind of cumbersome. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I can just flip it over or flip it over this way or whatever, it's just okay. here. Um, you could get, I have a really cool easel. Now this is if you want to get crazy, but um, it looks like this. And I really like it. Um, It's really simple. This is just a shelf. See it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all this is down at the bottom here is just a little, like, it's like a music stand. It's just got a little shelf on the bottom and you can just pop your book or whatever on it. Um, what I like about that is I can put it on a, uh, on a stand or on a tripod and then I can just put my sketchbook on it and it's right here. Okay. And what I like about this is it's such a simple, it's really just from the side view, it just goes dink and it has a little shelf on it. And what I'll do is I'll just clip them with a couple of those, those clamps I get from Home Depot. Um, if you want to be able to be portable and stand up and not have to struggle with anything. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Is that a decent solution? Uh, it's kind of an expensive solution, but I'll think about it. Yeah. Well, what you could do is, and I don't know if they sell them like this. This company, well, that probably wouldn't work for this. If you already have a tripod, all you need is this part. And by the way, on Gurney's site, which I'll link, he has like, um, he, he, he's really into making his own stuff and he makes this really, and, and one of our students, um, Brand, or Brendan made one and they're really cool. 
and they put like a they made it and they make a sketch uh easel sort of like this but it sandwiches and it's got one of those uh spring-loaded things in it so you go ink and then you stick it on a tripod and it does the same thing as this but people make them by them make them themselves okay or if you can find if you have a tripod and you got a music stand one of the black music stands it looks just like this not the wiry ones the one that just has a shelf on it, it looks just like this only it's metal mm -hmm. okay you can, you can mount that on a tripod and those aren't expensive yeah yeah and i think you can just buy that one part for the music stand thing um, okay I mean, there's a lot of different things like that. The one thing I will say though, is when I used to do those stories for NPR, a lot of times I was standing up and I had the sketchbook right here, right? And you, this probably won't happen to most of you because you're younger, but um, that, so I'd be doing that for like however many hours that day that I was doing the story. Sometimes it was all day. Man, like the, for like the next month, that crook in my arm right there just got super sore. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause I just had my arm like this for too long. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, try and find a fence or something you can lean your book on and, you know, or whatever, um, okay. that'll help a little bit. You can stand up and draw and all that stuff, but, um, or like what I do, actually, I do the opposite. I will sit anywhere to get a good view. Okay. So I'll sit on the dirty sidewalk. I'll sit in like a dirty niche in LA on an alley. I'll sit anywhere. You know what I mean? I don't care. Mm -hmm it's part of the fun for me um and sometimes i wear uh usually if i'm out painting especially but sometimes if i'm gonna do that kind of stuff like if i'm doing if i'm in alleys like over near chinatown or something like that where it's pretty dirty i throw on overalls over my clothes okay you know or if i'm or if it's a little colder i, I have coveralls too so I, I might just zip up and put on coveralls so i just get as dirty as i want and then when i go back to the car i just take it off got it okay, okay. that makes but sense sitting just kind of anywhere kind of works i've sat in the uh, right on imperial boulevard i had a friend i was showing her how to sketch and we sat right in the divider in the middle of the all the lanes right i don't suggest that, <laughs> that sounds a little bit scary <laughs> yeah i don't suggest that but um it's where i got a good view mm -hmm. okay okay um and also since you have my drawings open are they too dark at all i felt like i was really hammering down on some lines you know here's what i think kind of happens yeah here and there they are i don't think they're terrible i don't think they're like terribly over dark um i think like this one's working pretty good if you had the texture on the roof a little more to offset it okay right like here i think this yeah, actually I kind of got a little good. bit bored with that one <laughs> really i think it's pretty good thank you um now it's an it's a it's going to be a little bit of a <clears throat> what people tend to do when they're and I do this even just with design, but people when they're learning this, they tend to go like way over here dark and then or they're going way over here too light, and then at some point you start dialing it in into that where it should be. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. But I'd actually argue that it's good to do this, like to go, I think I'm going a little too far. Okay, well, you have identified it. So now back it off a little bit. Because I actually don't okay. think you're going that far. Okay, that's okay? good. Like, again, I think this one right here works pretty good. This overlaps really nicely. This over, the only thing I'd say about this is see how it's sitting right in that tangent edge? Yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> so pull it over. Yeah. Oh, and this is kind of nice. This little weather vane breaking that. Give me a little more information up here. Okay. Just some textural ideas. Got it. Because that's really what that is. Don't do this. Yeah, that was one of my Don't first ones. So it, it doesn't look that good. No unpurposeful mark making. Okay. Got it. Everything needs to be descriptive. Okay. And then later on, when you want to put like some flourishy artsy thing on there that's just cool sure you know what i mean but right mm -hmm. now i want to make sure that your eyes are getting really really want to turn your eyes into measuring devices first okay okay got it and then you can go off the cliff okay okay all right do we have any other questions here i have a quick question uh, sure you mentioned earlier putting enough texture so it's easy to read, but I wasn't sure for my drawings if I put too much texture in certain areas that it kind of looks flat. Did I look at them? 
No. Okay, hang on. And I need to look at them. It's Kayla. It's Kayla, right? Yes, Kayla. Oh, here you are. Oh, yeah. How do you say your last name? Salamura. Oh, so it's just like it looks. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, say that again. Texture. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Is this over at Fullerton? This one? No. No, it's actually by where I live. I, okay, so I'd say here, what I would have done is I'd go here and I'd clarify some of these. And some of them I just let sort of trail off. And they're also sort of like all on this line right here. Do you see that? Yeah. So I'd have a couple break it, maybe go up here. And then this is going to, they overlap each other. So there's going to be a little bit of a overlap because they're going to, they, on the edge, they're overlapping each other because those are pretty thick like that. Okay. That sense? So that means mm -hmm. on the edge, I got an opportunity to do that stair step thing, right? Yeah. And the same thing up here, because they just put another row of them all sitting on top of each other like this, where they're sort of, and then another one. And then another one, right? So again, yes. you're getting this nice little broken edge. So you can get a little of that up here. <clears throat> so I would say, say if you just sort of emphasize some of them, let the rest of them sort of trail off, it starts to work a little better. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I think on some of the other sketches, I might have done it better. But yeah, overall, I get what you're talking about. And then these, I usually just kind of put a light line in here and I start just building these out. I cluster them and then I disperse them a little bit. Gather and then disperse them. Okay. And then here and there, I'll show some bottoms here, maybe an individual here and there, but not too much. You know what I mean? So okay. we can just pull that out a little bit and it's, it's not too bad, right? Mm -hmm. This one's a little better. But now I'd cluster a few of them here and then let them trail off. Okay. Okay. Because then you're really making that statement. Does that answer that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. okay, good. And then the same thing, go in here and be careful, you know, where you put in your line, make sure it's all clear this could get cleaned up this could get a little cleaned up a little bit of oops you know don't just you know make sure these have some thickness with purpose there now again if this is a dark railing and they're a little bit thick you could probably just do it with a line with the side of your pencil and it's a thicker line right yeah i was having a hard time getting my line straight yeah everybody does but it's that You'll get used to it. You kind of ghost it and just sweep it, right? Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. So you're never going to usually anyway, maybe somebody out there does, but I've never seen it. If you're doing like a, this is what people do is they, they, they draw something. Like let's say they have this nice, nice loose thing. They draw this, then they go like this real slow. And they're trying to outline it all perfect. And it just looks so crappy when you do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I tried to do quick lines, but then they ended up being like curved or like skewed instead of level. It's plastic, uh, plastic, it's practice. Yeah, okay. See what I mean? See how it's clean those are? Mm -hmm. And I've just kind of, sweep it it's it's you know and you can practice that on a, its own, own page you know like i said you know do that then try and do it exactly the same distance and the same ending and i'm doing it really bad because i haven't done it in years so these should kind of end at the same place start at the same place and this distance should be the same right yeah and that'll really start helping you get some control over that and do the same thing where you're ghosting your ellipses and then you're dropping your ellipses. I'm ghosting them, then I'm dropping them. I'm ghosting them, and I'm dropping them. Then I'll do a thinner one, thinner one, thicker one, you know, 
and you just do fill up pages like that but you're ghosting and that what that does is it sort of gets it locked into your brain then you drop your hand does that make sense yeah that makes sense you're ghosting ghosting okay boom then you drop your hand and it just warms your brain up for that stroke okay yeah thank you that, that should help you and, and by the way all this stuff i hope you guys understand is obvious as this sounds this takes practice okay like you gotta go do this a bunch and then you're gonna get better at it does that make sense yeah yeah where'd everybody go yes it makes perfect sense yes mm -hmm. i just noticed that Haley has a fat kermit the frog avatar <laughs> Which looks super weird. Haley collects some weird avatars. Yeah. I do. It's one of my hobbies whenever the semester starts now. Haley, I noticed that when the first time you went up, I started losing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's talk about this real quick. Okay. Do I have any other questions? Um, Mr. Mike? Yeah. Um, I just... Um... I checked around Canvas and sent mines in the folder. Okay, I know, but we've already downloaded those. I'll download them after class and I'll and I'll, uh, I'll mark them in. Yeah. Yeah, although they may not be the same because I couldn't like understand what the assignment said because I only like drew two by accident. I couldn't tell like how many buildings you wanted. Pages. Donut pages. Yeah. Um, like two pages. Right, I'll, so. I'll look at them uh, after this. I'll down because I'm, I'm going to download whatever's on there today. Okay. So here's the thing, though, you guys. From here on out, that folder closes at eight thirty, and I'm done with it. Does that make sense? I know today was the first day, so it's fine. I, I, I get it. Everybody has to find out where it is and all that. And whatever's in there now, I'll download and I'll um, and I'll mark them in. Okay. By the way, these kind of assign mm -hmm. these kind of exercises are really just, I want to see you just satisfying the requirements of it. And it's 10 points. Okay. At, at this point, I'm not really, unless it totally looks like somebody just spent five minutes on it, then, it, then I'll mark them down. But as long as you're just, you know, you're working, you're getting them done. Um, that's really all I'm expecting at this point. If we do, and I, I lean much less on a bunch of projects in here than I used to, because I really want to make sure you get the sketching thing down. We will do the cafe to character project for sure. Cause I like to do that. Um, and I might do one or two others, but I really want to make sure that we're getting a lot of sketch time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you guys to do this week is I just want to open up a little bit now where it's not just frontal views. It's whatever view you want. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So it's the same drill though. The only thing that you're going to have now is you're going to have that added component. When I build this, Just make sure that we're getting, we're playing a, a game here where just like we we're just talking about, well, that was a great question, by the way, about how to keep things loose when you're doing like buildings. Um, we're doing this dance here where we want to think about the geometry and how these things are built without it becoming very stiff and looking like some kind of technical drawing. Does that make sense? So what you mm -hmm. want to do here, now you're going to turn a building or whatever, make sure that you get this basic perspective in there and i do it like and then again i might go where does the next building land oh it lands right here i'm only seeing a little bit of it so that's there and i'm just obviously making this up and it wouldn't be there by the way let's put this i'm going to put this like a building And I know I'm stylizing a little bit. So now I've just got my basic shape in here. And I and I don't go any further than that. I don't like this one over here. It's stupid. Hang on. And then what I'm really trying to do is spatially place these. Let's say this is the front. And then I'll go, there's another building over here. But I'm going to kind of just lay these things in nice and loose. Okay. 
just with the real basic common shapes, right? And that's enough for that one. And then maybe I'll say there's something, maybe there's a corner over here that comes out here and I go, okay, well, there's a, there's a, um, whatever you call these things, crosswalk thing with the walk, don't walk sign and the little thing and however it meets into the ground. And all I'm doing is starting to place things. Does that make sense? Because now you can add dimension to it and three dimensionality to it. And then maybe there's another one of these over here. Do you see how I'm just placing all my basic objects here? And then I'm really not, you know, I'm, and you're going to have this in front of you. So you don't have to think about the perspective. You just got to place it. Like if there's a building way in the back over here or way back here, and I go, well, where does it land in relation to the building? Oh, it lands right here. So here's the, the whatever this is. Let's say it's something rounded. So it's a big cylinder. And then you're just going to see that leading edge. Maybe it's got a big something here. So then, and then I place it. So I'm trying to place these things sort of based off spatial relationships to a certain extent. And then I'm just looking at how much of a curve is here. And then once I built all this stuff, let's say this curve comes out here, have another crosswalk here. You don't have to do the whole scene. You can just do buildings and stuff. Crack. Look, that crack's showing what? drops down and onto another plane, correct? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say this is a, okay, so then I can start, let's say I, I knocked in a few more things. Um, then I can start to come in here and go, okay, here's my tertiary, or here's my secondary shapes. I got a ledge here. I got a ledge here. I got the bottom here i don't like things just okay here's another thing most buildings don't just die into the ground like a cardboard box sitting on a on a sidewalk okay they usually have some piece of trim here or something like let's put a um the old school awning on this building maybe it's an old hotel which means i could put a couple of potted plants here with the with the tur the topiaries that are uh whatever you call it like lollipops or whatever that are trimmed. So I got that. And then I could even put another one over here. Maybe there's another entrance over here. You know, depending on what you're looking at, I don't want you making it up. And then I can start going into my, this is probably still be secondary shapes. I could draw through these forms to make sure these line up. Same thing here, I could drag this line over this way so I make sure they all line up together, even as they turn the corner. Then back to our what we said before, there's probably some, some utility stuff up here. Sometimes there'll be an antenna and something like that on top of a commercial building. And then here, I'm gonna go, this is a fabric awning, so it's gonna get a pull fold from the corners. And then I'm gonna do one of these like old and then this could kind of come down. And maybe inside of here, they've got some fruit stands. You guys ever notice everything I draw looks like it's from like the 40s or something? Like all my reference, when I draw cars, they look like they're from the 40s. It's like, um, I guess I'm, I'm longing for another time. You know, and then maybe this, when I put a big sign up, Mike's produce. And then I could start to flesh these ideas, you know, and these, your ideas are going to be right in front of you. You're not making them up. So all that's good. And maybe there's a sign or something here. I don't know. And then another thing I'll do is like, I'll go like, if I'm drawing a building and like, there's nothing, you know, it doesn't have a cool trim down here. Like maybe this turns into an alley right here. So right here, 
Maybe I'll put a dumpster. And I'll put Daniel here snoozing right next to the dumpster. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can start, you know, and then we would start the next side of the process. What's the next part of the process? Anybody? Find lines. I'm starting to pop line my quality. Punching, yeah, line quality. I'm lines. exactly. I'm starting to go in here and go. Okay, now I want to start popping it. See, now I'm starting to pop the line out of the building. Start punching your drawing. Right. I could put some curtains up here. Usually, if I'm close enough to a window, I mean, this is. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. If I'm making stuff up, like if I'm close enough to the window, I usually like if I can see in there, I'll show the edge of a piano or a, um, a lamp or some furniture or whatever. I'm too far in this case, um, you know, and then this again is going to get really pulled forward. Then I'd have to add this and start adding more information on here that shows how this actually works. Here's the little button you push. You know, and then this is here, then maybe this comes out here. They're a little too lined up for me. Um, you know, and then I start carving up my buildings and whatever. Um, and I start getting a little bit of a um, thing. Does that make sense? But you're going to have it in front of you. So all your solutions are going to be in front of you. <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is start to see perspective, start to see design, start to see abstractly and start plugging in the pieces of our puzzle. Does that make sense? But we're starting mm -hmm. with a solid structure. And in this case, the reason we're starting with basic shapes is to sort of cement this idea of seeing shapes until we move on to something more complicated, which we'll do next week, because we'll start talking about um, foliage, okay? Uh, and I will try and get a tutorial up this week before class. Um, I don't think it'll take me very long, because, you know, I'll just draw some, just like I would in class or whatever. And then we'll go over it in class. And then we'll start to add it into our scenes. Like in this scene, um, it probably could use some um, foliage in here somewhere, right? Maybe it's back here. See how that helps? And then I'm going to put here, I'm going to put those lights. You know those lights that do that? They go on signage. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I know that? Because you go out and it? draw. <laughs> right. Look, if you want to do whatever it is you want to do, whether it's illustration, concept design all that stuff but if you're going to do like if you want to do you know i'd argue any of this stuff but especially something like um concept design where somebody's coming to you all the time and putting a gun to your head and going we need this that and the other um you're not going to have time you just don't have time to sit there and start pulling a bunch of reference and it just doesn't work like you might pull some reference and do your research and sort of look at it. And what I do is if I did something, I don't know the shape language to, then I sit down and I start drawing it straight for like, until I feel like I got the shape language. And then I can start just cranking ideas out and I can start stylizing. Does that make sense? Um, yes. And it's anything. Go ahead, Shannon. Oh, no, I was just agreeing. Um, anyway, you're going to fill up the data banks. This is one way of filling up the data banks. And it's also a way of understanding how to build very, con or what people think of as complex forms because you know how to break down forms, right? Like, you know, a plane is just a tube with two flat planes on it. It's mostly what it is, okay? Um, and your brain will just start getting, and the other thing that's gonna happen, I hope, is that as you, and hopefully it might already be starting, you will not be able to turn this off, at least I can't, okay? So when I go through the world, I am always, because my girlfriend pointed this out, I'm always commenting on the, the light. I'm always commenting on some weird shape or some interesting shape or 
wow, look at the way those buildings don't look like that far away because the atmosphere is like this and the mountains right there, but it looks close together. I'm always, always doing that. Okay. I'm always cataloging things, even when I'm not drawing. And I think that's something that this also helps with. If I see something interesting that I think is something I could use in a drawing someday, 10 years from now, I go whoop and I throw it in the toolbox. Okay. And I will reference it again sometime. Okay. And you just start learning how to catalog, even when you're not in your sketchbook, it'll actually drive you crazy if you do it, but I mean, it helps your drawing. Okay. It helps your, um, data bank of filling things up. And I probably already said this, but I want to make sure about this because I see, uh, I don't know what they are, workshops or something online about drawing out of your head. It's like the way you draw out of your head is doing this. Okay. And if it's going to happen, it'll just happen out of this. Okay. I never tried to draw out of my head. It just happened. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you'll get a lot of, um, again, you'll just get a lot of stuff filling up your brain. Okay. But the trick is you got to be able to organize it and then actually use it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do four pages now. Um, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, you don't have to do four pages. You can do whatever views you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if there's trees in there, just silhouette them and stuff like that until we talk next week. Because what people do is they get all hung up about that and then they, they spend too much time on that. And I'll show you some really simple ways to do that, okay? Um, to do foliage mm. and all that kind of thing. So it's wide open. Just go draw whatever you want to draw. Um, I'll try and think of some more places around Orange County that are good to draw. San Juan Capistrano is pretty cool. Um, they got a lot of cool stuff down there. Um, and you can take the train there. It rolls right into San Juan Capistrano, like right into that cool little area down there um, near the mission. The mission's cool. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out some other ones, I, but I'll try and keep them within the somewhere in Orange County. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, there's a million of them in LA too, but I don't know how far people, well, I mean, Daniel drove all the way out to Oak Glen. Where is Daniel? Oh, there he is. I'm by the dumpster. Mm -hmm. stop drinking so much daniel and stop sitting sleeping by dumpsters um okay so everybody knows what they're doing correct four pages front back correct yeah yes so we're doing just to be sure we're doing four um pages of buildings right yeah hmm. okay wanted to be sure in case i didn't forget somehow I'll put it up on assignments. Um, and by then the, I will get this. The way, go ahead. How many, you think you can also add like how many drawings would you suggest per no, page? I'm not going to do that. You do that. I don't want okay. a bunch of, I don't want one drawing per page. I want, you've just seen it. I mean, you saw everybody's drawings like that because everybody pretty much did a good job of it. Okay, mm. like multiple drawings on a page. Don't go huge. And by the way, if every now and then you guys might start a drawing that's bigger and it's really going well and you're digging it, finish it. Okay, I'm not going to like nail you for that. I just don't want, I, I have to be very clear on this because what's happened in the past is I get one big drawing on a page, one big drawing on a page, one big drawing on a page, one big drawing on a page. And the answer to that is like, okay, you don't want to do the homework. You know what I mean? And they go, oh, I have a really hard time drawing small. And I know people do have a hard time drawing small, but most of the time, those are the people who just keep not delivering and they're just finding ways of not drawing as much. And if like, if your mind, and I don't see anybody in here that's doing that. Um, if your mindset's like that, it just means you don't like to draw that much and don't try and do this for a living. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, I, I really do believe you got to be obsessed with this thing if you want. Or I think you probably got to be obsessed with anything. Okay. Let yourself be obsessed with it, you know? Let yourself just completely go down the rabbit hole on it um, and have fun with it, okay? Um, and, you know, and, and the reason I was putting up like Old Town Orange and stuff like that, Old Town Orange is just a fun place to go hang out at. It's a, you know, it's a fun place if you've got friends you go with and do this. They've got good restaurants. The restaurants are all outside, I think, you know? So, you know, it's just a, it's an act. I like being in an active area. Does that make sense? <sighs> I like being in an active area with a lot of people and a lot of uh, whatever you call it, um, activity. Okay, make sense? 
Yes. So that's um, you guys. Yes. What were you I, have a, I have another question. Sure. So are we allowed to draw the same house from multiple angles? Sure. Would that be okay? Okay. Great. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not, at this point, I'm not going to put a lot of parameters on it. Okay. What we're trying to do here is break the ice and get this under our hands so we can start keep moving forward. Okay. And we can keep adding things because it'll be pretty quick that we'll get to people. And then once I get to people, then I feel like everything's sort of wide open. I'm going to want a lot of people for a while. And then, after, and, but there's, we're going to start getting to a place where it's sort of like everything's fair game. Okay. Your salt shakers in front of you at the restaurant, the, your whatever. Okay. The car in the parking lot, it doesn't matter. It'll just start to be draw what you want to draw at some point, but we got to get there. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. You guys, I'm going to let you go. If you have any problems, Fantastic. let me know. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, could I get some feedback on my sketches? Is there something in particular? Um, just about like the structure of it and like my line weight. Okay. It's Kelsey, right? Yes. I might grab some of these and throw them online this week. I don't know. I usually pull things from class. Um, just to promote the class. Plus, I just, it's fun. Um, what's this here? That was like some bushes that were like on the house itself. So like ivy? Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, I would. Um, I think I might, I have one like this. Hang on. If you look at this, like this stuff in here, I'm starting to develop a little bit of a scribble language, but it's readable like down here. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm keeping it very, like there's some stone here. And it's very textural here. Does that make sense? Yes. Here I'm, you know, probably giving you a few leaves. Um, and this is a good kind of idea too, where it's sort of, um, again, it's the same thing I've been talking about where it's like, it, I mean, obviously I drew it really loose. Then I just came in here with like a, whatever, you, there's probably a, um, what do you call that? A brush marker or something. And I just hit some stuff to start to give it enough structure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then if you notice all these trees back here are all real simple, right? Mm -hmm. There's that trick right there, putting the tree behind it to break it up a little bit, some stone, but this is, this has to be, or I shouldn't say has to. You're going to have to, you have to, when you have something like crawling on the side of a wall like that, it's got to, you got to figure out the scribble language for it. Okay. Okay. Which is based on the leaf shape. Like I kind of draw the leaf shape and then I'll sort of kind of go off and show a little of the leaves and then just some texture and that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I got to go do another one of these actually for the restaurant. I just realized. Um, so don't get so outliney on it because now it's not telling me that there's, that's foliage, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I danced the line weight around a little more. Like, you know, you got it a little bit here. But you're going to want it like here, here. This should be overlapping. Um, this probably isn't going to end and all of a sudden it does that. I mean, I guess it could. These windows feel very small. What was in this window? Um, it was, it was just glass. Okay. So this is another case where I might go. I might put a piano in here. Just something just to put it in there. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a table. Same thing here. You're getting this overlap. This isn't being descriptive. It's becoming very, um, this uniform. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like these shingles aren't touching each other and shingles actually overlap each other. Mm -hmm. But again, you want to make a bigger statement on that. So you just do a nice light line and then I can come in here and add my shingles into it. Oh, okay. And this will come up here and I'll, again, I'll break up that edge. So it's kind of just the same thing I've been saying, right? Mm -hmm. Does that answer it? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. So be um, strategic about all that. We always want to be strategic about it. Okay.
And when we get to people, I'll talk a lot about strategic folds, right? Folds that are very uh, uh, important. If I do this, that's a pull fold. It's telling the viewer what's going on. This is telling the viewer, this is all radiating out. Those are strategic folds. I'm not gonna show all of them. I'm gonna show the strategic ones. I'm gonna show enough. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, you guys. I'm gonna, so everybody knows what they're doing, right? I'll put it up under assignments. Four pages, that's front and back each page, right? Okay. So the four pages means 45 pages, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, 45. Um, it, what I'm trying to say there is do as many as you want. I mean, do at least what I'm asking, but do as many as you want. You know what I mean? If you're having a good time, if you're on fire, go. Like if you're on fire, man, do not stop. Okay. Go until you're exhausted. Go until you're just like, okay, I'm starting to subside here. But if you're on fire, man, if I'm on fire, man, I'll draw all day, six hours straight. I'll just sit there and draw if I'm on fire. And then when I start running out of gas, I go, okay, I'm done. You know what I mean? But it's hard for me to leave that zone. I like being in that zone. You know, I always say when I'm in that zone, I feel like a superhero. And then as soon as I exit that zone, I go back to being schlubby Mike. I like being the superhero guy. Does that make sense? The rest of the time, I'm just some schlubby dude walking around. But when I'm doing that, it feels amazing. Okay. Um, hopefully, you guys are getting glimpses of that already. Um, okay. So I'm going to let you guys go for the third time. Uh, and uh, if you need me to get hold of me this week, I do not want you getting stuck anywhere during the week over some silly little thing. Okay. If you have some question about something you're having trouble with, get in touch with me. Okay? By the way, is next weekend uh, a long weekend? Yes. Do we have like Friday off? Monday, I think, is a holiday. Okay, that won't be too bad. Um, but but this class meets, correct? I'd assume so. Yeah, we're on a Saturday, so. Okay, so I'll um, I'll double check that, but um, I think we're fine. Okay, I, I didn't know because on my calendar it's blocked out as Monday or Friday through Monday, which doesn't make any sense to me. M being Monday makes more sense to me, but that's that is neither here nor there. Friday okay, classes guys. don't meet either. What doesn't? Friday classes don't meet. My Friday class doesn't meet next week. We don't meet next week? Well, Friday doesn't. I don't know about Saturday, but Friday doesn't. Well, Friday doesn't. Saturday doesn't. I will oh, is put, that how it goes? <laughs> I will put an announcement up uh, one way or the other. Okay. So um, I'll double check. And if we don't meet, I'll say that. And if we do meet, I'll say that just to make sure it's clear. Okay. I'll put it up as soon as I know. I'll check the official calendar and all that. It's really weird with Saturday classes. Um, it's always confusing to me. So I was right. My calendar's blocked out for four days. So I'll have to check that, which means my Friday class. I don't really like missing those classes, but um, it's, it's too much work. You know what I mean? Okay, you guys. Again, I'll let you go. If you need me, let me know. Okay? Wait. Thank you. Okay, guys. I'll see Bye. you. Thank you. Hopefully. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thanks, you guys. You did a great job. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.